Nice sunny day, and the only chance of a shower for the rest of the work week might be late Thursday or Thursday night. Other than that, we'll have sunshine that'll begin with today with much lower humidity than we've seen lately. That's uh, refreshing, and highs in the low 80s generally. Tonight, clear down into the low and mid-40s northwest Jersey. 45 or near it as an estimate. 50s for most of us, 60 for the big cities, such as Newark. Sunny tomorrow, 77 to 82, still very dry. And the mid to upper 70s, between 75 and 80 with some sunshine for Thursday. 66 in South Plain. Field. Red Bank 67, Ventnor 68, and this New Jersey weather made possible by Keyspan Home Energy Services. Right now, if Keyspan installs a new gas furnace or boiler, you can save up to $400 on installation or get a free water heater. So call 1 800 Keyspan today. New Jersey 101.5 time 851. All the polls say that New Jersey voters this election year, their number one concern is education. So I'd like to ask you specifically, what is it? about education that you're concerned about. Laura from Robbinsville. Laura, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my opinion is one that I think neither political party is willing to embrace, but the problem is, is the teacher system. They're the only occupation where you don't have to have an evaluation after X amount of years. You could, you could do a horrible job. You could teach your kids nothing, and you still can maintain your job until the day you decide to retire. That's right. After three years, when you get uh, tenure, you can retire right then well, for all practical purposes. But most of them don't. They stick around for the next 20 years. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, all right. Well. You know, they, they become bitter. They don't like the kids. They don't mm -hmm. like their job. They quit teaching. Or they them. burn out. Legitimately, exactly. they burn out because it's a exactly. tough job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a touch, tough job. But, I, you know, I, I see the, pol the people over in Pennsylvania who are striking at the moment, and they don't want merit pay. All that says to me is I don't want to get do a good job and get paid for it. I'd rather do a mediocre job and know you can't fire me. That is a very strange thing. And New York, in the city, they had come up with a merit plan in which teachers who met certain criteria would get $10,000 bonuses. You would think they would jump at that. You they turned it down because the union says, no, no, what one gets, all get. Then if you got that kind of money, we all want a $10,000 bonus. Well, it is no wonder that younger teachers are being disenfranchised because they... They don't want to come into a business where they... Breaking have news. A special report now from New Jersey's 24-hour broadcast news team. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric Scott. There are reports this morning and some very stark images. It appears that an airplane, possibly a jetliner, has struck one of the towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. Now, initial reports say that this was a large airliner. There's no confirmation of what type of plane this is right now. Witnesses do report seeing an airplane low flying over the area. About 20 floors down from top of the, uh, from one of the World Trade Center towers, you can see a huge hole in the side of the building. Smoke is pouring out of the building from about the 20 story down all the way up to the top. There is a great deal of smoke. We are told also by some of the witnesses on the scene that that plane is still embedded in the tower of the World Trade Center. Now, reporters are on their way there. We will have more coming up at the top of the hour, but it appears that an airliner, possibly a large airliner, has crashed into the side of one of the World Trade Center towers in Lower Manhattan. We will have more on this story coming up as it develops. This has been a special report from New Jersey's 24-hour broadcast news team. Stay tuned for the latest on this and other developing stories on New Jersey 101.5. New Jersey 101.5. It's a chime time, 8.55. My God, what a, uh, I've, I've got nothing but goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. All of us here have. The adrenaline pumping. Whoa. All right, so hang in for more on that. I think we're going to press ahead, and of course, we'll have all the developments on that story as they are available, because this just happened instance ago. Uh, we'll have those for you as they occur, but let's get back to what we were talking about here, 854. Uh, Linda from Maplewood, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning. Good morning. I'm a little shocked by the news. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that that is something. That's, uh... <laughs> but um, I was calling for the same reason the previous caller was. Uh -huh. Homeschool, because it's like playing Russian roulette. One year you'll get a fabulous teacher, and the next year you'll get an awful one who you can't do anything about. Yes. Your child must spend one year with a horrible teacher who's not doing anything for them. 
So for us, it was better to quit gambling and, and teach them at home. But mm -hmm. I, I'd much rather have them be able to go to school if the teachers were on merit or if they were evaluated, evaluated or if you could get rid of a bad teacher. But because of tenure, you can't. You know, there's an obvious law that any system that does not recognize excellence and encourage people toward that is doomed to mediocrity. And, I think and this is exactly what we've got. In fact, the current system, thanks to the industrial type union, encourages mediocrity or less. And, and I think that's what we're seeing in test scores and, and in children not learning. Yeah. Because if you miss a whole year of education because you're not getting anything from a teacher who's not doing their job, then you really can't catch up the following year. Okay, thank you very much, Linda. Certainly uh, well stated. 856 it is on New Jersey 101.5. Dennis Malloy. Judy Franco. Dennis and Judy. Weekday mornings at 10. New Jersey 101.5. Look what's on HSN TV and HSN.com this week. Hi, I'm Susan Lucci. If you think you've seen drama on All My Children, I invite you someplace else for some real drama inside my closet. I've just introduced an exclusive line of jewelry and accessories on HSN and HSN.com. And for inspiration, I threw open my closet doors and handpicked some of my favorite pieces. First, I grabbed the handbag award to a world premiere. Then the bracelet my husband gave me on our honeymoon. Even the shoes I used to walk down the red carpet in Except Miami. In fact, you won't believe how well my designers have recreated these exciting looks. Living the glamorous life does have its perks, and one of them is having access to some of the latest styles around. Come see what I've selected for you. The Susan Lucci Collection is an HSN exclusive. For showtimes or to shop anytime, visit hsn.com. HSN, on TV and online. Leg pain can be a sign of deadly disease. On today's Central State Medical Minute, information about a free screening that could save your life. Peripheral vascular disease, called PVD, is a warning sign of potential heart attack, stroke, or a life-threatening aneurysm. Ten million Americans over the age of 50 have PVD and don't even know it. Dr. Kenneth Tomkovich, a board-certified radiologist, says identifying PVD early reduces the risk of devastating complications. Which could be uh, ulcerations in their feet or legs or perhaps even the need for uh, amputation due to very severe vascular disease in the legs. If your legs hurt when you walk but the pain stops when you rest or if you suffer from numbness, tingling or sores on your feet that don't heal, register for a free 15-minute PVD screening at Central State Medical Center in Freehold on Thursday, September 20th from 9 to 4. For registration information, call 800-338-1899. Welcome to the Rue Zone. Meet Jean, a driver. Her car has stalled in a traffic jam. Come on, everybody's waiting. Ouch, not so hard. What? Who said that? Me, your car. Go here, go there. I've had it. I'm on strike. What? Don't give me that. Cars don't go on strike. This one does, and these are my demands. Get me washed once a week. Fill me up with premium fuel and get better car insurance from Rue Insurance. Hey, I'll buy into the car washing stuff, but better car insurance? Get real. I'm just glad I have it. Ever hear of pricing advice? Rue can get you better car insurance at a savings and help you understand your policy. So pick up that cell phone and see what Rue can do for you and me. This is too weird. Okay, I'll call, but only if you promise to start. There you have it. Another strange tale from the Rue Zone. You can count on Rue Insurance to find a better way. Call Rue Insurance at 1-800-272-4RUE. That's 1-800-272-4RUE. Okay, terrible thing going on in New York. Airplane apparently has hit the World Trade Tower. We'd like to ask anybody in, uh, what, like Jersey City listeners, Hoboken, uh, Weehawken in the area, yeah, Hudson County, who can see that, who witness it, uh, would, would appreciate a call. 1-800-283-101.5 is our number. And uh, we'll have more on that uh, coming up in just a moment with Joe Cutter. Quick weather, Alan. All right, please. sunshine basically for the rest of the week. Maybe a late shower on Thursday, slight chance. We'll have a full forecast at the end of New Jersey coming up at the top of the hour. New Jersey 101.5 FM radio. Again, uh, this story, and you'll hear it in uh, more detail coming up in moments with Eric Scott and Joe Cutter. And if you can see that, uh, we would appreciate a call. Or if you saw something leading up to this collision, our number is 1-800-283-101.5. New Jersey 101.5 News. I would like very much to hear your story and your report. 
New Jersey 101.5 FM radio. I'm Jim Gerhardt. Time is 9 o'clock. From New Jersey's most listened to station, New Jersey 101.5 radio news starts now. Disaster in New York City. Good morning, I'm Joe Cutter. Topping our report this hour, major news outlets reporting a plane crash into the World Trade Center in New York City this morning. With the latest on this story, News Jersey's Eric Scott live in the studio. Eric? All right, well, Joe, this is going to be one of those days where you're going to remember when, 20 years ago, from New Jersey and all around uh, the upper part of our state, you can see smoke that is pouring out of the World Trade Center. A gaping hole in the upper floors of one of those twin towers. It appears right now that a plane has hit one of those towers. We believe it is the southernmost tower. The smoke is unbelievable. Debris has been falling from the sky. Eyewitnesses can't believe their eyes. And I looked up and the side of the World Trade Center exploded right when I looked up. And uh, at that point, debris started falling. I couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, we have no word on fatalities or injuries at this point, but already there is speculation that the death and injury toll will be severe. It looks like about 20 stories down from the top of the, the tower of the World Trade Center is where this plane went into the side of the building, and the smoke is pouring out from all four sides of the superstructure now. There are conflicting reports as to what kind of a plane it was. We've heard that it may have been a smaller twin-engine plane. It may have been something as large as a 737. Witnesses report hearing something akin to a sonic boom and then seeing the upper level of the World Trade Center explode. And that's where we are at this point. This is a developing story. We are also interested in talking to any of the eyewitnesses that may have been able to see it. Now, Pat is at the Holland Tunnel, and Pat is on New Jersey 101.5 now with, a, with an eyewitness view. Pat, what can you see from where you are? Okay, if the looking at the New York side, it's the left tower. It's about a third of the way, not quite a third of the way down from the top. Uh, a lot of flames starting to come out now, black smoke. Looks like the fire and smoke's rising to the top. Can you see any? Can you see any of the debris, Pat, that's still falling from the tower? You're quite a ways away. I'm across the river. Yeah, uh, I don't see anything falling a little lot, but uh, I can see the smoke starting to get greater and greater. It's the tower with the antenna on it. All right, let's um, let's get another eyewitness view here from Tom in Secaucus. Tom, you actually saw this thing explode? Yeah, we were standing here in this construction site at Allied Junction, and. Uh, the uh, smoke and the explosion drew my attention to it, and uh, just a massive amount of smoke, uh, uh, smoke and everything coming off the tower. And uh, at first you couldn't tell where it was coming from, and then you could see that, uh, just like they said, about 20 stories up uh, from the top, it was just unbelievable. Can uh, there was a noise, but, uh, oh, oh, there it is, something else hit it. Something else just hit the tower. All right, well oh, my God. Something else, a plane just hit the tower. It hit the other tower, and there's a mass explosion. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. All right, I'm, uh, unfortunately. Uh, plane just hit the tower. All right, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have a video of that. I, you know, I, I, yeah. I can't, I can't confirm that. We're back in the, we're back in the newsroom to, to check that out. Greg, you're in Atlantic Highlands. Can you confirm that that there has been a, there has been another incident there? Uh, I can't at the moment, but I do see a rather large plume, uh, the secondary to the first one. It's a good possibility there might have been a second explosion. Uh, I'm in Atlantic Highlands. I'm looking directly at it right now. There's a tremendous amount of smoke coming out of it, moving to the east. What, what, we're trying to get... I'm sorry, bear with us here, everybody. This is live radio. Let's let's recap what we know here. An aircraft has crashed into the upper floors of one of the World Trade Center towers this morning. The black smoke continues to pour out of two holes in the side of that building. Now, there is activity that continues to go on in the, in, in the air right now. Carmen, um, in Jersey City. Carmen, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Go ahead. How are you doing today? Fine. Oh, my God. Another plane just hit it. Oh, my God. It, this is terrible. I, I experienced the first crash, and then I experienced another one. This is really terrible, the way it came across and hit the second one. 
<laughs> All right, let's. Uh, that's two. That's two reports of that we have right now. I'm oh sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that I'm that I'm a little reserved. I was hoping that I would have video in the studio here where I could act, where I could actually see that. Joe, do you have anything new that you can add to this right now? Yes, our CBS right now is reporting that in fact there were two different aircraft that struck the building. Right. Uh, we don't. Uh, of course, that's still officially unconfirmed. But CBS is reporting that there are two aircraft into the building. Nancy and Lyndon. Nancy, you also saw an, another explosion on this World Trade Center tower? Yeah, I just saw a plane go by and um, another explosion. Looks like the other building is on fire now. Oh boy, this is really bad. I just pray for anybody who's in that building. All right, we're looking right now um, that there is a plane on the north side of that tower. It looks like now it's a, a DC-3. We said about 20 stories from the top. We're now looking at about 10 stories from the top. And we have now uh, some unconfirmed reports that, that this may have even happened happened twice. Neil is driving on the turnpike. Neil, what are you seeing on the World Trade Center right now? Yeah, I'm looking right at it now from the, world, from the uh, God, uh, New Jersey turnpike. And the other building's on fire now. Now, the second World Trade Center, you can see smoke coming out of that as well? My, my, I've been getting my way into the city, and I just called me all panicky, hoping it wasn't on the paper train yet, and uh, I didn't make it because of the traffic, and both, both of the towers are on fire right now. All right, well, let's recap what we know at this point. We know, uh, Joe, that there has been one, possibly two, plane hits. And the World Trade Center. Very serious um, damage uh, to one or more of the buildings, and uh, this has been caused by aircraft at this point. And uh, I guess one of the uh, one of the things that uh, is a bone of contention right now is how many airplanes hit the buildings and and why. Well, one would be a coincidence, or one would be it would be an accident. Two would not be would not be a coincidence. Or would be a terribly horrible accident for sure. But uh, we also do not know at this point, Eric, the size of these airplanes and uh, and of course the uh, the huge unanswered question, how many people are involved both inside the building and in the airplanes? That, that remains a, a great question mark at this point. We do know that there is severe damage to at least one or more of the uh, World Trade Center buildings. And uh, as, 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 as far as that goes, we don't know how extensive that damage is or how long it will take to put out any fires. Uh, as some of our callers have been telling us, there is a great deal of smoke pouring out of the buildings. And uh, this is going to be a very difficult situation to contain for a long time because uh, this is a fire so far right, well, up we, on the towers. Joe, we do have confirmed now, um, as amazing as this may sound now, we do have confirmed that there are two planes that have now uh, Jim you want to you want to come in here and, and, and join in on this now the two planes have now hit the World Trade Center it, it, the, the same tower now the same tower, tower. A different, it looks it appears to be a different a different tower uh, as you're watching the conflagration on the first fire in the tower you could see a small plane come in from the right which is coming from the west presumably and it looked as if it were going behind both towers but then you could see it went and it didn't come out and there's a large orange explosion uh, off to the left. So it would appear from what we can see that uh, the second plane hit the other tower. It is very difficult to see because of the amount of smoke and, and fire. But it's a terrifying thing. It almost appears to be kamikaze attacks. Uh, the, you know, the, dare, dare we, my guess dare we even say that at this point that that, that'd be kind of hard to if you see that the first plane hit dead center, and I would almost think a commercial airline or the pilot would try to bank or do something yeah. Yeah. Uh, to deflect his thing, but it just dead center. The second one comes in at full tilt, right? Uh, and from the camera angle, it was yeah. behind the first tower, but it certainly appeared that it hit the second tower. Um, I'd like to keep taking some eyewitness please, accounts of this thing yes, as, as, we'll as, do nothing as, else as we go yes. through here. Randall is in uh, in Newark. Randall, you're on New Jersey 101.5 as we um, as we cover this amazing event here. What did you see, Randall? Did you see this sec this second well, I, plane? Yes, I didn't see the plane. I saw the explosion as the guy was talking on the radio, and I was watching it. I didn't see the plane go in, but I did see the second explosion. I'm sitting here on turnpike looking at it from Newark. Because of all the smoke, I didn't see the plane, but I did see the big explosion, you know, the ball of fire, I guess, when uh, when uh, the second explosion occurred. We had, a, we had an eyewitness account on the air as that second plane hit. It was hard enough to believe that um, that one plane hit hit this tower, and then to hear the second one. I, you know, I, my apologies to you, but I, I found I found that a little bit 
a little bit hard to believe. Pat is uh, on Route 78, also uh, saw that, that second plane. Pat? Yes, hi. Um, yeah, we did. My wife and I sitting on 78 coming through the toll plaza. And when that fella was on the radio, we saw right, I'm, him. I'm gonna, Pat, I'm sorry, but I, Joe, Joe uh, is, is right there on, uh, on the scene. Joe, go ahead. Yeah, I'm right across there from Bayonne there. Uh, I was just closing my trailer doors when I caught the first pup. I didn't hear an explosion because they got a whole construction site here running. But it's on the tower building where all the transmitter towers are and everything. It's on the north side of that. It's not on this side facing Jersey. It's more or less on the other side. All right, we do have, um, boy, this is, uh, I'm, I'm... But it, it's, it's going to it. It's, uh, I would say, at least the top 10, 15 floors, maybe 20. And the smoke continues to pour uh, out of the top of that World Trade Center. Our reporters are on the way. We thank you for your eyewitness accounts. Um, I think I'm going to turn this back over to... Uh, I'm going to turn this back over to here, here to you, Jim, in a second. As we talk to Dan in, um, in Sayreville, who, who saw that second plane go in. Go ahead, Dan. Dan, go ahead on line one. Dan? At the gas station on Route 35 in Sayreville. Well, South Amboy. I can see the, see the flames coming out of the building from, Sayre, from South Amboy. Hello? Yeah, Dan, go ahead, please, with your report. Yeah, I can see the flames. I was at the, uh, I guess it's South Amboy, Keen, um, Lawrence Harbor area out the yeah. gas station. And I was looking, I was getting gas, and I got out after I heard the report. I looked over toward New York, and I could see the smoke coming out from, from uh, Keen, from uh, Lawrence Harbor. And I, I saw bright orange flames shortly thereafter when I was looking over there. Now you confirm though that, that both of the towers have been hit, is that correct? I, I can't see them. I couldn't see the towers. I, they're so far away. I can uh -huh. see the smoke though from, from uh from Lawrence Harbor. Okay, Dan, I, pre I appreciate the report. Uh, yes, we'd like to hear from people who, who could see exactly what is uh, is going on there. Hmm? Eric okay, Eric Van Ness, I believe, is... Uh, oh, Eric, there you go. Yeah, hey. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're, on the, you're on the air. I know. I saw the second plane go into the second tower. It has to be on purpose. The thing went directly into it yeah. at, at a, a very high rate of speed and completely cut the, the second tower. Uh, it went right into the, I guess, the south side and blew right through the north side. Um, the two crashes were about 18 minutes apart. Uh, the, the whole building is on fire. I'm, I'm watching the TV uh, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, and it's, I've never seen anything like it. The that. second plane looked almost like it was a rocket. It almost had yeah. to be uh, on, on purpose, went right through the building. I, I, I could see I that. relatives that work in this building, and we can't get in touch with them. Oh, God. Um, we're trying everything. Cell phones off. Nothing is getting through. I, I don't know what floor they're on, but the uh, second tower that was hit was farther below, about three quarters up the tower. Uh -huh. The first tower was about maybe ten floors from the top. Both are just like... Just cut in half. Might as well be. All right. I, I want to talk to uh, David Fine. Um, he is one of our satellite reporters up in, in northern New Jersey now. Um, actually, David, you are in you are in Manhattan. In fact, you you're in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Eric, I am. I was going from our traffic center at Harrison Street to the World Trade Center on one of the New York City subways. When I exited the train at the World Trade Center stop, we were told that there was a shooting at first. Everyone went back into the train, and everything appeared to be normal. When I went back upstairs, they were evacuating the World Trade Center buildings. And so I ran with the rest of the crowd as quickly as I could to check in here at 101.5. And what I did see was flaming embers, literally from about the 77th floor, coming down. And as I tried to get on the air a few minutes ago, a second explosion occurred, at which point we all had to run for our lives, basically. Uh, there are cars with shattered windows, people running through the streets, crying. There's literally nothing left of the one of the third sections of the World Trade Tower West Building. Um, the second tower has been hit as well. It's still unconfirmed whether it is um, other than an airstrike. Um, the way the embers are flowing, nothing can be determined at this time. Well, already now, a um, good friend of mine, Ira Furman, the former NTSB investigator, now uh, a big analyst with, with CNN, was listening to him just a few moments ago, and already they're talking about this in terms of, of, of a deliberate attack. Uh, once could be an accident, twice, um, you know, we, we don't think so. And, and the, the, the sizes of the planes right now would, would seem to indicate that this is something you could pack up with a, with a pretty potent explosive. We know the World Trade Center, um, you know, from every account we've had from, from the FBI 
um, and and Secret Service ha has been has been a target of, of, of terrorists. There has been an attack there once before. Obviously, this is speculation, but some of the some of the, the preeminent experts on, on this are already beginning to raise the the, the, the possibility that this was in fact. It, a, it definitely can't attack. be ruled out. And I have to say that everyone is evacuating Lower Manhattan. People are walking uptown, actually running. I walk, I ran about a mile just to get out of the uh, the debris. Uh, that was falling from the sky, and I can tell you that on the other side, the authorities are coming downtown to get to oh the scene. Oh my goodness! It, it, yeah, it's not live. It's not live. we just saw the no, video. That's we, a film. We, we just saw the video again yeah. of um, of that second that's plane incredible. hitting the hitting the tower. It's like David, watching a movie. David, if you can hang with us for a second, Steve Michaels, another one of our traffic reporters in Manhattan. We're gonna. I'm gonna put you on hold for a second, David. Please hang with us if 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 you can. Can you do that for us, please? Um, let's talk to uh, Steve Michaels, another one of our traffic reporters. Steve, what can you see from, from where you are? Well, uh, good morning, Eric. From my vantage point here, um, just about at Newark Airport, they are already, it looks as though they're stopping traffic on Route 78 going up toward the Holland Tunnel. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, they're pretty much evacuating lower Manhattan, but this is just an incredible sight. Uh, both of these towers look like two humongous smokestacks. Uh, and it, it does not look good. As a matter of fact, uh, I was listening to uh, some other accounts on the radio, and a gentleman that he did say that he just actually saw a jet plane fly into one of the World Trade Centers. He said the guy dipped his wing, and they just went right in, and that was it. And it just pretty much mm -hmm. took out the entire uh, side of the building. See, we just saw a, a, a replay of that video now, and, and that is that is a, a, an accurate accounting. Uh, Joe Cutter from the newsroom is here with, a, with an update. Joe? Well, Eric, we, we have a bulletin that just moved from the Associated Press state line, Washington. The FBI says they are investigating reports of a plane hijacking right before the World Trade Center crashes. So, although the speculation continues, this uh, might uh, somehow draw a bead on exactly what's going on here. The FBI reports a plane was hijacked right before the World uh, Trade Center crashes. Now, we don't know where that plane was hijacked from, where it was going, or anything else, but I guess we can assume it had to be someplace in the area if, in fact, this FBI report is true and as there's more developments on that we'll present it to you All right, well the finger more and more is being pointed toward terrorism it is speculation at this point but nonetheless uh, the tragedy speaks for itself we have no reports yet of um, of any fatalities although the death toll will be high let's try and go back to David Fine our traffic reporter in Manhattan now um, David as macabre as it may sound have you seen any any injuries or fatalities removed from the building at this point uh, no not at all as a matter of fact I think uh, every Everyone who was in the subway and in the World Trade Center uh, bottom floor where the mall is, in my opinion, were evacuated safely. They did a tremendous effort. I have to really uh, say that the Port Authority police were marvelous in getting everybody out who was already on that plaza level. Um, obviously, the path trains are below that plaza level. Of course, trains would be held uh, on the other side at exchange place. I don't know the status of those trains that were in the tubes or in the station at that time. I would also say that the traffic uh, it was going to be gridlock in Lower Manhattan. If you have to come in through the Holland Tunnel, don't even think about it. Everything will be closed off. Don't come into Manhattan at all. David, can we uh, ask you to, to make your way a little bit farther, um, or a little bit closer to the to the World Trade Center for us now? Uh, we'll, we'll do that for you um, immediately. Okay. All right. Uh, David Fine. Um runs our traffic operation in, in northern New Jersey, and uh, Steve Michaels, who is also one of our traffic reporters there near, near, um, near looking at even some video pictures and hearing your description to believe that this, is, that this is really going on right now. Yeah, I know, and I heard on the radio that it said, gee whiz, we just had another report of a second strike, yeah. but I'm not sure if I believe him. Yeah. And I just couldn't believe it myself. I just a big ball of fire that came out of it, and that aircraft disappeared right into that building. Uh, it's horrendous. I, I hope to God that everybody's all right. Uh, it's just a horrible, horrible thing. Damn. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very, very much. It's, it's unbelievable. It's sitting here watching this as, as if you're watching a movie, yeah. sort, sort of a B science fiction movie. Uh, it would appear if this is, these are not kamikaze type, there it goes, uh, if these are not kamikaze type terrorist attacks. 
It has got to be the wildest coincidence ever seen. If we would like to hear from you in New Jersey 101.5. Our telephone number is 1-800-283-101.5. Uh, your, your view of this, uh, your, re your reaction to it, and hopefully from people who, who saw something they can add. Eric. All right, let, let's, let's go through what the, what the hard facts are at, at this point. Um, in Washington, the latest development, the FBI now reports that they are investigating a possible plane hijacking before one of, one of these crashes. There was no immediate word on injuries or fatalities in the, in the twin disasters. This happened just before 9 a.m., and then right around 9 o'clock is when that second plane came in. Now, the towers, by way of history, 1993, they were struck by bombers in the parking garage in 1993. Um, some of the eyewitnesses say the plane, the initial plane hit coming in low. It looked like it hit at a slight angle. You can see large holes in the sides of the 110-story building. Uh, the, the smoke is pouring out of that. Eyewitnesses on the ground have told us, including... Uh, including our own David Fine, that burning embers have been falling out of the uh, out of the building, um, and 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 the and the, the fire is um, is spectacular. Um, Frank Calderero Sr. I believe this is uh, I believe this is the father of our sales manager um, joins us now. Um, Frank, are you with us this morning? Uh, yes, I am. All right, Frank. Now I understand that you are a pilot. Uh, yes, I'm uh, retired from United. Yes. Okay. Seven thirty sevens. I understand is what the, is what you've flown. We've heard it, it, they heard say that one of the planes that may have hit one of these towers was in fact a seven thirty seven. Okay. Uh, I've just got news of that myself, and uh, <laughs> I don't know what I can tell you about it. Right. Uh, it's one of the airplanes I flew for United. All right. What can you What can you tell me about the air traffic pattern around that? What is the likelihood, Frank, that this was an accident? Uh, I, I would say almost 100% uh, uh, not an accident. Uh, uh, if, you, if you're implying that the, the radar may have guided the airplane into the building, that is, uh, that's not possible. The weather is absolutely clear, and uh, you know we look out the window when we fly these things. What are you What are you taught? Let's say, for example, is there any is there any scenario in your mind a complete total system breakdown that would cause you to lose control of the aircraft in such a manner that you could not avoid a structure as large as the World Trade Center? Well, you, if you're talking about a catastrophic uh, failure of uh, uh, hydraulic systems that uh, work flight controls, uh, I mean that that, that is. Is just so remote; it's probably uh, not even worth mentioning. Uh, there's backup systems, and the fact that both airplanes uh, wound up at the same place. No, I, I, I wouldn't say. Uh, my guess would be no. All right, the 737. Uh, how big of a plane is that? Uh, well, it carries about 115 people. It's a twin-engine uh, Boeing airplane. It's uh, capable of coast-to-coast -coast operations, mostly a domestic. Uh, domestic service and uh, most airlines have them it's been a very efficient airplane for many many years i can't imagine even at gunpoint any pilot that would deliberately steal uh, steer his plane into the side of into the side of, of of the world trade center is it a plane that would be relatively easy for somebody not familiar with it to fly well it's a uh, it's a two man airplane it's just two gen just two pilots in the cockpit uh, if you want to uh, guess at some scenario, uh, if the airplane is airborne and if someone uh, overcame the crew and uh, took over the airplane themselves, it, it's not that difficult to fly uh, once it's airborne and you can steer it uh, where you want to go with it. It's, uh, I, I, would, I would be curious as to... Uh, uh, no, the radar tracking, and uh, I don't even know where it took off from. Do we know that yet? Did it take no, off from no, York? Or? No. Now the FBI is investigating the possibility of a hijacking uh, before the before one of these crashes, but they they aren't saying from where. Uh, we're hmm. we're speculating as fast as as this happened that it had to be somewhere. Um, in, well, an airplane of that size obviously took off from uh, uh, one of the three New York airports. Uh, I mean, that would be my guess, and there would certainly be some. Uh, some uh, departure tracking on it. Uh, I mean, they would, uh, if there was a hijack involved, I, I would imagine it would have been uh, taken place after the airplane was airborne. Uh, so the departure would 
would probably have been normal, so they, they should know something about it. Frank, can you can you walk us through what the what the scenario is and the, and the training that you've been given um, in the event that somebody comes to try and take control of your aircraft? Well, uh, this is uh, really a uh, really a weird one, but uh, uh, most of the time when there's uh, someone tries to overcome the crew and hijack the airplane, uh, we we go where they want to go. Uh, that uh, makes a lot more sense than uh, risking the lives of everybody on board to have a fist fight uh, in the air. Uh, but this is this is uh, this is off the wall. I mean, for someone to hijack an airplane and deliberately crash it, I, I, I just don't. Uh, I can't imagine that. What we're what we're getting now from some broadcast reports is the first plane to hit the tower was a DC nine. Oh. The second plane was either a seven thirty seven or a seven sixty seven. I see. Well, both of those airplanes are two-man crews, and uh, and to overcome the pilots, I guess, is uh, is, is is what happened. I, I can't imagine uh, anything else. I mean, I can't imagine uh, I can't imagine someone forcing the pilot to fly into the building. I, I would I would think that they uh, you know overcame the pilots completely, and someone got in that seat and steered the airplane into the building. I, Frank Calderero, Sr., thank you for uh, your insight in this. And more and more, Jim, this is this is looking like this the, was not... The second not plane, we didn't see the first one. The second plane yeah. came in at full throttle. That was yeah. throttle to the firewall. That was as, uh, uh, surely as fast as that aircraft could go. Okay, there you can see it, at, and that looks like... <clears throat> uh, just looking at it yeah. here, that would, the 767 is twin engine. Yeah. And the engines are slung under the wing, from what we can see there. Uh... It's a very fuzzy picture, yeah. but it is a large aircraft. Uh, the report we had was that it was a United Airlines plane that was hijacked. Again, we're not quite sure Don't know from where. where though. Yeah, um, we'll get uh, we'll get the latest news update on this in just a, in just a moment with uh, with our Joe Cutter. I was just talking to uh, meteorologist Alan Casper, who, by the way, is in the studio with us now. And uh, Alan is uh, sharing with us that the weather was extremely good. Uh, yeah, for couldn't situation. ask for a better day. The skies are clear, not t too much wind even at that level. So weather, at least from what I can tell, absolutely not an issue here. So, in other words, you're, you're saying that the visibility, uh, this couldn't Close. have been a, a problem with navigation or visibility not, in not, any way. No, not from weather. Oh, no absolutely. way. You can look now yeah. just some TV pictures. You can see for 40 miles. Yeah, and, and as we heard from uh, Frank Calderero, a former uh, pilot of a 737, uh, there is almost no chance there is almost no chance that uh, that this was an accident. That, 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 that there is no chance that this was not a, a deliberate well, act, a steerage inside the... And, and both towers now, as, the world, as we look at our, our, our ablaze. World Trade Towers have become apparently symbolic to terrorists mm -hmm. as some symbol of the United States and its power and all the things that they rail against. Um... Again, there's just not enough information to know where the planes came from. But I, I would... Now, Newark is not that far away. No. Uh, it would seem that second plane, if it did take off from Newark, it must have gone some distance to work up that, that much speed. To get in there. Uh, because yeah. that, that was definitely not going up. The plane was sort of on a downgrade. And it was coming uh, very, very fast, full speed. Clearly, there was no attempt made to... Uh, to miss that. We're asking for people who uh, who can see this, who saw it. I, I believe the president is is uh, in the process. I don't know if he is. In Breaking news. A special report now from New Jersey's 24-hour broadcast news team. Good morning, everyone. I'm Eric Scott, recapping our top story. Planes, two of them, crashed into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers just minutes apart this morning in a horrific scene of explosions and fires that have left gaping holes in the 110-story building. There was no immediate word on injuries or fatalities in the twin disasters, which happened shortly before 9 o'clock and then right after 9 um, again. Large holes are still visible on the side of the 110-story building. The uh, tops of the Twin Towers obscured by the smoke, and all indications are this was a deliberate act. Uh, we will continue taking your eyewitness reports as we move through this morning um, and, and get more information. We know that, uh, that one plane, at least, a United Airlines jet, was hijacked uh, shortly before the first accident. Joe? Eric, the uh, President of the United States is uh, currently addressing the nation, and uh, he is uh, going to make a statement. Actually, he has...
he has finished making that statement as the uh, speculation on all fronts points more and more toward this being a deliberate act. Now, uh, the FBI in Washington is investigating reports the plane was hijacked before the crashes and a senior government official speaking on the condition of anonymity says the agency, that would be the FBI, is pursuing reports that one or both of the planes were hijacked and that the crashes may have been the result of a suicide mission. The source stressed the reports are preliminary and officials don't know the cause of the crashes. Now, it certainly doesn't look like an accident, according to a second government official. And again, we don't have any identifiers on either one of these government officials. Uh, they're speaking anonymously, but uh, they say it appears that either one or both of the uh, crashes were in fact suicide missions. And uh, Bob Williams joins us now in the studio. Bob? And Joe, the, uh, the, the traffic is just a secondary situation but uh, I can tell you the Lincoln Tunnel is closed in and out of New York. The Holland Tunnel is closed, and obviously there's no path service right now. And it's just uh, total mayhem, and it'll be several hours before we can even get a handle on it. All right, thanks very much, uh, uh, Bob Williams, with a traffic update there. There was no immediate report of injuries or fatalities in the twin disasters. They happened shortly before 9 a.m. this morning. And once again, here's Eric Scott. President Bush is now saying that this was an apparent terrorist attack. Let there be no doubt, uh, the FBI is investigating. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. The president says they are continuing to investigate. At least one of those planes, as Joe told you, has been hijacked. They are looking into that. It appears to be a United Airlines uh, plane. Debris continues to fall like leaflets from the sky. The northern tower remains to, uh, remains on fire, and the smoke, smoke continues to pour outside of uh, outside of both. Now, just before, um, or I guess just after the top of the hour, we had an eyewitness who saw the second plane hit um, and was in as much disbelief as we were. Now, we were standing here in this construction site at Allied Junction, and uh, the uh, smoke and explosion drew my attention to it. And uh, just a massive amount of smoke, uh, uh, smoke and everything coming off the tower. And uh, at first you couldn't tell where it was coming from. And then you could see that uh, just like they said, about 20 stories up uh, from the top, it was just unbelievable. Okay. Uh, there was a noise, but uh, oh, oh, there it is, someone else hit it. Someone else just hit the tower. All right, well. Oh my God. Someone else, a plane just hit the tower. It hit the other tower and there's a mass explosion. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And that was the second plane uh, hitting. And Jim, we've heard um, we've heard eyewitness accounts from the streets of Manhattan and from our side of the river all morning long on just the just the the, the unbelievable well, nature. Of I this. think Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is probably the proper response right now. As yeah, the caller said that's about. Okay, let's uh, seven or rather nine thirty four. Let's talk to Lisa. Uh, uh, yeah, Lisa in Egg Harbor City. You're on New Jersey one hundred one point five. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, I'm watching it right now on CNN, and they're saying that one was an American Airlines seven sixty seven Boeing out of Boston was hijacked. Out of Boston was hijacked. Yes. Okay. And that's what they're showing right now. They don't say they're if that's saying. the first or the second. They, they didn't say whether it was the first or the second. I thank you, Lisa, very, very much. Let me talk to Wendy in Woodbridge, who saw the uh, the plane. Wendy, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. I'm driving my husband to the airport this morning, and we were looking at the World Trade Centers because it was such a beautiful view. You could see them. We could see them from the Raritan Bridge. Uh -huh. um, I saw a really funky cloud, and I, it just, I, I went to say something, and my husband was listening to you guys, and so he, he, he hushed me, and then... You know, they came into view, we saw the smoke, we were like, oh my gosh, and you guys, you know, came on, and as, as you had your correspondent on that watched the second plane hit, we saw the big mushroom cloud go up. My heart's going out to those people, and I, I have, I, 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 we're, we're in utter shock. I, my husband brought something up interesting. He's ex-military, we don't see any jet, any air support, any nothing. I mean, what, isn't this obviously, a terrorist attack? Isn't this an act of war? It would be very difficult, Wendy, if it were anything else. 
Well, where, where are our... Where, I, I see nothing. I, I'm looking at the... Screen. Well, I, I, th I think at this point, uh, it would have to be established the, the origin of the attack. Right now, nobody knows. By definition of a terrorist attack, it's a very sneaky operation. And they certainly didn't have, they, there weren't foreign markings on the aircraft. So I think, Wendy, they, uh, I, I think everybody feels the same as you do. But I think uh, certainly they want to find out exactly who was behind it, which should not be terribly difficult. Yeah, well, hopefully. Hey, thank you, Wendy, very much. i let you go. We're, we're fading a little bit. 936 and Bruce and Wayne, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning, Bruce. Yes, good morning, Jim. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, where are you and, and what do you see? Well, uh, actually, uh, as ironic as this was, I was having a uh, check ride, a currency uh, ride, uh, helicopter rating with an FAA inspector, and we got to watch this whole bloody thing unfold. Oh, man. Uh, it, uh, the first, you know, we couldn't see too well. We were obviously weren't watching that. I was uh, under mm -hmm. the gun spreading out the check ride um, when the first one hit, and that diverted our attention a little bit. We got back to business. Uh, and I thought I heard uh, the air traffic control calling uh, aircraft to clear airspace. Uh, when I spoke to the uh, inspector afterwards, he thought he had heard it too, but uh, we were on a, another frequency and just monitoring that frequency. In any event, um, at first it looked like maybe it was a G3, a Gulfstream or something of that size, but uh, I pulled the helicopter up into a hover and he said, Jesus, that looks like a commercial aircraft. And uh, where the heck, you know, is this fella going? Um, and he just, you know, he torpedoed it right into the side of the oh. building. Um, it was, it looked like a 767 to me once we started to focus on it. Now, are you talking about the second crash? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, that. The first uh, one I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't see it. Right. The entire, because obviously yeah. I was c concentrating on not killing myself and the inspector. That, um, that, the, the, the second one looked as if he came in at absolute full tilt. Absolutely, and and the thing that's odd is you don't have anybody approaching the lower end of Manhattan with a full-size airliner there. So once we saw what was going on, our ten attention was focused in that area. We just uh, started circling. He said, you know, just hold off on on doing our activities, and uh, he went right into uh, right into it full bore. It, it didn't look to me like anything to do with any kind of, uh, of hydraulic failure, control system failure, or anything of that sort whatsoever. He. Uh, he planted it right in the side of that thing. It, it was just horrible. Are you back down now? Yeah, that's, I, when I got down, you know, the guy said, look, forget it. You, the check ride's over. You passed. You didn't kill us when you saw that. That's good enough for that's me. That's amazing. So. Bruce, thank you very, very much. I appreciate a good report. Eric? And Jim, the uh, state police now say all Hudson River bridges and tunnels have been closed as a precaution in the wake of what appears to be a terror attack on the World Trade Center. A uh, spokesman says officials have opened the emergency command center in Ewing to help coordinate activity. So you, as you can imagine, law enforcement from all over this area um, is, uh, is on its way up there as our as our rescue uh, efforts uh, again president bush said it is an apparent terrorist attack on our country as two planes hit the world trade center um, the smoke continues to pour out of these structures uh, this hour um, the pentagon is now investigating uh, the possibility of the of the terrorist attack um, th there is still we're told that they've been unable to get into the upper floors to be able to mount any kind of a, of a substantive rescue effort if there is indeed anybody uh, up there left to rescue. If you are headed northward um, to try to get in the city, pretty much forget about it. Um, Bob Williams, our traffic reporter, uh, joins us now with with a, a rundown of where basically Bob you can't go what we point. well everything what we can tell you right now everything in and out of New York City is closed the Holland Tunnel the Lincoln Tunnel the George Washington Bridge everything has been sealed off the Staten Island crossings you cannot get between New Jersey and New York right now the ferries are shut down the path service everything in and out of lower Manhattan sealed off the East River crossings all the city subways everything is locked down the airports are all closed New York, LaGuardia, and Kennedy all close right now until they can get a handle on what's going on here. So we're in a total lockdown with transportation right now. Al Delafave is a spokesman for the New Jersey State Police. He is joining us live now on New Jersey 101.5. Uh, <laughs> Al, what, what, what can we say about this? Well, until we're sure these events are indeed over, that's the way it has to be. Yours, exactly a lockdown. Uh, all bridges and tunnels are closed. We've activated our emergency command center. 
We're in contact with the county coordinators, see what they need right now early on. It seems uh, the biggest problems are in Hudson County area where they're uh, experiencing phone difficulties. So little by little, we'll assess how this has affected the New Jersey side and do what we have to do. Uh, the state police, I'm assuming, are sending any aid that can be sent? Yes, yes. Uh, again, that would mean equipment, personnel, anything that's needed. Uh, is this a type of, of, of event where where anybody who is wearing a badge in New Jersey immediately get calls into duty? Oh, yes. It immediately, immediately is put on alert uh, to wait and see what else might be uh, the the out there in terms of uh, any other terrorist act. We are, we are now getting... Uh, we are now getting a report. This, this, Al, we're getting a report now a plane may have crashed into the Pentagon. Um, really? it, the live pictures from Washington now. Al, I'll let you go. I know you have, have, okay. have a lot to do. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, he, he said a chilling thing. He said a chilling thing right at the opening. Al said that uh, they're locked out until we're sure this, this is, is over. over. And now it would it appear that this, it was is, not over. that this is not over. We are looking at, um, at video now from Washington. Flames uh, or smoke at least pouring out of the Pentagon at this point. And the initial reports are that, that a plane may have hit the Pentagon as what may be a series of terrorist attacks continue now um, up and down the, the East Coast. And, uh, Jim, I'll have to let you... Uh, well, and, and who knows where else now. This was, uh, what, 40 minutes from the original attack in New York and now apparently we have one uh, in Washington or across the river in Virginia at the Pentagon and of course nobody has the faintest idea what might go from here. Uh, let's talk to uh, uh, Bob in Brooklyn. Uh, Bob saw both of these planes hit then we'll uh, we're trying to get our coverage now with the, the the Washington blast but let's get back to the first one. Bob you're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning. How are you? How are you, Jim? Pretty, pretty shaken. <laughs> oh, shaken. I'm telling you, when my heart came out of my chest, it came out big time. I was sitting down at the bottom of Cindy, City of Industry, uh, getting my truck unloaded, because I'm out of Millstone, New Jersey. And I saw the one plane, that, if that wasn't a direct bank into that tower, I don't know All what right, was. I, I want to break in here. We're going to go to... Uh, hang on, Bob. Go to, go, go to the Associated so Press here for, plane was for a second around, now. Uh, from the south side of the Pentagon. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. What I saw, what I saw, the tail was coming up along 395, uh, very low, and headed right into the Pentagon. It struck. It struck probably about a hundred feet above as it came in. Did it go into the center of that uh, of that uh, five-shaped uh, building, or can you see uh, where it actually hit? Exactly where I'm located now. You know, there's a helicopter pad where a lot of the uh, dignitaries and military people land. Uh, it appears to have hit in that area. I'm kind of blocked by some new construction to tell you the exact point, but it is about in the area that you see the helicopters land at the Pentagon. All right, that's on the west side then. That is not, uh, that is a, a full building away then from where the Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs are located. It's on the All west right, side then, then. There you go then. There All you right. go. So we're at that point then it should. Oh, wait, there's another blast. Just blue. Hold on. I'm looking to see where it is right this second, but I have not. I just heard a second explosion, a big one, and I cannot see where it is. I don't see anything at this point. This still the same explosive area of the Pentagon. Well, That's Dave, we're I being see. told now that Pentagon officials uh, have ordered an evacuation of the Pentagon. In other words, abandon ship. Get out of the Pentagon. Traffic is beginning to back up on 395. It's still rolling into Washington from the south side, believe it or not, very slowly. The north side, the uh, going south, uh, is, is stopped. But going north or into the dis district, if you will, is at this point still rolling. Well, but, Dave, uh, it, would, it would appear now that uh, perhaps uh, this nation is uh, is under attack uh, from some unknown source. Uh, I would say uh, without a without I mean, question. This, uh, we're looking at we're looking at pictures here now. Uh, looking at Washington, we're seeing from the executive office building, which is being evacuated now along with the White House, we're seeing columns of smoke across the river at the Pentagon rising. Let's go now back to my colleague Rita Foley. CNN now reporting, Russ, and, and you were just mentioning too, the White House is being evacuated, the Pentagon is being evacuated, we have the World Trade Center situation. Uh, the President earlier spoke 
after the World Trade Center situation, but before the Pentagon uh, problem and before the White House was evacuated, the president who was in Florida spoke about an apparent terrorist attack, but we don't know the nature of that attack at this point. We don't know who might have been behind it. We do know that the first plane to hit the World Trade Center this morning, just before 9 o'clock Eastern All right, on New Jersey 101.5, uh, I'm Eric Scott. Jim Gerhardt is with us. You are on the phones with us as we take eyewitness reports. The West Wing of the White House now has been evacuated amid terrorist threats. President Bush confirms this was a terrorist attack. Now three Three attacks involving airplanes, two of them crashing into each tower of the World Trade Center, one now into the Pentagon. Um, New Jersey remains on a state of alert. Our proximity to New York makes us a target. Um, at least uh, from a residual standpoint, the state police have rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed. Just last week, we did a story about a potential terrorist attack, talking about you know what happens when the unthinkable happens. Nobody ever thinks it can happen here. Well, now, as we have heard from the president himself, it has, in fact, happened as terrorists have struck U.S. soil just across the, the Hudson River and then just south uh, to Virginia. It was ironic in your series on that just uh, latter part of last week, I believe yep. it was. Yep. You said, and the attack is inevitable. Is inevitable. And that turned out to be prophetic. And uh, again, we don't know if it's ended. We have no idea where this will go from now. And we are, uh, we are standing by to bring you the latest. We will tell you that cellular communication is virtually non-existent in lower Manhattan. We do have, um, we do have individuals um, of our staff on the, on the scene there. Mm -hmm. um, we have reporters on this side of the river as well. But as in talking to my colleagues, it's, it's locked down. Some of these reporters are getting by on bicycles and uh, quarters and pay phones as we try to get this information to you. But here's what we do know. A terrorist attack. The attacks may not be over, and law enforcement continues to try and keep the peace around these areas. New Jersey 101.5 FM radio. It's Tuesday morning, September 11th, and uh, as you might imagine, uh, everybody has their eye on every available medium here, and of course we're talking with people. Uh, I think people are calling us now. We would appreciate Joe Cutter. You've got something new. Yeah, Jim, we have just gotten word from Washington. The Federal Aviation Administration has just ordered all aircraft flights grounded across the country from sea to shining sea. Um, they are all grounded, uh, according to the FAA. They have ordered uh, whatever planes are in flight right now to land at their earliest and uh, safest opportunity. And the FAA has ordered a grounding of all aircraft flights. Well, that uh, that would seem certainly uh, an inevitable move. A yeah, wise so, precaution. Wise it, precaution, so nothing point. else could be hijacked. Because we have absolutely no idea what the plans of the terrorists are. But this apparently, it, it, it's uh, the, these were the kamikaze-style attacks. Yeah. There's almost no doubt about that. And it's incredible, an incredible thing to see. Very difficult to believe that we're seeing what we're seeing and hearing what we are hearing. And uh, we, of course, will will try to, to keep up, bring you information instantly as soon as we uh, can get any of it. Uh, so far as what is happening in New Jersey right now, other than travel in and out of New York and the, uh, the bridges, the tunnels, the whole thing, there is no such thing. The local airports are totally closed down now, uh, Newark, uh, Kennedy, and LaGuardia. Uh, and in New Jersey, the response seems to be sending as many people as we can in law enforcement and in uh, emergency services as we can to New York to help. Yeah, the New Jersey chapter of the American Red Cross has already sprung into action. Dave Novak is with their Princeton office and he tells us that uh, they're asking anybody and everybody who is a volunteer to help. Right now what we are doing is putting all our disaster uh, volunteers on alert to get ready to uh, uh, assist our uh, Red Cross uh, of Greater New York. We have two of our emergency response vehicles, one from down here in uh, um, Princeton and the other one that's going up from uh, Newark to go directly to disaster site. We are uh, polling all the disaster volunteers, you know, mental, physical, and, and mass care relief who are going to be able to, uh, to respond to this in, uh, for at least the a 10 12 hour shift so uh, we are gathering all our resources and uh, depending on what we are asked to do we will deploy and respond to accordingly i'm talking to uh, david fine one of our reporters who is in lower manhattan near there he said um, it, it was chaos a short while ago now it has become eerily silent 
as people go about their task trying to survey the damage, mount whatever rescue effort um, can be mounted. Uh, difficulty getting to the upper floors of the World Trade Center. We're told the elevators, obviously, they're, they're not working. Um, and w the death toll, we haven't even begun to, to hear that yet, but um, one expert said it, it is expected to be in the hundreds and hundreds. Uh, the, one of the planes that, was, uh, that crashed into the tower was hijacked from Boston on its way to Los Angeles. Um, the second, we don't know where that came from. And then the third plane that has crashed into the Pentagon. That's the newest bit of information if you're just joining us here this morning. Not only did the two planes crash into the World Trade Center, but now we, uh, we also have confirmed another plane. A third plane has crashed mm -hmm. into uh, the, the Pentagon. Well, Eric, it seems pretty obvious we are at war. We are not sure with whom. At the moment, President Bush vowing to find those responsible to make them pay. A very, a very logical step in the mind of a terrorist. If you are going to attack the United States, you expect retaliation. So therefore, you strike at the center of, uh, of, of, of where that retaliation would come from. At the Pentagon, where the Joint Chiefs of Staff and, and, uh, and Colin Powell mm -hmm. supposedly would, would be at, at this point today. We don't know the damage um, at the Pentagon. The White House has been evacuated now. The president presumably has been taken to a safe location. Um, and, you know, with, with that attack on the Pentagon, that may make it even more difficult mm -hmm. to gather the necessary intelligence information to find out exactly who is responsible for these three attacks. Well, now. we first heard of the Oklahoma City blast. Everybody uh, leapt to the conclusion that it was Middle East terrorists. Mm -hmm. And it turned out, of course, to be Timothy McVeigh. Uh, and people, I think, are leaping to the same conclusion right now. And again, until there is some definite evidence, I, it, it's unfair to expect any kind of action. And it would appear with the damage this did to communications, uh, it may be a while before we know anything specific. The president definitely has said that this is a terrorist attack, which seemed pretty obvious from the beginning. Uh, Bob, you any more on traffic? I just, want to, I just want to recap. Again, we're in a transportation lockdown. All of the crossings in and out of New York City are closed. Holland, Lincoln, George Washington Bridge, the Staten Island Bridges, everything coming in from the east side is closed down. The subways, all transportation in the area is shut down. And as you guys have mentioned, there's a nationwide a hold on all, uh, all planes. All airports are closed across the country. And that, of course, includes this area. Yeah, State Police Spokesman Al Delafav, uh, talking just a few moments ago live on New Jersey 101.5, reiterated that we are are in a state of lockdown. Until we're sure these events are indeed over, that's the way it has to be. The worst, exactly a lockdown. Uh, all bridges and tunnels are closed. And that is, uh, th th that, that probably is one of the most chilling things that we've heard until we are until we are sure that, that these attacks are, are over. And when do you know that it's over? You don't, by, by definition of these attacks. So we might be in for a rather long siege. Of, uh, of closings. Uh, we were talking with people and we still do uh, ask that you uh, give us your report if you uh, have been a witness uh, to these horrible events. Well, apparently the precautions continue now in uh, in Washington. The uh, White House, as we told you, has been evacuated. The Secret Service received what they deemed a credible threat of a terrorist act against uh, the mansion. The State Department now, the latest to be evacuated. So uh, aside from accomplishing destruction, the terrorists are also uh, have enough have enough fear instilled in, in us now in Washington um, that we are moving our operations to a safe location to assess and and as President Bush alluded to, retaliate. It's getting to be uh, to the point that almost the whole country is becoming locked down right now and everybody's waiting for another shoe to drop if indeed it is going to drop. So uh, this is about all we know. I think, uh, uh, of course, everybody is doing everything humanly possible. But you do have as a priority, of course, the, uh, the rescues of people. It's very difficult to see how anybody could have survived in the upper floors of the World Trade Towers. It's been just about an hour now. And it is still nothing but thick black smoke and flame. Well, one of the experts had raised the possibility that, you know, about the, the first tower that was hit was about 20 stories from the top, that there could very well have been people who survived that impact in the, in the top floor. Mm. How do you get to them?
They've been unable to... Uh, to I saw a helicopter flying by. He was circling, just uh, apparently just reconnoitering. It didn't appear to be any yeah. kind of a rescue attempt. Of course, he can't now because of the smoke. And, you know, uh, but they were up there with helicopters looking at it. I want to play for you again the, um, mm. the eyewitness piece here. If, if you didn't hear this the first time, the second plane, now two planes hit the World Trade Center. We were talking to this man as a witness to the first... And yeah, then, we um, here in the then shortly after he like start, started describing and, what happened uh, the first time, the as he was on the phone with us, my to it, he saw the second and, plane uh, hit the World Trade Center. amount of smoke, uh, uh, smoke and everything coming off the tower. And uh, well, good, first you couldn't tell where it was coming from. And then you could see that, uh, just like they said, about 20 stories up uh, from the top, it was just unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, there was a noise, but, uh, oh, oh, there it is, someone else hit it. Someone else just hit the tower. All right, well. Oh, my God. Someone else, a plane just hit the tower. It hit the other tower, and there's a mass explosion. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And that was the second plane. But the terrorists were not done yet. Now Washington has been targeted. The Pentagon has taken a hit as well from another airplane. Every airplane in America. If it is on the ground, it will stay there. If it is in the air, it will be grounded. As every plane in the United States has been ordered on the ground by the Federal Aviation Administration, the White House has been evacuated, the Pentagon, what's left of it, has been evacuated, and now the State Department has been evacuated as President Bush confirms this was a terrorist attack and vows to get those who are responsible. This is the worst attack on the United States uh, in history, obviously, considering all the wars that we have been in over the entire course of history. There's never been anything like this. And you'd have to assume that uh, our country, we are at war. We don't know with whom. But you, how do you respond to something like this otherwise? Terrible, terrible amount of destruction. We will get an update coming up here at the top of the hour in about two minutes uh, from our network service as, as we collate all of the information now. Um, uh, reconfirming now that the White House was evacuated after the Secret Service received a credible threat. The State Department also being evacuated. Um, State Police Spokesman Al Delafav again reiterating that we are in a lockdown situation. Any artery between New York City and New Jersey have been completely shut down. All bridges and tunnels are closed. We've activated our emergency command center. We're in contact with the county coordinators. See what they need right now. Early on, it seems uh, the biggest problems are in Hudson County area where they're uh, experiencing phone difficulties. State Police Spokesman Al Delafav again telling us after closing off all access to New York City from New Jersey. Now the state police are now assisting in the counties closest to New York City, specifically Hudson. Um, Want to take some more of, uh, of your calls, I guess, coming up here uh, after after we get a, a, an update at the at the top of the hour on uh, on this series of terror attacks that have now gripped uh, from Manhattan down to Washington. Two planes hitting the World Trade Center. The towers continue to be on fire. The smoke can be seen for miles and miles and miles now. The holes in the side of the buildings now, gaping holes that look like they span at least 10 or 15 stories. Now the planes, presumably, that hit are still inside the building. We don't know whether there was anybody else who was inside the building um, or, or anybody that was able to get out of the building from those upper floors, but the plumes of smoke um, can be seen from probably three or four states away. Uh, now, as we as we continue to come to grips with this, Jim Gerhardt um, in studio with me. I'm Eric Scott. Joe Cutter, the rest of our news folks working on this to bring you the very latest as we continue to get you updated on New Jersey 101.5 WKXW FM WBSS Millville Atlantic City. News. I'm Rita Foley. The word now this morning on all of these incidents that has been going on this morning, the president calls this an apparent terrorist attack. It is a horrific scene on the streets of New York City as two planes crashed into the twin towers of the World Trade Center. The FBI looking into reports that one or both planes were hijacked before the crashes. Witnesses to the scene describe a sonic boom and debris falling like leaflets. The Pentagon has been struck too. A plane has crashed into the Pentagon. The West Wing of the White House and the Capitol building have both been evacuated amid concerns over terrorist threats. Our Ross Simpson is with us now. Rita, I've just been watching television and the tower, the tower that was hit by that jetliner, apparently has just collapsed in New York. We can see nothing but a blanket of smoke now covering a, a large section of the city. 
The uh, original tower that was hit continues to burn, but repeating once again, it appears that the one of the twin towers has collapsed. All right, and thank you, Ross Simpson, for that report. Now, we are going to replay for you part of what the president said about what he called an apparent terrorist attack. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. That is the president this morning. He spoke just after the World Trade Center situation. We're going live now to our White House correspondent who's been traveling with the president in Florida, Mark Smith. Mark? Rita, the president was reading to children at a Florida elementary school here when his chief of staff whispered the first news in his ear. A few minutes later, Bush Grim faced came to the podium to call it a national tragedy, and he ordered the full research. We're going we're gonna to switch back to the studio here for a second. One of the World Trade Center towers now has collapsed. One of the two World Trade Center towers has just fallen. There is nothing but smoke, nothing but debris. The tower with the radio antenna on it is still standing. Oh my goodness. It looks like somebody dropped a bomb on Lower Manhattan. The entire section of Lower Manhattan is obscured now by smoke. From the Hudson River on northward, we can see nothing now of Lower Manhattan other than the smoke from the tower. It, it, if you have seen the movie Independence Day, as the smoke and destruction rolls through the concrete canyons of Manhattan, this is what we are looking at now. One of the World Trade Center towers has collapsed. Um, David Mathau, one of our reporters, um, is with us now. David, what do you see? Eric, I am on the turnpike heading northbound just before exit 13. I was looking at the World Trade Center towers with smoke billowing up and, and out of both towers when all of a sudden there was this, it, it almost looked like it imploded and, and one of the towers simply collapsed. It was the most incredible thing I think I've ever seen in my life. There are trucks that are jammed northbound on both sides. Traffic is slowed down from exit 12 north and the truck stop, the, the rest stop with uh, a great deal of truck traffic is backed up, I would have to say, at least a mile and a half now, because all of these... All right, as we've said, cell service is, uh, is spotty at best. Um, I'm, um, I'm without words at this point. It's uh, as if these pictures you see when they implode buildings on purpose in uh, renewal projects, all you can see in lower Manhattan is smoke and this huge cloud of, thick cloud of debris that you would get from the collapse of a huge structure like that. It's, uh, there's no describing this, and I'm sure everybody is seized with the same belief. It's almost as if you were watching a movie uh, with some incredible visual effects uh, of an attack on, on Manhattan. We have um, very near to that World Trade Center um, was one of our reporters, uh, David Fine, has a, has an office shortly, uh, just a short ways away. We're hoping that uh, that he is okay and that we will that we will hear from him again. Um, again, the smoke continues to obscure much of, of Lower Manhattan as one of uh, what once was one of the tallest buildings in the in the world, and still one of the tallest has has collapsed. Uh, the White House, the Pentagon. The Capitol are being evacuated. The president has been taken to a safe place. He confirms that this is a terrorist attack, vows to find those responsible. Difficult now that there has been another attack on the, on the that there has been a attack on the, on the Pentagon. Um, we are in a lockdown situation in northern New Jersey. Uh, the Red Cross is asking for any volunteers uh, to please report to, to your center. Um, and we are in a waiting pattern now. Now to find out, uh, you know exactly the the extent of the the damage. We don't know how many of the individuals. There were still people we know in the building. Oh yes, there had to be. Um, and we don't know. Uh, we don't know how what it the collapsed. residual. What the, what the, what the, well, yeah. as, as David Matthau, before we lost his cell, told us, it appeared that the building imploded. Yeah. So we know which direction, how much uh, area, what areas were affected by this huge building dropping. We have no idea right now because it's a, a complete cloud of debris in the, hanging in the area. Let's take a moment here and go back to um, our network in Washington as we, uh, as, as we sort through some of these details here. Let's get you caught up to, to what's going on now in Washington and, and, the, and the official response now from, from the White House. 
and uh, just people running away from this scene. People right. just frozen outside here on the streets of Manhattan. And I just want to mention that there is a huge fear about uh, debris falling and uh, just people walking in all directions. All right, Robin Walensky, stay with us for one moment. AP Network main channel stations. We will break from continuous coverage on the main channel at six minutes past the hour. AP Network main channel stations wishing for continuous coverage should switch to AP Hotline now. We continue now. And you were listening to this continuing coverage on New Jersey 101.5. We'll, we'll break away there. We, we have um, all of the resources available to bring to bring this story to you, in, in, including your eyewitness accounts. So I, I think probably at this point, while while we sort through the latest here, um, Jim, I'll, I'll let you start taking more uh, more eyewitness accounts and, and see, uh, you know, and, and see what, what we can. What yeah, we, can we, we have now. people, many people who'd like to respond to this. Unfortunately, at this point, we're not sure exactly what it is we're responding to. Uh, I know people are shocked and people are very, very angry. Uh, I would like your report from what you saw uh, and. Your response to that, our telephone number is 1-800-283-101.5. 1-800-283-101.5. Uh, we have had some great reports and uh, from people who, who saw this. Uh, it, it's an incredible event. It, it's very difficult to believe that this is going on. Uh, but it is. And now everybody is waiting to see if there is even another shoe to drop. And we have no idea. But again, our telephone number, 1-800-283-101.5. And again, as far as we know, there is no confirmed source of this. Uh, no confirmed source of it. Certainly, we know where the suspicions would naturally point and indicate. But we went through that with the Oklahoma City bombing. And I think to the surprise of many, many people, that turned out to be a domestic act of terrorism. So right now, no one knows. It would appear that without any kind of a doubt, we are certainly at war. Dennis? It, yeah. Don't know who it's with. Don't but. know who it's with, exactly. And uh, walking into the station this morning, as soon as I got in, the, the um, Pentagon had been hit. Yeah. And when people told me the Pentagon had been hit, that, that's, that's when the goosebumps... Yeah, do you think of the White House next? Which yeah, is close and, by. and yeah. they've evacuated there and got the president to a safe place. Uh, but then that's when the idea, well, this isn't a random act of terrorism, but but uh, perhaps some sort of war. And then, then your mind starts to race, well, what kind of people, you know, of course, want retaliation. But then where does it go from there? Well, uh, by war, I, it, even if it's, it's terrorist, uh, not necessarily some concerted effort on the part of a sovereign nation. Right. What do you do about it? Right. I mean, the worst we have done in retaliation for terrorist attacks out of the Middle East is to shoot rockets in and blow up a few goats in Afghanistan. So I, I'm not sure that would satisfy the American people. The, uh, the, but it's going to be a difficult thing to deal with, even after they find out. This is going to take weeks and weeks to yes. just sort through the debris. And now with the tower collapse, uh, uh, Manhattan being basically crippled, all the uh, airline, all air traffic throughout the country yes. shut down. Well, completely locked down. Uh, yes. Which is a good thing. I mean, after the Pentagon thing, you, you could see that uh, there's going to be nothing in the sky today, or, or there's you're inviting more trouble. Well, let's hope there's nothing left in the sky, yeah. yeah. Just an, an amazing scene. If for a moment, there, yeah, I had to stop and think, am I dreaming? Yes. You know. Yes. Is this a dream, or because I, you know, in my lifetime, yep. you've you've seen more in your lifetime, perhaps, than I have. Uh, Watching that second plane fly in at absolutely full tilt right into the building was I, I was a dream. See, I didn't see that video. It's a dream it, thing. It, it, is that was that a large aircraft? Yes, it was reported to be a Boeing seven sixty four, which is a large. I think it's sort of an Airbus type aircraft. Yeah, the isn't first it? the first plane we we had talked about was a DC nine. The second plane, either a seven thirty seven or a 767. And in talking to uh, Frank Calderero Sr., who was a retired airline pilot, flew 737s most of his life, it was virtually impossible for, for that to have been an accident. On a clear day, with visibility virtually unlimited, with all of the technology available to a pilot, um, this, was, this was clearly, from the very beginning, is, is, um, a deliberate act. Is the DC-9 a commercial airliner? Yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. a twin engine. The DC-9... Yeah. Twin engine jet. Hmm? Twin engine jet. Twin engine. Yeah, twin yeah. engine, but the DC-9 yeah. has the uh, engines in the rear on right. the tail yeah, of the, 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 uh, the, right, by right. the uh, older jet. He, well, yeah, they both are both models, but mm. very durable and very popular uh, uh, aircraft. One of the planes um, we know was hijacked from Boston on its way to Los Angeles. The second now we're getting word may have been hijacked from Newark. 
Um, don't know where, what airline or where it was headed for. Um, and then the, um, the, the third plane, which crashed into the Pentagon, uh, we do not know where, where that came from. Let, it, let me uh, recap for you uh, what we do know at this point. Two planes crashed into the upper floors of both World Trade Center towers just minutes apart this morning in what the president says was a terrorist attack. Gaping holes can still be seen in the 110-story buildings. No immediate word on death or injuries. Within an hour, an aircraft crashed on a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon now. The west wing of the White House was evacuated amid threats of terrorism. The president has ordered a full-scale investigation to hunt down those who committed this act. One of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center had been hijacked after takeoff from Boston. Um, all planes have been grounded now across the country by Federal Aviation Administration officials. All bridges and tunnels into Manhattan are closed down. Uh, the twin disaster of the Trade Center happened just before 9 o'clock and then just after 9 o'clock. The heavy smoke can be seen. Now, just a few moments ago... One of those towers, uh, the tower that is kind of northernmost as it sits in Manhattan, collapsed, sending a cloud of debris and smoke through the entire concrete canyon structure of, of Manhattan. Uh, the it, was that the second tower that was hit or the first? That would have been, I believe, the second tower that was, that was, that was hit. Um, David Mathau, our reporter, who, uh, who is near the scene now, uh, reported it, it, said it looked like it had imploded. Looking at the video now of the World Trade Center with only one tower standing, um, it looks like somebody with a tooth knocked out. Um, it, it, is, it, it is amazing to, to, to see that. How many floors would you estimate went in that? Um, it is the second tower because the first tower was hit up high, 20 stories below the top. Right. And it would appear that's the one still standing. And, and now we are told, lower. As, you know, as, as we may have suspected, it now appears that there was an explosion, perhaps a bomb, in the tower that collapsed, causing it to, in fact, fall. In addition to the in crash. In addition to the crash of the airplane. Um, because if structure number one is still holding up, yeah, uh, yeah. structure number two would have needed a, an implosion of some kind of a thing to bring it down. And when they had the, uh, the, the explosion in the garage several years ago, right? Uh, <coughs> how long was that building closed down? For, and I guess oh, it, was, it was closed down for months. <coughs> and and, and in, in that, it was 90, 90 no, three. 93? I believe it was, it was that. Um, that was, you're right, you're correct, it was 93. It was, had they placed the explosives um, a few feet to the right or the left on one of the support columns, they may have accomplished taking mm -hmm. down the, 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 the building. Well, the building's a goner now. I, mean, I, I think there's oh, absolutely well, no well, way to well, reclaim well, that. Well, without a doubt. And, and you, you see now New York and Washington, I mean, this is, this, is like, this is like a movie. Yeah. Where you see, mm -hmm. you know, the flames coming out of a building yep. in New York and the smoke and the, and the smoke coming out of uh, near the Pentagon there um, in Washington and mm -hmm. you know the, the how much longer before we're um, you know in a state of martial well, law you, in, in, you were in quite correct country. it's like uh, Independence Day the movie we have a couple callers that saw both planes hit the tower I don't know if you want to uh, go on with sure. the, talk to Henry in Jersey City Henry you're on New Jersey 101.5 hi Henry hi how are you all right yeah I was uh, working on a construction site across the river and we heard an explosion and we watched the first building the flames and the glass shoot out and now uh, we were sitting here talking, one of the guys said he'd seen a plane in it. And then about five minutes after that, maybe ten, we heard a jet liner, which was pretty big. I guess he gunned his motors and dove the plane directly into the corner of the second building. And you actually witnessed that happening? Yes, we did. You saw, for, for, was your angle uh, able to see it go right into the building or you watched it from yeah, behind? Yeah, we seen the wing clip the side. We were right across the river on the Jersey City side. Right. And uh, we watched the wing clip the building. The, left side of the building and, we, and the nose of the plane went around the corner and hit the other side. Oh. But I mean, it's a Did you watch the plane? Did the plane then crash to the ground or did it? No, we didn't see the plane crash to the ground. It looked like it just stayed in there. All right, Henry, thanks very much for your eyewitness From most of the most of the video that we've seen, Dennis, it does appear that both of these planes, if they did not disintegrate on impact, are still within, within the structure. And anybody who has been at the World Trade Center it is big enough to hold a plane. Right. If the plane goes in, it doesn't necessarily have to fall out or, or come out the other side. Now, we are, uh, just one update before you go back to your calls here. We are, getting, we are getting some unconfirmed reports from Washington that, that a group affiliating itself with the Palestinians has taken responsibility um, for one, if not all, of, of these attacks. 
Um, the president has ordered a full-scale investigation, um, and you know, that that is that is what we know uh, at at this point. All right, thanks very much, uh, Eric. Uh, Jerry in Edison, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Jerry. Go ahead, Jerry. Uh, right now, uh, they just showed the replay of the. Uh, uh, I would guess it must have been the, the. They said the plane was still inside the World Trade, showing the the, the way the, uh, the building crashed. It's possible, I would think, it could have been the plane too, from all the fuel and everything that was in there. Perhaps. But, but aside but, from that, uh, Channel Eight also with, with the amazing uh, ca com uh, camera coverage they have here, they're broadcasting out of Philly. They suspect that, that you can see people jumping out of. The uh, building. The yeah, we've, building. It, and apparently now we apparently this is not over. Um, we have now uh, what Jerry, would be the call. what would be the fourth explosion reported now. This time um, on Capitol Hill. Now, the, exactly where we are not sure yet, but there has been an explosion um, on Capitol Hill where 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 the Congress meets um, as the evacuations in Washington uh, continue. So we will. All right, thanks, Eric. And uh, it's difficult to see what that is. Now they did say Capitol Hill. Well, this it the, looks the, like well, the, the video that you're looking at now is the right. is the Pentagon, which is the, not on it, Capitol Hill. Correct. Yeah. Um, that and the Pentagon is um, I think near near to, to Crystal City. Um, Which is Virginia, it, right? Yeah. Um, Crystal City, Virginia. Um, but we we are getting we you know we are getting reports that there have been explosions on or at least one explosion on Capitol Hill. Um, which would be the uh, presumably the third or the fourth, um, you know, attack. Should we go to AP and uh, find out what? Uh, uh, about thirty what seconds. Thirty seconds away. We'll right. we'll get we'll get the update with that. So that is um, speculation. We simply know that there is a bulletin without any uh, anything visual right. that says there has been a fourth explosion. Uh, two two uh, collisions on the, the the twin towers at the World Trade Center towers. One has uh, collapsed. Uh, another explosion at the Pentagon. And now the latest word is that in Washington there has been an explosion of some kind on Capitol Hill. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5 and continuing coverage of the attacks and now to AP and the latest. By the Associated Press uh, as getting off a path train to the World Trade Center. He says he saw bodies falling. Building. He said he ran outside and watched people jump out of the first building that was hit and then there was a second explosion. He felt the heat on the back of his neck and then WCBS-TV, citing an FBI agent, said five or six people jumped out of the windows. People on the street screaming every time another person leaped. So just a horrible sight in New York. And then we got word of all the evacuations. The west wing of the White House had been evacuated. The president was not at the White House this morning. He was in Florida. He is now on Air Force One, apparently returning to uh, Washington, although we're not sure about that at this point. But the president is on board Air Force One. And... Uh, the evacuation notices came pretty swiftly. First we heard about the West Wing of the White House, then we heard about the Capitol building being evacuated, the Pentagon obviously being evacuated, uh, the State Department has been evacuated, and the FAA has suspended all takeoffs from airports nationwide in the wake of these attacks in New York and Washington. Now we had earlier gotten a report from sources that one of the planes involved in the attack on the World Trade Center, and we're assuming it was an attack at this point based on what we know, uh, was a Boeing 767 American Airlines. There had been uh, a report that a plane had been hijacked just before that uh, attack on the World Trade Center. That is uh, about all we know right now of the World Trade Center. But if you keep in mind when you're and you're trying to think about the nature of any possible uh, injuries or casualties, you have to keep in mind that it was approximately nine o'clock in the morning on the eastern uh, coast. It was the start of the business day, and as our Robin Molensky, who is in New York, was reporting to us, people in New York, of course, get an early start, and uh, some of those people arrive at work at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. But we don't know yet anything more about injuries or casualties, Ross. Rita, trading has been suspended now on Wall Street, as you might imagine, and several subway lines were immediately shut down today uh, in lower Manhattan. So uh, there will be no place for these people to run. In other words, they cannot go down into the subways to flee the city. They've got to walk out, perhaps. Some of those pieces from that uh, second aircraft hitting uh, the World Trade Center 
have floated over Brooklyn, about three miles away. People reporting that uh, just pieces uh, of the building floating down like confetti all over Brooklyn now. And as I said a moment ago, uh, lower Manhattan now is blanked almost uh, in smoke, right down almost to street level. We're seeing the police on some uh, camera shots uh, waving people through intersections. Uh, motor traffic, for the most part, has stopped, with the exception of, uh, of police and fire and rescue equipment now rushing to the Trade Center. Now, as far as we know, these uh, apparent attacks are only against targets in New York and Washington. So if you're thinking about any other cities and worrying about your relatives or whatever, as far as we know, these attacks have been only against targets in New York and in Washington. The smoke, you can see a video from the Pentagon on the smoke coming out of the Pentagon, the smoke coming from the World Trade Center. As I mentioned earlier, the president is on Air Force One and apparently is coming back to uh, Washington. Ross? Unlike uh, the World Trade Center, which is now in total disarray with that, uh, that second tower down in the street, uh, obviously blocking uh, a lot of uh, rescue efforts there. Uh, at the Pentagon, uh, there's a series of roadways, a series of uh, interstates that interlink the road work there, and fire equipment can get up to the Pentagon, right up against that western wall to fight the fire at the Pentagon. But as we see from video, the smoke now continues to billow out of it. Occasionally and we'll see fire leaping across the roof. So uh, that building, although it's built out of uh, concrete and steel, it is burning from inside. The uh, places that have been evacuated, the Capitol building, Treasury building, the White House, part of the White House, the West Wing. We go now to our State Department correspondent, Barry Schweid, and he is, I believe, going to join us uh, momentarily here. Barry, is that you? It is indeed, yes. The State Department has notified all embassies and missions around the world of the attack on the World Trade Center and told them to be very careful to check their security. No embassies have been closed. Uh, that decision is up to uh, uh, the ambassador or whoever is in charge of the installation. Secretary of State Colin Powell was in Peru. He's decided to come home. He was notified by the uh, Deputy Secretary of State, Armitage, about what is going on and he is heading home now. All right, this is our Barry Schwey live at the State Department talking to us about the uh, the very latest information. The uh, U.S. officials who are overseas obviously returning home now. The president on Air Force One apparently going back to Washington. The enduring symbols of American power have all been hastily evacuated today. The White House, the Capitol, and more. The Pentagon shut down, and the uh, Pentagon was struck by an aircraft that sent billows of smoke drifting over the Potomac. Senator Herb Cole, a Democrat from Wisconsin, said this morning, this shows what an uncontrollable world we live in. This is crazy, he said, wild and crazy. He made his comments after the World Trade Center Towers in New York incident this morning. So uh, we have also information to us now that the first plane to hit the World Trade Center was hijacked after takeoff from Boston. Ross? It's been uh, notified by the FAA that all international flights en route to the U.S. have now been diverted airborne. They are now being sent to Canada. So this country is, eff is effectively shutting down air operations. There will be no international flights coming in, no jumbo jets coming into this country, into uh, places like Kennedy and New York. Washington, Dulles, uh, Atlanta, Hartsfield, uh, you name it, uh, LAX, Los Angeles, nothing. Every aircraft that is now headed toward this country is being diverted to Canada, that just from the FAA. All right, and uh, we also have word now, according to senior law enforcement officials, that car bomb, uh, a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. This is just into us again. According to senior law enforcement officials, a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. Uh, we don't know the exact extent of all of this, but it apparently uh, appears to be a coordinated situation. Only targets in New York and Washington have been affected so far, as we know at this point. In New York, where this uh, began, the earliest incidences began with the World Trade Center, we know two things. There were two planes that crashed into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. There were gaping holes in the building. And uh, that is how all of this started beginning this morning just before 9 o'clock. We go now to the Pentagon and our correspondent, Thelma Lebrecht. As though the word could not get worse, officials here in the Pentagon parking lot are moving everyone out 
of the Pentagon parking lot because they say there is another plane headed to this area. They do not know, of course, for certain whether it might be again targeting the Pentagon. Uh, they are not saying whether the first one was a target to the Pentagon, but they are moving people away from the Pentagon. Uh, they had been standing fairly near to the Pentagon parking area, but now officials are moving them out, saying another plane is headed to the area. They've come on with bullhorn saying everybody move out of the parking lot because another plane is headed this way. Now, since that a few minutes ago, they have stopped running people away from the area, so it looks like perhaps they may be easing their concerns somewhat, but still they are shouting to people to move away from the area because the risk is still high here. All right, that is our Thelma Lebrecht. She is reporting to us from the Pentagon that apparently they are trying to get people out of that area, fearing that another plane might be on the way. And we have word from senior law enforcement officials that a car bomb has exploded outside the State Department. The uh, nature of all of this, again, appears to be at this point confined to New York and Washington. All international flights to Washington and to, to New York City have been diverted now to Canadian airports. Obviously, the U.S. intelligence people are working this and they may have some kind of indication, obviously they do, that it is wise in their judgment to divert these international flights to, uh, D to D.C. and New York to Canadian airports. Possibly that is just a precautionary move. Ross. I'm just looking at some of the replay, uh, some of the tape being played back in New York. The firefighters now running from the collapse of that Twin Towers. They had pulled their equipment into the street to try to string lines, and that building came down almost on top of them. So now they are running from that area, trying to get out of that immediate area. Of course, the Twin Tower falling down now about uh, 25 minutes ago. It's almost hard to keep track of this time. It seems like it's, uh, it's so compressed. Uh, we have been talking now for an hour and a half about the events that took place in New York shortly before 9 o'clock when one plane hit one of the Twin Towers at the World Trade Center and then another one hit just a few minutes later. Let's go back and refresh the timeline. We do now have a timeline for all this, Rita. Mm -hmm. A plane crashed into the tower, one of the towers of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan shortly before 9 o'clock Eastern Time this morning. A second plane, that was the Jumbo, the wide body, the 767 out of Boston. It crashed into the second tower of the World Trade Center shortly, shortly after 10 o'clock Eastern Time. One of the World Trade Center towers, that was the one that was hit by the wide body jet, uh, collapsed. It fell into the streets about an hour after being hit by a plane. As I told you a moment ago, uh, I saw some of the replays, some of the, some of the uh, footage being brought back by the cameraman. They were in the street with the firefighters, and all you saw were men rushing out of the smoke as that building came down into the street where they had. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5 at 1029 uh, to the newsroom and Joe Cutter, Joe. All right, Dennis, uh, the latest reports that we have tell us now that the second of the two World Trade Center buildings has in fact also collapsed and uh, that can be confirmed from uh, live pictures from several cable news networks including CNN and MSNBC. The second of the two World Trade Center buildings has now collapsed and we can see that on uh, live television right now coast to coast. Dennis? All right, thank you, Joe. Uh, you've been listening for the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes to uh, the AP and the National News Service on what's going on. Again, as Joe just pointed out, the uh, second tower has collapsed. The first tower collapsed about uh, a half hour ago, and now the uh, second tower, which seems to be the, the first one that was hit by the plane, has now uh, gone down. It's it got to be mass chaos in all of New York City, especially in lower Manhattan. We had uh, scenes on video of uh, rescue uh, personnel and firefighters running from the scene as they were trying to string lines to get uh, some people out of the building, but now both buildings have gone down. And we have uh, reports of four attacks, two on uh, the World Trade Center, one on the Pentagon, and one uh, near the State Department building. Three were planes. Uh, the one near the State Department seems to be a car bomb. And when the first, um, when the first tower collapsed, uh, we were told that there was some kind of an explosion within the, within the building itself. Presumably that the, there was a, perhaps a bomb planted in, in that building to, to bring it down. But now to look at the scene of Lower Manhattan without the uh, Twin Towers standing there um, is, is eerie. And again, you're looking at at the shock wave and the smoke now rolling almost as far as Liberty Island um, and certainly uh, viewable from 
uh, a shot of, of the Statue of Liberty with the smoke in the background, uh, uh, all of Lower Manhattan basically covered in smoke is just the most eerie thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, we, we've had, um, <laughs> last, time, last time we checked, we had, uh, we had a reporter, our David Fine, was on the ground right there next to uh, the World Trade Center. Uh, we have not heard from him since the first tower came down. Uh, our Alan David Stein was on a boat on his way to uh, Lower Manhattan with a group of other journalists. Um, and David Mathau, uh, last time we talked to him, was uh, in the Jersey City area looking over. Um, cell phone service in that area is, is virtually uh, non-existent. Um, and you know, if you, the only thing I can use to describe it, if you haven't actually seen the video of it yet, if you if you saw the movie Independence Day, yeah. when when the uh, Empire State Building was hit, and all of that flame and debris and smoke rolled through the canyons of, of Manhattan, um, that is that's what this looks like. Yeah, it, it, it's beyond imagination. Eric, <clears throat> we'd like to point out. Um, and maybe it's our responsibility to tell people just to, to, to remain calm um, and, and go about what you need to do today. Uh, of course, a lot of people are panicked who have people who live uh, or work in New York City. Um, but to remain calm and not do anything rash to, to exacerbate the situation uh, and, and let it unfold, of course, take any necessary precautions that you need to without going into some sort of a panic spin. Um, the time will tell exactly uh, how much damage and how much lives are lost, how many lives are lost, and, and what the, the president, uh, uh, his take on it, and uh, our government's take on this. But uh, again, not to panic and, and just let this thing unfold. Stay, stay tuned to your radios and your televisions, of course. Uh, Eric, was there more coming in uh, from the newsroom? Uh, ju just that New Jersey, in the northern section at least, is, is in a lockdown. There is no entrance or exit to Manhattan at this point. The Hudson River tunnels and bridges are closed. The train service um, you know, is, is, is not uh, running in between, in between Manhattan. You know, so if, if you're trying to get into that area, if you, you know, stay out. Stay we out, have a stay traffic out, yeah. service report at this uh, time at 1033 scheduled. And if uh, New Jersey fast traffic is standing by uh, with any information, please let us know what's going on. Well, I am standing by and uh, good morning. Uh, pretty much what Eric said, uh, all of the Hudson River crossings, the Holland, the Lincoln, and the George Washington Bridge, they have all been shut down, not only uh, into the city, but out of the city as well. The uh, three city airports have been closed, as you already know, uh, Newark, LaGuardia, and JFK. And uh, most of us here at the traffic center, which uh, actually overlooks uh, the World Trade Center, are just sitting here in shock uh, like the rest of you folks there in the studio. There's not much else to uh, add except that, uh, as you said, uh, Dennis, uh, northern New Jersey is uh, in a lockdown at this point. Um, and that is the situation. All right, you. thank, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. All right, I uh, appreciate it. Um, of course, everything is uh, in a bit of disarray here. It's 1034. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5. I'm Dennis Malloy. Judy uh, is at home today. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think we have a responsibility to tell you not to panic. And if you're watching this on your televisions and listening in your cars as you're driving, um, so far, the information that we have, there are people standing around New York City giving reports on TV. I mean, so it's not like it's a, a, a total uh, disaster. If you're listening, I know some of the pictures you might be creating in your mind um, actual, actually looks tranquil from, from a distance on camera. There is, you know, all of lower Manhattan is covered in smoke. Both towers are gone. And if you're accustomed to the skyline of New York City, it's a very eerie sight to see just one of them standing and to see the other uh, explode just a few minutes ago. We have those two explosions, both by airplane attacks. We have an airplane attack on the Pentagon and an explosion and uh, smoke and fire there. And a fourth bomb, reported to be a car bomb, near the um, State Department building. So far, absolutely no word on casualties, of course. Uh, there are quite a few, both from the airplanes and from people on the ground, especially in lower Manhattan, both people who were in those buildings and people who might have been near those buildings at the time or after uh, the crash. Both of these occurred within 18 minutes. One about 8.47 and the other about 9.05 this morning, Eastern <clears throat> Daylight Savings Time in New York, uh, followed shortly thereafter at about 9.40 to 9.45 by an attack at the Pentagon. Uh, if you have an eyewitness report and you'd like to call that in, we are able to take your phone calls now. 1-800-283-101.5. Uh, your eyewitness reports from when you saw it and where you are now. If you are close to the scene, 
Uh, let us know, 1-800-283-101.5. If there's any way you can get news to us that might be helpful to everybody, 1-800-283-101.5. Either you saw the attack occur uh, or you are now near the scene of lower Manhattan, either northern New Jersey. Now, if you're trying to use a cell phone, I understand anywhere in, uh, in the Manhattan area, it's pretty much impossible to get through, both from cell towers perhaps being destroyed and uh, mo more than likely uh, usage by so many people that it's just uh, impossible to get through on a line. If you're calling from a landline and you can uh, make that call, uh, you can do so at 1-800-283-101.5. And a lot of the phones are going to be used today uh, for emergency purposes. And throughout the country, uh, especially within the uh, corridor of the eastern seaboard between uh, New York and Washington, uh, it's just going to be very, very busy in a lot of different ways. And for the dust to settle on this literally and figuratively will be several days. Um, Rob in Jersey City, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Rob. How are you doing? Good. You saw the second tower collapse or get hit? Yes, yes. I was standing uh, on Montgomery Street in Jersey City, and uh, it was like a crackling sound. Didn't really hear an explosion, and it was just down. That, that was the second one to go down? That was, no, it was the first one to go down. It's the, the, the northmost tower. Right. And did you, have, did you see the other one go down as well? I, did, I didn't see the other one. I just heard. I'm driving home on 78. I heard it went down. Yeah, it went down about eight minutes ago. It, uh, it's hor horrible. Yeah. Horrible and difficult to believe. Bob, uh, Rob, are you calling from a cell phone? Yes. And where's your location right now? I'm about at exit 50 on I-78. Uh, how far out of Jersey City are you? Uh, probably 20 miles now. 20 miles west. Yes. Right. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate the call. 1-800-283-101.5. Uh, Veronica in Elizabeth. Veronica, I believe, is a photographer. Veronica, hi. Hi, good morning. Uh, were you? The, what did you see this morning? Um, I was just photographing from Elizabeth Seaport, and I just saw the second building just kind of tumble right in front of my eyes. <laughs> Are you a photographer? Yes. Yeah. And you were photographing uh, the fire and the smoke? Correct. And you saw the first of the two towers to come down? Uh, the second one. I saw the second one come down just a few minutes ago. Wow. And you got photographs of it? Um, it was funny. I was just switching lenses. I took the last shot of it probably standing. I literally put a different lens on my camera. I turned down, and there it was gone. Wow. <laughs> just like that. And where are you at now? Uh, I'm driving, and I'm kind of on Route 1 and 9 in Newark now, leaving Elizabeth. And uh, what's the traffic like there? Oh, terrible, as expected. Yeah, as usual. All right. Veronica, thanks very much for the call to New Jersey 101.5. Eric Scott is back from uh, the newsroom. Yeah, we have a couple of new developments here now. Uh, part of the Pentagon in Washington has collapsed as a result of uh, an airplane hitting a helipad right near the Pentagon. That would have been the third attack. We also now have reports that a 747 jetliner is missing and or down somewhere over Pennsylvania. Um, we don't know whether this is something that has been suggested, uh, suspected as a as a hijacking. Uh, we don't know whether whether um, it has crashed or whether it's simply taken off of the radar. But this would have been now the fourth plane, and all planes nationwide have been ordered down or rerouted. Planes that were headed for the U.S. Um, well, officials of the Somerset County Airport now, this is just outside of Pittsburgh, confirmed the crash of a large plane just north of the airport. That's about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. So that 747 that was missing no longer is. It's down uh, about 80 miles southeast of, uh, of Pittsburgh. Um, every airplane in the nation was ordered grounded um, by the FAA. Um, anything that was on the ground, stayed on the ground. Anything that was in the air was ordered to land. Any plane that is heading for the United States has now been diverted towards Canada. Um, too early to say, presumably, this may have been plane number four in a series of terrorist attacks now um, on the United States, both in New York and now in Washington. The horrific sequence of, of destruction apparently now is, uh, is not over, Dennis, and we will... Um, We'll continue sorting through this, bringing you the very latest from uh, various sources as we as as we go through. We have reporters near the scene, um, haven't heard from them in a while, and uh, hope they're okay. All right, thank you, Eric. It's uh, ten forty. You're listening to New Jersey one hundred one point five, and uh, the continuing coverage of what's going on here. Um, I, I got an unconfirmed report that the bridges in Philadelphia have uh, been closed, and uh, we'll try to get a traffic update for you in about eight minutes and see if we can confirm that. Um, pretty much, the, you know, there's there's a panic mode going on throughout the eastern seaboard, so a lot of people are um, pretty jittery, and uh, 
Deservedly so, and uh, some people are, are taking extra precautions. So travel might be difficult today in just about every corner of our listening area, especially to the north and uh, lower Manhattan and the surrounding uh, New Jersey area. Mary and Liberty Science Center. Mary, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Mary. Yes, good morning. Um, I was on the Turnpike Extension when the second plane crashed, mm -hmm. and we were stopped because of an accident, and uh, it was watching a plane. It was watching a plane that looked obviously out of place. It just flew straight into the tower. Right. And I work in uh, Jersey City, <clears throat> the Science Center, which, by the way, is closed down for the day. If anyone was he heading there, and I just made it back on 78. The traffic is moving um, pretty quickly. People are heading out of the area, yeah. and uh, it was. Yeah, Do you notice any sense of panic on the roads, Mary? Um, people were driving fast. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure they're driving faster than normal, but people definitely, there were a lot of uh, Pennsylvania plates, people that were heading out of the area and going back home. Right. All right, thanks very much, Mary. Appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5 again. Uh, the only thing that you can do at this point is to not panic. Get to where you need to get to, uh, and hopefully that would be away from New York City. But do it in, in the most orderly and non panicked way that you can uh, because uh, at this point we have to deal with what's been done and move on without uh, causing any more problems. Stu in uh, Stu, it says three blocks away I guess from the explosion. Stu, hi, you're on New Jersey yeah, 101.5. Uh, yeah, hi Dennis. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was incredible. Um, I didn't see the first, two, the, the two planes. I heard the first one, it was a, a tremendous explosion and I actually said that sounds like another World Trade Center. And sure enough, I went into the next room where we could see directly west to the Trade Center, and there it was in flames. And 15 minutes later, the second one, and then I actually saw one of the two towers collapsing. Now, you can't see outside this building the soot and the debris. You, what, what street are you on, sir? I'm on William Street, which is about three blocks east, directly east from the Trade Center. You're uh, only three blocks from the Trade Center. Three blocks from the Trade Center. Where I am now, I cannot, I, I can only look south, I can't look west, so I can't see what's going on, but there, there are no towers there. They're totally gone. And is, there, is smoke fill the air from the vantage point that you have? Yeah, immediately, within 30 seconds to a minute from the collapse of the tower, the smoke and the debris just totally inundated this area. Has the debris settled down yet? Uh, after, it settled down about 20 minutes after the first collapse and then uh, the second collapse, which I guess was close to 15 minutes ago. No right. debris. The, it's still the soot all over the place. Yeah. <clears throat> all right, Stu, take care of yourself. Do you have enough provisions to, to stay put? Uh, yeah, we're, we're doing okay here. We're, we're in the office. We're not going anywhere because you know, there's nowhere to go at this point. You're in an office building. What floor? Uh, we're on 21. <clears throat> was, was there any attempt to get down on, onto the street? Actually, the, the building uh, maintenance or the building management uh, said they were evacuating the building, but where are we going to go? Yeah. The subways are out. Uh, the, no one is uh, moving in this area. We're, well, just, we're well, staying put. Where do you live, Stu? I live in East Windsor. Right. So uh, you're going to be there for, for the duration of the day, I'd imagine. Uh, I will be here until it, we're told it's safe to uh, head on out into the streets, and then I will try to walk over to uh, Midtown, right. and then I will try to get a bus home. Yeah, I, I would imagine that there might be some sort of uh, national transport uh, service later in the day, uh, perhaps the uh, Army National Guard to get people out of there. Stu, good luck to you, and thank you very much okay. for taking the time to call. I heard you just heard it from a guy uh, three buildings, three blocks away, yeah. uh, who's locked in the building there, and they, they ordered an evacuation, but there's nowhere to go. Right. And, and for people, now, I, I, Eric, I don't know if you've heard this, but I want to check with traffic. I got an unconfirmed report a few minutes ago <clears throat> from someone who's trying to get out of Philadelphia. The bridges are closed. Now, I don't know if that's... that's we're in, a, we're in a, a virtual lockdown situation. It would surprise me if that was the case. I don't know for sure right. if that is. A, We've got we, three minutes to a traffic report. We'll check on that. We have some uh, breaking news. Yeah, in Philly, Independence Hall, the Liberty Bill, all the um, historic landmarks now have been um, evacuated. And that city is, is starting to is starting to lock down. Um, we have uh, John Weber on the news phone. Um, with somebody, he's at the Hamilton train station in Mercer County with a, with a guy who was supposed to be in the World Trade Center just minutes before uh, the explosion took place. John? Eric, normally the train station here in Hamilton is bustling with activity. Right now it's about as desolate as the beach in Belmar during a January blizzard. Now, a few minutes ago a train from Newark dropped off people who were headed into the city.
in shock and disbelief is the only way you can describe the look of the people getting off the NJ Transit outbound train here in Hamilton Township. As you mentioned, for one Medford resident, the events of the morning are particularly chilling. Uh, I saw World Trade Tower 1 uh, on fire, and I saw number 2 as well, just before I was on the, I was on the PATH train to go across. And uh, just before I would have gone into the basement of the Trade Center, where I should have been at 8.20 this morning, uh, we turned around and came back. Now, most people here didn't even want to talk about what happened, choosing to just file away in stunned silence. Inbound train service, as you've been mentioning, is has been canceled. John Weber, New Jersey, 101.5 News. All right, well, it now would appear, based on some of the eyewitness reports we have there from Lower Manhattan, that not only were the Trade Center towers hit by a plane, but there may have been subsequent explosions of a bomb, presumably, within each of those towers that would then have brought those towers down. The skyline of Lower Manhattan has forever been changed as neither tower uh, of the World Trade Center uh, stands at this hour. One <laughs> other note for you, especially if you are in really anywhere from, from the middle of New Jersey on northward, all of that dust and that debris and that smoke and all of the stuff that, that came as a result of, of the explosions and the collapse are beginning to make their way across the river and into New Jersey. If you are an asthmatic, if you have young children, if you have any respiratory problems, you're being advised now to stay inside um, where you would not be... Um, susceptible to a breathing in that. Um, it is a, a 767 now. All right, it, just outside of Pittsburgh, we had reported that there was a plane that was missing. It has now crashed north of the Somerset County Airport that is just outside of Pittsburgh, um, a 767. Um, has gone down now. That was the, all planes over the United States were ordered down. Uh, not quite in that manner. All planes were ordered to land safely at the at the nearest airport shortly after the uh, attack on the Pentagon. Um, and now it would appear that what could have been uh, hijack plane number four uh, has crashed just outside of Pittsburgh. Um, and that's. All we have right now. Yeah, Eric, I want to go to uh, New Jersey fast traffic to see if uh, they can confirm any uh, closing the bridges between New Jersey and uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, Dennis, I, I heard you uh, post that question a few minutes ago, and uh, we have been uh, trying to get in contact with the authorities who could uh, give us an answer to that question. And unfortunately, uh, we are having problems with our communication as well, so we have not been able to either uh, confirm or deny that. Uh, I can tell you this for... Uh, some of the uh, folks who are in the New York City at the moment, uh, there will be extra service uh, heading out of the city. Uh, New Jersey Transit will be utilizing all available rail equipment westbound out of New York, Newark, and the Hoboken Terminal. Uh, New Jersey Transit will also, also uh, stage additional buses at Newark's Penn Station and Newark Broad Street Station and also the Hoboken Terminal to uh, supplement some of the existing rail service. That's what I know as far as your uh, question about Philadelphia. I'm sorry, we're in the dark on that one, as uh, you are as well. So back to you. All right, thanks very much. At 1049, uh, and also, uh, if, if we have listeners who uh, are trying to get across from the uh, from the bridges into Philadelphia, we understand that that may have been affected at this point. Of course, the uh, the center of all the attention is uh, New York City and Washington, but it seems to be that uh, the conditions uh, may have warranted some of this uh, lockdown to spread uh, throughout to the perimeter of the state of New Jersey. We would like to get as, as much information we can on that. So if you know about the bridges going in and out of Philadelphia into New Jersey, let us know. Andrew and Palmyra, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Andrew. Hi, how you doing? Good. Good. I'm very nervous about being on the air, but I wanted to uh, to say something. If uh, these terrorists are very serious, as as we know. Well, no, listen, Andrew, I'm going to stop you before if 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 you're going to start to spread anything like panic. Um, uh, what I want right now is eyewitness reports and any information we have. But I, I don't want to speculate on who and what might come next because uh, I don't want to spread any panic. I have a responsibility not to do that. Do you understand? Yes, I do. I don't have the same information that these people had. I'm just saying that security at Andrews Air Force Base should be stepped up on the perimeter of this wooded area. Ryan, I'm, I'm sure that greater minds than ours have already uh, covered that, Andrew. Thanks. Uh, once this started rolling, um, 
I'm sure they took the necessary precautions. Bob Williams from New Jersey Fast Traffic is here. Bob. Yeah, we just uh, spoke with the uh, people that uh, run the Philadelphia bridges. The bridges are still open oh, in are. and out of New Jersey. Okay. But the areas around uh, Center City, Philly, they've all been uh, put down in the same lockdown mode that uh, most of the areas so been put in. So getting to the bridges. Getting to the bridges are okay, but once you're in, you know, getting to Center City, Philly, that's going to be locked down. Like all right. the federal buildings, right. Independence Hall, Liberty Bell. All as soon as you come area. off of Ben Franklin, you're pretty much yeah, the federal building and then yeah. the, the, the uh, Independence Hall. The school pool and all those right. over there, you're going to get a lot of lockdown. Coming over the Walt Whitman, you have the stadium area and pretty much refineries and things like that. And I, I can't imagine. Uh, uh, but but the information you have, all bridges are open. No, that's from the, uh, the 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 people that run the bridges in and out of Philly. We're all bridges with them. remain. They are, they are open. still open okay. right now. All right, Bob. Thanks but very much. But of course, North Jersey, everything is in a lockdown. Right. You're not getting anywhere. Just wanted to find. I got an unconfirmed report. Um, that the, the bridges might have been closed, so that's yeah. why I wanted to check on okay. it. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Darren in Summit, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Uh, I witnessed the uh, second plane hit this morning. Hi, Darren. Good morning. How are you? All right. I'm feeling a little sick to my stomach, but uh, we work on a construction site building some hotels in Elizabeth, and we have a pretty good site in New York Skyline on a daily basis. And uh, first thing, after the first report this morning of the first plane, we all ran out, went up to the top floor uh, on the roof to see what was going on. And as we were watching a smaller plane, it wasn't, you know, I, being right next to Newark Airport and, and this plane being a distance away, I couldn't tell the size exactly, but it didn't look like as big as the plane, the other planes were. Well, the, the, uh, plane, the, the video from that I was been watching on television this morning, it looked like a fairly sizable plane. Okay, like I said, it could, you know, it was a distance away. Yeah. Uh, it, from its first approach, it looked like almost it was going to examine the damage on the tower. Right. And uh, it flew up, it flew through the trail of smoke, and as it got through the trail of smoke, it started to bank around to the left from yeah. my perspective. I'm watching it now, and, and if this was, it's amazing. If this yeah, was a hijacking. Been, uh, we said, you know, I, listened, I said to the guy, I wonder if that's like a reconnaissance plane, and uh, as I said that, it banked further and slammed into the side of the building. You got to wonder what, you know, if that was a hijacked plane, uh, who was doing the steering, uh, and all kinds of second guess questions come up in your mind as to what exactly happened there. Thank you, Darren. We're obviously dealing with people who care a little about life. Um, God knows what they care about. Um, so it's, it, it, it does no good to speculate who it is, what we should do to retaliate, <clears throat> what the future will bring. My own opinion is let the dust settle from this and uh, try not to cause any more damage anywhere else else in the world. Of course, America has a reputation of not being one to be pushed around, but you can see the kind of devastation that this has had on the con the entire country. This morning, at first, it, it turned out to be just a, a North Jersey, New York event, and it quickly unfolded as a national event. And uh, you can see the devastation this kind of you know war or terrorism can inflict upon people and uh, and the psyches of the, the rest of the people in the country so I, I think it's just best to, to remain calm and cooler heads will prevail on this and not to do a whole lot of warmongering at this point Jerry and uh, on the George uh, Washington Bridge hi Jerry hi you're, hi. On, you're on New Jersey 101.5 go ahead you're on the bridge right now I'm about that there a quarter of a mile from the bridge and it is People can't believe what's going on out here. Where, where are you, the Jersey side or the, or the uh, New Jersey York side? Jersey side going into New York. Why? Well, I got a brand new trailer to deliver downtown Jersey. Downtown Jersey? I got to stop in New York to make me come back to Elizabethtown to deliver this new trailer. Um, might want to, if, if there's a way to turn around, you might want to, we're, we're at Midtown, where are you heading? Uh, all I know is it's some graphics place north of the George Washington Bridge by three extra. Yeah, okay. That's well, all my directions. <clears throat> that's not Midtown, but all right, Jerry, good luck. Uh, appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5 heading onto the George Washington Bridge and uh, why you'd want to go that way. It, nothing's that important at this point. Jim in Farmingdale, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Jim. Good morning, guys. Um, trying to make this brief. I have a couple points. I don't have any real information. Uh, except in the past year or so, I've read a lot of articles about the vulnerability of the country towards these type of attacks. And obviously, this is a prime example. Right. Uh, my question is, as towards the government, why is not the military out in full force at this point? Where, where do you want them to be, Jim? Uh, anywhere investigating everything they can. Well, I'm sure they are. It's just that we don't have pictures right now of everything that's going on. And I'm uh, sure. I'm just curious as to, you know, it hasn't... I haven't heard anything to that effect. Yeah, well, I, I think the uh, rightfully so, the military and the government are uh, just doing their jobs and, and keeping their mouths shut. 
Mm -hmm. They don't want to let any of their cards be known to whoever um, is causing this. And uh, and I'm sure whoever is causing this uh, is trying to guess their next move anyway. So uh, the best thing we can do is watch pictures, listen to audio, and wait to, to get any word from the government. And I'm sure that will probably come sometime before noon, any pre preliminary word. And uh, knowing and trusting the United States military, they're doing all they can to... Uh, prevent any further damage. Jim, thanks for the call. Uh, yeah, what, what can they do at this point? Um, they have to gather as much information they can, time it right as to when to say what. Uh, they don't want to instill panic. Um, the president was in Florida this morning uh, talking to a group of uh, students in an elementary school and then he had to uh, head back to Washington. Um, so he's en route, I would imagine, um, one way or the other and uh, or or perhaps you know secure in, in another area um this is a statement or right, eric do you have some breaking news yeah, we just we want to update you on, on what new jersey is doing now basically new jersey is telling you not to travel um especially if you are heading into the north virtually everything has been locked down although the bridges are still open um, across the river to philadelphia all airport service has been shut down the national guard is mobilizing on a scale that we have not yet seen before in new jersey ray martinique um, is with the National Guard joining us now live. Ray, good um, good morning. Good morning um, how many of your members have been called to service at this point? Uh, we have our full-time support force in place at the Emergency Operations Center at Fort Dix. We've also activated three additional Emergency Operations Center in Atlantic City, Somerset, and Teaneck. And uh, people have been put on alert, which means that they are uh, somewhere we can contact them quickly, bring them into play as we need them. Right now, the priority has been on medical personnel. We've made an offer of assistance to New York City. Uh, those missions are coordinated through the State Police Emergency Management Center in West Trenton. And it's like triage, uh, those areas that... Anybody who is a, a guardsman out there, should they automatically just report to their base? We have a normal alert procedure. Uh, they know what to do. They should be in contact with their unit just to confirm a phone number uh, where they can be located should, they, uh, should we need to bring them in. Will, would the National Guard get involved in any matters of defense? Should that become necessary? Uh, the National Guard is both a state and federal organization. Uh, we're now in our role as a state militia responding to emergencies within the state. We can also be federalized by the president if that need should arise. We just deployed some troops to Bosnia this week. We have Air National Guard personnel providing air refueling throughout the world. So we're on both sides of this. Uh, if the uh, situation uh, escalates militarily. Inevitably, National Guard units and personnel will be brought into that. Right now, we're in the state militia phase uh, under the command of the governor, uh, who's our commander-in-chief, uh, dealing with the situations here in New Jersey. Well, your primary function at this point would be uh, transportation, um, tri as you mentioned, triage, or just support? Transportation, medical support, security, uh, control of traffic, personnel, uh, as you mentioned uh, just before we came on. Uh, traffic is pretty much at a standstill. Airports have been shut down. So when you have matters that involve and affect public safety, um, we have to keep the roads open so emergency vehicles and convoys can get through. Now, when, when the average commuter attempts to go home either now or later in the day and they see that your troops out on the road, you're just mainly there to keep the peace and move things along. That's correct. Mm. Because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be panicking uh, if they see uh, any signs of military anywhere. But it's just, uh, you know, you're out there to, to on alert and to lend support, like I said, mainly in transportation and medical support. Yeah, at this point, seeing uniforms is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the American Red Cross has set up a family inquiry hotline um, at 215-299-0134. That's 215-299-0134. That's out of their uh, Philadelphia office if you had relatives or family, um, you know, in and around where some of these terrorist attacks have taken place, um, then uh, that's the number to call, 215-290-0134. Let's go to uh, the APR National Network now um, and get the latest on the, the series of terror attacks now There's in the nation. There's no word on the fate of the tens of thousands who work in the World Trade Center's Twin Towers, but witnesses reported seeing bodies falling from the building and some people jumping. One of the planes that crashed into the building this morning just around 9 o'clock Eastern Time had been hijacked after takeoff from Boston. An explosion also rocked the Pentagon today. An aircraft crashed on a helicopter landing pad near the Pentagon. 
The west wing of the White House has been evacuated amid threats of terrorism. The president is not in Washington. He has been in Florida for a pre-organized trip. He was reading to school children and is now on Air Force One and is returning apparently to Washington. We also know this morning that a large plane is down near Pittsburgh. A Pittsburgh TV station says it's believed to be a Boeing 767. It crashed in the Somerset County Airport area. Not clear yet if this crash is related to the others taking place today. Authorities from coast to coast are now on alert, halting air traffic and evacuating high-profile buildings. Our Doug Whiteman is in Washington. He joins us live now on how people are handling this in Washington, D.C. Well, yes, Rita, I was just out in Washington. I was riding the metro, which is uh, very crowded with people. The sidewalks here are teeming with people. The streets are jammed. Uh, apparently, uh, people have been excused from work early all over the city, and they're now trying uh, desperately to get home uh, in a hurry to be with their loved ones. Uh, and with so many people doing this all at once, uh, they're not going to have much luck uh, getting anywhere uh, in a hurry. Uh, there is a, a long line at every public phone. Apparently, uh, cell phones, wireless phones are not working because uh, the airspace is jammed. Uh, there's a long line at every ATM machine in Washington. Again, uh, practically bedlam uh, in Washington. Uh, many, many people are trying to get away. All right, Doug Whiteman, we want to thank you for that live report on what's going on in Washington, D.C. Stay with us. We will continue to have the very latest for you live right here. This is AP Network News. You're Are listening we, to New Jersey 101.5. It's 11.02. We'll now rejoin AP. Literally gripping the nation. It is the story of all of these incidents in New York and in Washington this morning. Ross Simpson joins me live now. As I said earlier this morning when this all began, America is under attack. Authorities are on alert from coast to coast, halting all air traffic, evacuating high-profile buildings. Evacuations now ordered at the United Nations in New York and at the Sears Tower in Chicago. Los Angeles has mobilized its anti-terrorism division. As we told you also, the White House has been evacuated. The old executive office building next door. Let's go live live now on the street outside the White House and correspondent Tony Wenton. Tony? Well, Ross, uh, both D.C. police and the U.S. Secret Service have set up a perimeter outside the White House, yellow police tape uh, blocking off all the streets leading to the White House, uh, and uh, very aggressive uh, officers pushing people back uh, because of uh, the, uh, the, the series of, of attacks earlier today. Uh, a little while ago, uh, we saw a, uh, a series of fire trucks race down uh, 17th Street here, and uh, also we're seeing uh, a large van from Walter Reed uh, Army Hospital, a full, uh, presumably, of, uh, of medical personnel, perhaps responding to uh, the uh, Pentagon. That was the general direction they were heading in. Uh, the uh, the reaction of people on the streets here in Washington, just one of shock, people milling around, uh, just uh, their faces uh, drawn. Uh, a number of people are huddled around a uh, transistor radio out here at the corner of uh, New York Avenue and 14th Street, uh, listening as the news updates continue to unfold as we have uh, the, uh, these terrible, tragic reports coming in from all over. Tony, from your vantage point, can you see the smoke at the Pentagon on the horizon? No, I, I cannot see the smoke. Uh, we did hear uh, about about 45 minutes ago, we did hear a large bang. Um, we don't uh, have any definite confirmation on what that was. Uh, but when that happened, that's shortly after, the, after that happened, that's when the uh, Secret Service and the uh, uh, D.C. police started pushing people back even further away from the White House than the original perimeter they'd set up. Have any additional uh, police been moved in from uh, Metropolitan Police Department to augment uh, the uh, Secret Service and other details at the White House? Well, from what we can see, uh, Ross, around the White House, uh, there are a number of extra personnel, uh, motorcycle uh, police officers, uh, fire department personnel, basically in every every direction, every corner around the White House here in central Washington. Uh, there are there is a, a command post, if you will. Uh, for these uh, officers ready to respond if something happens. But as I say, uh, the immediate area around the White House remains completely sealed off. Uh, yellow police tape across uh, the avenues and the streets here. And uh, officers uh, turning people around who are trying to get anywhere near the White House. Thank you very much. Correspondent Tony Wenton live outside the White House as that facility is evacuated. The Capitol being evacuated. The Pentagon has already been evacuated. And if you're just joining us... We just had on the air a short while ago with correspondent Thelma Lebrecht from the Pentagon, a security officer whose post was just a few yards away from where he says a large airplane. He says it looked like an A310 Airbus, a wide-body jet, slammed into the west side of the Pentagon, setting it ablaze. He said people were scrambling, trying to find a way out of the destroyed uh, portion of the building. He says, but they didn't know which way to run. There was so much flame and so much smoke. Rita? Among all the 
unknown questions this morning is the nature of any injuries or fatalities. We are watching video from New York, the World Trade Center area that shows uh, injured people being taken away on stretchers, being administered to by uh, firefighters, by paramedics, by all those people who are trying to lend a hand. But we don't know yet the full scope, and it may be some time before we do, of injuries or uh, fatalities in the wake of all of these incidents this morning. Now, if you are not in New York, if you are not in Washington, you may be wondering what is going on in your area. So we're going to take a moment here to address that question. The uh, precautions being taken in various states across the nation. All right, on New Jersey 101.5 now, it's six minutes past 11 and being so close to the World Trade Center, there is certainly a lot of activity going on in the Garden State. From the State House where there is a heightened sense of security, twice the number of state troopers who usually guard the building and in its garage are visible. The State Police and the National Guard mobilized in New Jersey heading northward now to offer any assistance and rescue efforts that can be uh, that uh, can be mounted um, where the Twin Towers once stood. To look at the Manhattan skyline now, Lower Manhattan from Battery Park on north. Those familiar towers no longer stand. The dust and the debris from the collapse have begun to make its way now over into New Jersey, making the air quality perhaps dangerous in the northern part of New Jersey. We do not know if the attacks are done. Outside of Pittsburgh, a 767 jetliner has crashed. That's out of the Pittsburgh airport. That is believed to have been another plane that was hijacked. That is not confirmed yet that that plane was hijacked, but it's believed to be what would have been the fourth air attack, airplane attack now, um, in, the, uh, in the New York and Washington area. Um, from this side of the river, watching the carnage unfold in Manhattan has been surreal, to say the least. New Jersey 101.5's David Mathau uh, was turned away on his attempts to get into Manhattan. He joins us now live um, from Fort Lee, where he has been talking to um, individuals there and, and, and reliving this almost moment by moment, David. Eric, it has been nothing short of unbelievable, only it is real, and that's what's so terrifying. When we last spoke, I was making my way northbound on the turnpike near exit 13, just as the first tower exploded and collapsed. Uh, I had uh, reported to you that it looked as if the building were actually imploding with a huge plume of mushroom cloud smoke slowly rising up into the sky, almost as if a nuclear bomb had been dropped. Uh, the, the hundreds of people uh, who were driving had pulled off to the side of the highway watching this incredible scene in disbelief. There was a line of trucks pulled off in the rest area just before that uh, near exit 11, probably a mile and a half long because many of these drivers were heading into New York City and they were now learning that they could not go into the city because the Lincoln, the Holland tunnels both closed, the George Washington Bridge closed, the whole scene frozen. Dozens of people had huddled together on the turnpike just uh, along the extension north of where you turn off to go to the Lincoln Tunnel. And I was talking to a couple of them when the second explosion took place and people just watched in horror. People were crying and screaming, oh my God. And seconds later, um, a, a teary-eyed man named Albert from Ridgefield told me that his friend was working a couple of buildings away in the World Trade Center. This is after he had just watched the second tower go down. And he felt that uh, a state of war was going to be declared and uh, he was extremely emotional. There's got to be more people dead than in Pearl Harbor there, boy. All this cluster of people in one concentrated area, definitely. I'm not in the reserves no more, man, but if they, have, if they needed to call me back up to fight these guy whoever did this i would go in a heartbeat because it's crazy man and that's basically the feeling, Eric, Eric. People cannot believe what they are saying, seeing. They're talking about this being the worst attack on the United States in history. Well, David, you, David, you just did the series um, last week about the, the, the preparations against a terrorist attack in, in northern New Jersey. And, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, your experts saying it was inevitable. And exactly correct. And what, what's so ironic is that uh, they were saying exactly that, that uh, they felt that it was not a question of if, but when and that they were completely uh, prepared and would deal with the situation as best they could. I don't think that anyone in their wildest dreams ever fore foresaw this kind of nightmare where you're talking about planes, kamikaze style, going into the World Trade Center. A horrifying and terrifying sight. All right, and uh, all right, David Mathau up in northern New Jersey. This may not be over. 
Um, CBS is now reporting a total of eight planes have been hijacked um, in America. Five of them are still in the air. Eight planes in total have been hijacked across the country and eight are still airborne at this hour. Uh, we will have more on that coming up in, uh, in the minutes ahead. Our senior State House correspondent, Gene Dillard, uh, joins us now live where, um, Gene, we've told that, they, that they've taken some extra precautions at the State House today as well. Well, there are some precautions. I don't think they're all in place yet. There's, there are a lot of state troopers milling around outside the governor's office right now. And one of them told me that uh, although they don't have additional security now, the only thing you can see in front of the State House now is one security car. Uh, with a person in it. I mean, nobody's being detained or anything of that kind, but there are supposed to be additional, uh, there is supposed to be additional security around the building, and that's in the process of being put together. Uh, one of the entrances to the garage has been closed, that State House garage where all the employees park. Um, that has been closed. The other end uh, is still open. The, um, I'm told by someone who works over at the, ju the uh, Division of Criminal Justice that the building over there they may be sending workers home. I know criminal justice, some of those workers have been sent home. The uh, court, Supreme Court session this morning was canceled. And uh, the, uh, as you probably know, the State Police Office of Emergency Management has been put on alert. And we are expecting that sometime early this afternoon, maybe within a couple of hours, there'll be a news conference with the uh, State Police and the Acting Governor DeFrancesco and the State Attorney General to kind of brief us on what, what is actually happening. Yeah, the Acting Governor uh, mobilizing the National uh, Guard this morning. We talked to Ray Martinique with, uh, with the Guard a short while ago, um, trying to concentrate on, on you know, getting uh, the New Jersey Guardsmen uh, in place. Any word from the Governor's office yet uh, where DeFrancesco has sent them or what the plans are? No, I've heard nothing on that at all. Uh, they, uh, they're apparently waiting to announce that when they do the news conference. All right, our Senior State House Correspondent Gene Dillard uh, there in Trenton at the State House. Um, again, I want to want to reiterate a piece of information that um, that some of the other broadcast networks now are reporting um, that the the FBI and the FAA now say that there were a total of eight planes, eight airplanes, commercial jetliners hijacked today. Um, we have uh, we know of at least four now. It's unclear whether in that figure. Um, that includes a 767 that has now crashed just outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, there were two planes that hit the World Trade Center, the one that hit near the Pentagon, and then the one that, uh, that hit outside of Pittsburgh. So that would leave four, we've heard as many as five now, um, still, in the, uh, still in the air. Um, and with question on what on, on what's going to happen to that. So that, Dennis, that probably is the next the next greatest question to find out where these four or five planes that have been hijacked are, um, and how you get them down safely. Yeah, and what kind of fuel they have uh, remaining on board. If, if they run international flights and coming into the New York uh, area, they they're probably low on fuel. Uh, so I would imagine if that is the case, that five are still in the air, or perhaps four still in the air. Uh, it would resolve uh, s somewhat quickly. Another plane crash they're saying might have happened in Camp David. Okay, um, that right in for the newsroom. This would be uh, another one of those planes that has crashed uh, near Camp David, the, um, the president's retreat. Um, that is... Uh, We're getting a picture now, and it says uh, federal, major federal buildings in uh, evacuated in the Washington area. The picture we're seeing is uh, smoke and fire and water being poured, but I don't know that looks to me like it's a, like it's a, the Pentagon. The Pentagon still okay. Um, but we have uh, we do now have an unconfirmed report now that another plane has crashed um, outside of Camp David, um, which would be the which would be the president's the president's retreat. Um, as we said, you know, the, we understand there were eight hijacked and that there were as many as five in the air. This could be as few as four. There may be um, there may be at least three planes um, that were hijacked still in the air. Um, at this uh, at this point, and Dennis will you know work. Right. Who, whoever is responsible for this, I mean, it's got to be the most diabolical, inhuman people uh, on the planet uh, to cause this kind of terror. And and if we find out who and when, uh, you know, of course, the urge to to re retaliate is going to be great from the American people. But if you see this kind of carnage and this kind of devastation, uh, maybe it's just best to ask, what the hell do you want? 
and, and negotiate from there. But uh, I'd imagine there's no, been no word from the White House, no word from the uh, military or the Pentagon uh, as to what exactly is going on or what steps need to be taken from here on out. And I imagine sometime before noon, uh, or maybe now after, because time is rolling on without any indication uh, from Washington as to uh, what their ta take on this is. Eric, you have some uh, latest news? Yeah, let's go live now. Um, we're, uh, Alan David Stein is live at uh, Liberty State Park in Jersey City. Alan, we are uh, we are happy to hear from you. The last we heard you were on a boat on the way to Manhattan. We're, uh, I'm, so, uh, we just, oh, I'm sorry, we just lost him again. Um, Alan David Stein, uh, one of our reporters, uh, apparently has, has made it back safely to uh, Liberty State Park in Jersey City. That is, uh, that is good news. We've heard from David Mathow now, and we've, uh, and we've at least have heard from Alan David Stein to know that he is at least in, um, in that area. Now, I'm, I am told, Dennis, <laughs> yeah. that this is the anniversary of the Camp David Accords, hmm. um, which has great significance to the Israelis and the Palestinians. We had heard an unconfirmed report very early on um, that at least one fringe Palestinian group had taken responsibility for at least one of these attacks uh, that would seem to underscore the significance of a plane going down near Camp David. Um, and again, we have no confirmed um, responsibility taken for any of the any of these blasts. But you know, your eyes automatically would turn to to some of the Middle Eastern terrorists, those companies or those countries that have um, uh, that have declared war against the against the United States. Um, so you know, we're, that note in history uh, may also um, may also provide a clue as to who may who may have been behind may have been behind the hijacking of eight planes, and now we know the downing of at least four, perhaps five. All right, thank you, Eric. We will rejoin uh, AP in uh, about a minute, or a little more than a minute. We're going to wait for another traffic report uh, and see if we can get Alan David back on the phone. We do have Alan uh, back at Liberty. Uh, yeah, we got we have Alan David Stein back on the line now from uh, from Jersey City. And if our fast traffic people are listening, hold on one minute. Following the report, we'll join you for an update on how the roads are going. Not sure. Yeah, all right, let's go back to uh, the phone. And all right, Alan, Alan, are you with us? I am with you. Uh, I am at Liberty Science Center. Uh, we were just at Liberty State Park, which is, when you come down to it, the closest point to uh, the tragedy uh, outside of Manhattan. Uh, what they are doing right now is evacuating people from lower Manhattan uh, through uh, Liberty State Park. Uh, we spoke to one of the evacuees who lives on lower Manhattan. And you came over on the ferry, they're evacuating? Yeah, they're evacuating the police boats, they're putting babies first women, the Liberty Ferry's taking people off, the Hoboken Ferry, they're get they were getting them from downtown clearing them out of there because they were scared of the building collapse, which is what it did. I uh, happened to be watching there when uh, that second building uh, did collapse. Words can't describe it. Uh, I was looking, watching the smoke, the uh, sight that everyone's been seeing on TV of uh, just the smoke pluming out. All of a sudden, a very loud rumble. Almost if you've seen the footage of uh, when they imploded Three Rivers Stadium and they do those implosions, uh, that kind of like that loud, deep rumbling. All the way over here in New Jersey, we heard it and then just watching the top of that building, it just sank into, into smoke. Alan, what about the smoke and the debris and all? Has that reached to, the, to this side of the, of, of the river yet? Uh, we haven't uh, had really smoke that's impeding our, our sight at this point. The wind seems to be blowing the other way, so uh, we're okay there. Uh, they won't let us, they let us as far if you're familiar with the area, uh, the turnoff um, where if you went straight, you would go to uh, the ferry to uh, Ellis Island and uh, the uh, statue. Um, they don't let us uh, go past there. They're for us, forcing us to make the right, which takes us to the Liberty Science Center and the uh, the diner right near here. Alan, uh, yeah. th this is Dennis Malloy. Um, yeah. When you uh, were watching the people come off the boats, so they're sending police boats, ferries, whatever they can over to Lower Manhattan and bring the people over. Was it a panic situation where there were too many people on the boat and it was it was a chaos or was it fairly orderly? They were not letting anybody near enough to see that. What we see is uh, the stream of people uh, and they're not letting us near a lot of them. Uh, they were uh, at first uh, slow now more and more uh, walking uh, out of the parking lot area uh, a lot of them were uh, workers who uh, you know were in the area at work just totally evacuated and really the I didn't see any injuries what I did see was shock what we're also seeing is uh, a number of emergency vehicles zooming past us uh, from different towns in North Jersey uh, ambulances uh, we saw one uh, police vehicle with uh, a pontoon in the back, obviously going to be uh, used to uh, ferry some uh, people back and forth. Are they bringing any of the wounded over to your location? Uh, I, we have not seen any any sign of wounded, but uh, uh, obviously there are contingency plans for that, being as uh, all the 
uh, ambulance uh, and emergency uh, vehicles that we saw uh, heading over. Heading toward the, the uh, deembarkment area. Correct. Um, Alan, uh, where you are, what are your prospects of, of, of getting out of the area you're in? Uh, to uh, to get in uh, to to get out of here and uh, head back away from it. Yeah, that that won't be a problem. We're okay. fine here now. Because do. because I'm wondering if they're shuttling people over from Manhattan, where are they going? Uh, right now, the, I think the the only thought is get them out of there, and and you'll worry about. So are that people later. piling up in a parking lot with uh, with belongings or? or? Uh, not with belongings. I mean, this happened so fast. Uh, the, yeah. Again, that everybody is in such a, a state of shock. It's like. People, you almost expect uh, the ones in ties to still have a pencil in their hand from being at their desk. Yeah, I would I'm, imagine the New Jersey National Guard might be there to give transportation sometime soon. Yeah, we have not we have not seen them as yet. They're also evacuating. We spoke to people who were evacuated uh, out of the uh, some of the sky uh, uh, the uh, high rises, the office buildings in Jersey City. Uh, they have been evacuated. Also, the ones that uh, are on the waterfront. All right, Alan, stay on the line. Don't don't hang up because the cell phone uh, the signals are spotty. I want to give this number again here. The American Red Cross has set up a family inquiry hotline. Here's the number again: two one five two nine nine zero one three four. That's two one five two nine nine zero one three four for the American Red Cross. Um, we will continue bringing you information as it becomes available. Um, American Airlines is confirming now they have lost two flights. One of those planes was the one that, uh, the first one, I believe, that went into the World Trade Center. The other flight is the one that's down outside of Pittsburgh. We know at least two other planes that have that have crashed. One okay. into the second, go ahead. A correction, uh, the, the one outside of Pittsburgh is a United. Oh, it was a United, I'm sorry, okay. I, met, I met American. United is correct. Um, and we, we are also, um, according to some reports now, awaiting the fate of three or four other jetliners that are still in the air hijacked uh, at some point today. A total of eight planes may have uh, have been hijacked. Yes. Now, thank you, Eric. The, the American Airlines flight was uh, the second one they confirmed was from Dulles to L.A. Uh, that, that apparently uh, crashed in, in New York oh, or perhaps at the Pentagon. We're not sure at this point. And, and a United Airlines passenger jet uh, crashed near Pittsburgh uh, with no apparent... Uh, location given as of yet uh, 80 miles southeast of uh, Pittsburgh um, Alan David Stein are you still on the line I guess he's occupied uh, with the newsroom 1-800-283-101.5 is the phone number again uh, if you can avoid I mean, people are walking around here uh, grown men with tears in their eyes and, and red eyes and, and, and women crying and I imagine it's, it's the same in every office building and home across America um, the best thing you can do at this point is not to panic not to rush out to do anything rash as far as racing home or racing to your children. We have no had no word on schools in New Jersey and, and if they would be letting out early. But again, do whatever you can do as an individual, as a group, as a community, not to panic and not to do anything rash and cause even more uh, death or injury on the highway uh, by losing your uh, self-control. Uh, remain calm. Do the best you can to do what it is you have to do today. Uh, and if you, of course, uh, can avoid at any cost going near New York City. As we heard from Alan David Stein moments ago, they're evacuating lower Manhattan at one point through ferry boats, police boats, whatever way they could across the river into Jersey City and other parts of uh, New Jersey along the river there. I imagine Hoboken uh, as well. Uh, so far, what we have, both towers of the World Trade Center down both hit by planes, one at 8.47 a.m., the second at 9.05 a.m. Fire, smoke, debris, and then one after the other, both towers collapsed and fell to the ground. One about 10 o'clock, the next at about 10.30. The Pentagon uh, hit by a plane in an explosion around 9.40 this morning, and then a car bomb reported outside the State Department building. Uh, you're listening to New Jersey 101.5 and our continuous coverage of what's going on. We'll try to get our next traffic report in about nine minutes from New Jersey Fast Traffic. Uh, we are having intermittent reports from them today because of the continuing coverage here. We'll aim to get you another report on the traffic situation in that area around 9.33, uh, 11.33. It is now 11.24. Again, all traffic in the air has been grounded. Any flights heading into the United States from outside the country have been diverted to the country of Canada. So if you're expecting someone on an international flight, um, it'll be a while. You may get word from them once they are on the ground that they are in Canada. 
Again, uh, this is unfolded. There's so much to unfold and so much to sift through uh, as far as the, the death and uh, death toll in New York City, the death toll in Washington, D.C., the, uh, the continuing saga of what's going on in the air with the remaining three or four airplanes that may still be hijacked. The president was in Florida speaking to a group of elementary students when this happened. Cut a speech short. I would imagine he's either setting up a headquarters there or making his way, hopefully, safely, back to the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. 1125, we'll uh, now try to join the Associated Press and find the latest on the national scene. And the ruling government of uh, Afghanistan, and uh, uh, we don't know what they will have to play, uh, to say at this point. And now the tallest skyscrapers in Boston, Cleveland, Minneapolis, even Seattle's landmark Space Needle have now been closed. So a lot of uh, other states and cities not waiting for something to happen in their backyard. They are taking steps right now to really shut down their cities as well. All right, and to go back to the uh, uh, Taliban news conference, the significance of this at this particular moment is that Osama bin Laden, who is a man who is wanted as a terrorist by the U.S. government, uh, has been, according to the U.S. government, a guest of uh, the government of Afghanistan, the Taliban. Uh, the Taliban say that uh, they are uh, not involved in anything that Osama bin Laden may be behind. And we will be listening very closely as the Taliban has its news conference. That is supposed to be coming up shortly, and we will continue to bring you the very latest in all of these cases. Now, one thing to go back to, uh, in addition to this information from American Airlines that it has, quote, lost two aircraft carrying 156 people, the mayor of New York City, where, of course, the World Trade uh, Center, uh, the incidents against the World Trade Center began all of this, says that he suspects the loss of life there could be horrendous, and that is his words, uh, his word, the Trade Center, uh, can hold tens of thousands of people, 50,000 people or so, who work there. Ross? All right, I'm just checking the uh, public relations wire here at the Associated Press. And as you said, American Airlines does confirm that it lost two aircraft in tragic incidents, as American puts it this morning. American now says the flights were Flight 11, a Boeing 767 widebody en route from Boston to Los Angeles with 81 persons aboard, nine flight attendants and two pilots, and Flight 77, a Boeing 757 operating out of Washington, Dulles to Los Angeles with 58 passengers, four flight attendants, and two pilots. So let's just do uh, some of the math here. Uh, we've got uh, well over 200 people aboard those two aircraft. If what American says is true, Rita, then the plane that took off from Washington, Dulles heading to Los Angeles apparently turned around and came back into the Washington Air Corridor and took aim at the Pentagon. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, United Airlines says it has lost a plane, perhaps a 747, uh, near Pittsburgh, about 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. That would place it, uh, those original reports coming out of Somerset County. So we know of three aircraft down. United uh, loses one, and American loses two. All right. We are going to take a moment here in about a minute or so to recap everything that has happened this morning. Uh, it's been an event-packed morning. As you know, the events have all been tragic. We don't know the nature of uh, any possible injuries or fatalities this morning from uh, these incidents in New York City, in Washington. There is a plane down in Pennsylvania. We don't know if that is connected to all of these other incidents. Across the nation, authorities uh, are taking uh, uh, actions to keep their areas safe. A horrific series of attacks this morning on landmark buildings in Washington and New York. Two planes go into the World Trade Center in New York about 9 o'clock Eastern. That starts it all. Both of the Twin Towers, each 110 stories tall, collapse. No word yet on the fate of the tens of thousands of people who work at the World Trade Center's Twin Towers. Witnesses report seeing bodies falling from the building and some people jumping. One of the planes that crashed into the building had been hijacked after takeoff from Boston. We know that now. We are waiting for a news conference from the Taliban. Whether they will say anything about all of this, we don't know. Stay tuned. We will be here for you and with you. This is AP Network News. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5. I'm Dennis Malloy. It's 11.30. Uh, we're continuing our coverage of the World Trade Center, uh, Center attacks and the uh, attacks on uh, Washington, D.C., both at the Pentagon and the State Department building. 
Uh, we're awaiting in about three minutes a traffic report on uh, what the situation might be in and around uh, the North Jersey area coming out of New York City and going in as well. Eric Scott, as we join us from the newsroom, Eric? Yeah, in uh, Newark Airport now, the three passenger terminals at the airport are being evacuated this hour. The airport's been closed since the attack on the Trade Center Towers this morning, but now everybody in the airport is, is being kicked out. Um, we are told that the evacuation right now is just as a, um, just as a, a, a precaution, uh, that they have not received any any specific threats, but the evacuation continues now at Newark International Airport this hour. Thank you, Eric. Uh, the ramifications of this are, are going to be uh, tremendous, uh, both economic, uh, for, aside from the death toll uh, on the people and the lives that are lost, I would imagine the entire country, uh, at least the eastern seaboard, pretty much shutting down today in the corridor we are in, in between New York and, and Washington, D.C., uh, as uh, you may have heard on AP, uh, they have evacuated uh, skyscrapers around the country. The Sears Tower in Chicago, any large buildings in Boston, Minneapolis, other cities across the country, uh, not taking any chances and not waiting for anything to happen in their backyard. Uh, so the, the ramifications of this, not only in, in, in death and uh, to the psyche of the people closest to this, but uh, economically too, this will have an impact uh, on the country. And we're still waiting to hear any official word from anybody in Washington, D.C. as to uh, what the, the next plan will be. They're going to choose their words carefully. They're going to choose their timing carefully. And I'm sure it's a, uh, pretty much every available personnel is being put to use now to figure out what the next step would be. Um, it seems like, uh, as this morning, as we're in the <clears throat> middle of all this, life has uh, pretty much changed forever. I, I, being 43 years old, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Those of you who have lived through Pearl Harbor and World War II uh, may be able to equate this to, to that. Uh, but this is certainly uh, something the likes of which not many of us have seen. Um, my urging would be to keep children, as they're in school now, uh, I don't know the exact evacuation plans for most schools around New Jersey. Uh, there may be some, necessarily evacuations, but uh, closing early and uh, asking you to pick children up. Again, do it in an orderly fashion. Don't panic if they haven't called you, they haven't put out uh, an official word. Stay put, stay pat. My urging would be not to let your kids listen to the radio or watch TV, especially younger children, in the next... Uh, day or two. It is 11.33 and now to New Jersey fast traffic and find out uh, what's going on on the roadways uh, to the north. Well, Dennis, as you know, all of the Hudson River crossings have been shut down into and out of New York City and also New Jersey Transit is now posting this. All bus service into and out of New York City has been suspended until further notice. All bus service within the state of New Jersey will continue to operate and all eastbound rail service into Newark, Hoboken and New York as well has been suspended. They are also utilizing all available rail equipment westbound out of the New York area and that includes New York, Newark and the Hoboken Terminal. Uh, New Jersey Transit also stating they will stage additional buses at the uh, North Penn Station, North Broad Street Station and also at the Hoboken Terminal. So obviously, if you don't have to travel today, especially in the North Jersey area, you don't want to. And that is the situation right now. I'm Jay Trelease with New Jersey Fast Traffic. Thanks, Jay. It's 1133. Uh, New Jersey pretty much is a lockdown. They're mobilizing the state police, mobilizing the uh, National Guard. Um, again, you know, there, there's no one on the ground uh, attacking uh, the state of New Jersey or the United States of America. Uh, if you see uniforms today, uh, military personnel, be comforted. They're there to help you get uh, to your home uh, safely and help to keep traffic moving uh, safely and securely. So it's a sight most Americans haven't seen. is military personnel on their streets, on their highways. They are there to help you and to keep things moving along. So do not be alarmed. Be comforted, if anything, by that sight. Eric? Dennis, we do have confirmed now that that um, airplane that went down outside of Pittsburgh was from Newark. Um, it was hijacked at Newark Airport um, at some point this morning. We do not have a flight number on that, um, but that was uh, that United. was well, that was the plane that that crashed outside of uh, Pittsburgh. We do have confirmed now that it took off from Newark. From Newark, all right. Thanks, Eric. That is a United Airlines plane. As Eric just mentioned, he does not have the flight number or the destination from Newark. The other two planes that went down are American Flight 11 out of Boston to L.A. An American Flight 77 from Washington to Los Angeles. So apparently this was a major undertaking by a nation or a terrorist organization, uh, perhaps a group of nations, and uh, who they are, what they want, 
uh, what their purpose for this is, uh, other than uh, to uh, punish what, what a lot of people around the world see as the great devil, and that is the United States of America, we don't know at this point. Still waiting word from Washington on any any news from uh, our government or our military as to who, what, when, where, how, and what's next. Uh, we can take your phone calls at 1-800-283-101.5. Have anything to add to this as far as um, information on traffic, information on uh, uh, services that are being provided, information on what was seen uh, this morning when both uh, towers were hit or and or went down. Uh, we got word about an hour ago from a guy who was three blocks from the World Trade Center in a building. They'd asked to be evacuated, but they stayed put because there was no place to go. And they were three blocks from the World Trade Center and their building was intact and the people in that building were safe. They're just playing the waiting game calmly as I would urge everyone to do who's anywhere near the New York City area or anywhere throughout the state of New Jersey within the sound of our voices. It's 1136, Bob Williams has joined us from New Jersey traffic. And, in, traffic, and yeah. in addition to what we've uh, been telling you about all the uh, bridges and everything being in a transportation lockdown in especially the northern part of the state, we're getting word that the turnpike is now closing off the road north of Interchange 14 near the airport. So you're not going to be able to get north of 14. The uh, Newark Bay extension, the one that goes by the Statue of Liberty, that has also been closed down. These are probably more, more so precautions mm. than anything else. And it looks like everything is going to be shunted west and south away from the city right now. So that eastern spur whoever's up there you're up there but you're not going to get any further north of 14 uh, and i guess it would be to uh, get the national guard in whatever yeah. other uh, transportation and rescue services they need to get into the perimeter of new york city mobilize things and get and, people uh, out so to keep the general public out of there now if you have somebody who's working in new york city a family friends uh co-workers working in new york city and getting out uh, it will take some time if they are with us still, they'll be out, and uh, unfortunately, thank you, Bob, unfortunately, it'll take some time to find out uh, who is still with us and, and, and the extent of the casualties and the damage. Uh, but do not do not attempt to go near New York City. You will be turned away uh, because they are shutting down roads to uh, make those roadways available to emergency personnel and transportation sources so they get the people, the survivors, out of New York City. Um, Stu, uh, three blocks away in New York. Uh, I, Stu, are you the person we spoke to earlier this morning? Yes, I am. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad you're here, and I, I have very much appreciate you holding on the line because you're about the closest person we have to the site. W what's going on now, Stu? Well, uh, right now I'm looking. I'm in another room. I'm looking directly west, uh, and what I see is a huge, thick plume of dark charcoal gray smoke from about VZ Street, if you, if you know where that is, which is at the north end of the World Trade Center, going south, and it looks like southeast. We are actually in the clear here. We have a sunny skies, and we could see, or I could see a shadow from this building actually on top of the lower buildings where they are soot covered and full of paper and other debris. Now, Stu, uh, we're joined by our news director, Eric Scott. Eric, this guy is in a building three blocks from the World Trade Center. Wow. What, what have you been told, if anything, about um, potential casualties, the potential for another attack, the potential for continuing danger there? Well, uh, I've been listening to some of the local news stations, and uh, they're talking, using words like horrific uh, casualties. Uh, we did see a number of people fall from the towers, um, the streets right now are deserted, but uh, the thing that really is disconcerting is we keep hearing rumbling uh, for about 10 minutes right around the top of the hour at 11 o'clock. We may have heard 12 what sounds like thunder claps, and of course you can't see through this smoke, so there's no way of knowing what's going on in there. About uh, 11.24, about 15 minutes ago, there was another loud explosion or what sounded like an explosion someone walked in and said what was that well you're on the 20th floor um, we're on the 21st floor of a building that's how tall uh probably about 30 stories now are you staying there by choice or because you've been told to well no we we're staying here by choice the building uh, management has been making announcements through the loudspeakers here saying they want the building evacuated but there really is, you know, we feel safer in here. You still have power, Stu, apparently. We have power, we have air conditioning. Uh, the, even though there's smoke all over, very little of it. The windows, we've closed the windows, so very little of the soot and the smoke and the smell have gotten in here. Stu, we're going to take your number and be in contact with you, if you don't mind. 
Okay, l- let me give you two numbers. All right, well, we're going to put you okay, on hold sure. off the air, and we're going to get two uh, two numbers from you so that we can keep in contact with you because you're the closest source we have to the uh, mm-hmm. to what's going on, and if we can help you uh, on this end in any way, we'd be happy to do that. Okay. Stu, hold on, please. All right. All right, that is uh, Stu, who is uh, three blocks away from the World Trade Center towers where they once stood just about uh, three hours ago this morning. And uh, he claims that the power is still on. Um, there, they have air conditioning, phones, lights. They're being asked to evacuate, evacuate but where do you go? Uh, so at this point, he's, uh, he's staying put. Uh, and thanks again, Stu, for, for doing that for us uh, and giving us... We, we've tried to send reporters, as has every media outlet um, in the area, uh, TV and radio stations, and imagine from within a 100-mile radius trying to send people to New York City. Uh, I know at least this station's aggressive enough to do so, but our people are not allowed anywhere near the area. Uh, Alan David Stein was near the Liberty Science Center and witnessing people coming off of boats who were being evacuated from lower Manhattan, both police boats and the commuter ferries that normally are packed with uh, commuters every morning are being shipped over with the evacuees, mainly women and children first, out of lower Manhattan. Um, 1-800-283-101.5 is our phone number. Uh, and we'll go back uh, when we can to our... Uh, our listener, who is uh, just three blocks from the World Trade Center, and and find out the latest in Manhattan. Of course, there's so many other things going on, with uh, uh, perhaps three or four airplanes hijacked still in the skies. The FAA has grounded every flight and every plane across the United States. There are, by some reports and some accounts, three or four hijacked planes still in the air, where they would come down. The end result of that, we don't know, and I would imagine that would unfold within the next hour to two, uh, depending on the fuel capacity of most of those planes and if they took off from U.S. flights or they were coming in internationally. Anyone coming in internationally in the United States was diverted to Canada this morning. So if you have a loved one coming in from uh, overseas and you're waiting for them at Newark or Philadelphia or, or uh, Dulles or uh, LaGuardia or Kennedy, they're more than likely will be calling you within the next couple hours from a city in Canada. It was a week ago, this hour, I was heading in from Rome, and uh, I, I can't imagine I would have been diverted as well, I guess, to, uh, to Canada. Uh, we have some phone calls ready. We have some people with some eyewitness accounts, and then we'll rejoin the AP and, and perhaps get another traffic report on what this is doing to the traffic uh, around the state. As you heard, anything above exit 14 on the turnpike is being diverted off and away from New York City. Paul in Waretown. You're on New Jersey 101.5. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. How are you? Good. Now, you, where were you this morning when this happened? I was uh, working uh, on, on the pier uh, near the exchange place in Jersey, in Jersey City. And you, you made it back down to Waretown now? Yeah. Actually, I'm in Tom's River. What, what did you see? Everything. You saw both uh, planes hit? Yes. And both, both buildings collapse, or had you gotten out of there by I, then? I, I had, I, I had, we had just pulled off the pier... We were sitting around, uh, you know, me and all the guys, we were just, you know, trying to get a grip. And that's, you know, we were just pulling out and somebody flagged us over. We stopped, turned around and looked and we just, you know, just watched it in awe. It's probably probably the the most disturbing thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, All right, uh, Paul, I guess you're you're heading back to Weartown. Yes. And home. Uh, What's the word from home? Uh, Do you have children? Yeah, I have a son. How old? He's uh, five. Right. Is he in school? Yeah, he is in school. And are they sending uh, your kids home from school today, or do you know? Uh, here's the thing. My, my wife had called me, and because the cell, the cell phone, you know, the, 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 the airways have been jammed up. Right. She left a couple frantic messages because, you know, she knows I'm right there. Right. You know. And, did you let her know that you're you're okay? Yeah, I did call her, and that's when she said, you know, you know go, she wants me to go pick up my son. Right, all right. All right. All right, Paul, thank you. Appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5. Another thing we could do is if you're trying to get in touch with somebody and they don't know that you're okay and you want to use these airwaves to let them know that, you know, who you are and and that you're all right and heading home, we can do that as well uh, as time permits. Uh, Shelly on the Parkway, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Shelly. Good morning, Dennis. Good morning. Um, I just came from the Linden cogeneration power plant in Linden and it has been evacuated of all non-essential personnel. My company had a construction site going 
everyone's been let go and uh, they were shutting it. the uh, exit 13 from the turnpike was packed because it was a dead standstill all traffic trying to exit at exit 13 um, I had a family member at the FSA in Pomona that has also been evacuated all right. that, I've never seen anything like this I'm, I'm very young and I gotta tell you um, it, this is everybody just don't panic but you know God be with all of us I hear you, Shelly. Thank you so much for the information. And yeah, we will get through this, and uh, it will take some very, very tense hours, and uh, perhaps even longer to get through this. Uh, we, we see we might have some uh, official word from Washington uh, right now. Let's rejoin the AP see if we have any uh, word. And we are joining that live. Assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Traffic in the area now is said to be hellacious. Trying to join a live feed of what looks to be... Uh, we are going to be bringing you momentarily an American Airlines news conference. American Airlines has said that it has lost two aircraft in what it says were tragic incidents this morning. Although it's not going much further than that. Here it is live, American Airlines. American Airlines. Um, I, I don't know at this point in time. Can I confirm that? And the airport accounted for all outbound flights. Uh, that's uh, outside of the scope of the airport's responsibility. Uh, we're leaving that up to the FAA to conduct that activity. Joe, what is the code? Joe, what is the code for knocks? We have reports of employees screaming for knocks around the time. That's the plane is waiting to the world. Yeah, I don't know. All right, apparently we're having trouble with the feed from AP to Boston and the United Airlines spokesperson. Uh, we have, again, the reports of three planes down. American uh, Airline Flight 11 from Boston to L.A. American Airline Flight 77 from Washington to L.A. Both of those used in the uh, tax on the buildings, both in D.C. and New York City. A United Flight, we do not have the number of the flight, but it was heading out of Newark. Uh, unknown destination, unknown flight number, uh, and it crashed 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh. Uh, so apparently there's a, a lot of um, casualties both from the airplanes, at least 200 people or more on both of those American flights, and we don't know how many on the United flight out of Newark. Not to mention the uh, countless number of uh, deaths uh, in New York City. And if you remember the devastation that happened in uh, Oklahoma City, and, and what it caused to that city, uh, imagine that pff, times 100 or more in New York City and how many people's lives in this area will be affected, uh, not only in this area but around the country, but especially right here as it happened in our backyard this morning. It's 1148. We're going to go back to a traffic report from New Jersey Fast Traffic and see how it's affecting. Well, Dennis, obviously uh, travel here in the state is uh, adversely affected by this situation. As you probably already know, the Hudson River crossings, that is the Holland Tunnel, the Lincoln Tunnel, and the George Washington Bridge have all been shut down in both directions into and out of New York City. New Jersey Transit uh, reporting that they're uh, utilizing all available rail equipment westbound out of New York. And uh, they will be stopping in Newark, also the Hoboken Terminal heading westbound. Anything that they have, they'll be using those trains to get folks out of that area and uh, they are also saying all bus service into and out of New York City has been suspended until further notice so all bus service within the state of New Jersey will continue to operate and all eastbound eastbound out of the city into New Jersey rail service uh, will operate as well into Newark into Hoboken and uh, also uh, we are getting word from Bob Williams earlier now we did not receive this information here in the traffic center but I thank Bob for passing that on that the uh, northbound New Jersey turnpike in Bob, if you're listening to me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, has been shut down right around 14, 14A. So you cannot travel the northbound New Jersey Turnpike north of that area. I'm Jay Trelease with New Jersey Fast Traffic. Thank you very much, Jay. It's 1149 and uh, there's a news conference going on with United Airlines out of uh, Boston at uh, Logan Airport. And uh, the audio was a little difficult there, but I guess they're main conversations concerning that particular flight. Um, we have a caller on the line says he just saw a plane flying by, even though all planes have been canceled. Um, so Ken in Spotswood, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Ken. Yeah, I'm out my backyard here, and I'm normally in a flight path approaching New York City. Right. Well, just about twice as high as the flight path to New York City, 
there was a plane flying southbound, almost in a direct line, like southwest, like heading towards like Burlington, Trenton area. Right. It'd probably be over to Delaware Memorial Bridge by now. And it seems odd because there's absolutely no planes in the air at all, except for this one. And it was the four engine, like a 747, but it's not a wide body. It was a long, thin body. Hmm. It just seemed Did it look off. military or passenger to you, or couldn't you not tell? Uh, it was all just dark silver. Uh, mm -hmm. Not the real dark silver like the ones out of McGuire right. or Fort Dix. You know, more like a passenger type. I didn't see any writing on it at all. How long ago was this? So over Spotswood, how long ago? Uh, I would say 10 minutes ago, 12 minutes ago. And this is twice as high as you normally see in a flight path uh, over your home normally. Right, and they're going in the wrong direction. Right. This flight path is clearly to New York City. And it was clearly heading from the New York area down towards, actually like towards, you know, South Jersey, Washington, yeah. D.C., Delaware, that area. All right, Kenny, thanks. We have no idea what that could have been. Commercial uh, hijack plane, there are three or four according to certain reports still in the sky it could have been military it could have been recognizance uh, we just don't know but Ken thanks for the report Eric Scott has joined us back from the newsroom Eric. Yeah, we do have a confirmation now from United that uh, flight that was hijacked at Newark and crashed outside of Pittsburgh was flight 93 um, that was United flight 93 from Newark we don't have I don't have a destination on it now um, flight 175 was the United flight from Boston to Los Angeles. That was the Boeing 767 that was also involved in these terror attacks. But the uh, the United flight that went down outside of Pittsburgh, Flight 9393 from Newark uh, this morning. Eric, earlier information I had was Flight 11 out of Boston, but uh, is that a correction, Flight 175? 175 is the United flight. Oh, United uh, or American? I'm sorry. This is a United flight. A United flight. From uh, Boston bound for Los Angeles. All right. So it's United 93 that went down outside of Pittsburgh, United 175 out of Boston on the way to Los Angeles. Um, this plane, that flight 175 is one of the planes that it, it the may still be in, it may still may be still in, the in the air. air. Okay. All right. I've got flight 11 hitting the tower. Is yep. that correct? That is correct. That's an American flight. Yep. All right. Thank you very much, Eric. Hard to keep track of every possible thing that's going on, but we'll do our best and uh, with your help, too. Uh, Mark in South Amboy, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Mark. Hey there. Hey. Uh, you saw the second plane hit the second tower. We were, we're, we were in a uh, control center on the 22nd floor of our building across the river. In what city? In Jersey City. Okay. Looking directly across at the Trade Center, we heard the whomp of the first hit. I turned around and said, what's that? Everybody told me, oh, it's air conditioning, nothing big. We look out the window, and sure enough, there's billows of smoke pouring out of the Trade Center, uh, Tower 1. Uh, as we're watching, we're literally reporting to our superiors because we're in the security business in the whole nine yards. And uh, we have a big video screen, which we use to maintain uh, a visual view of our network. And we switch that over to a video, a live video feed. And uh, we were actually watching a particular news uh, station's helicopter uh, shots from the east. We were looking at it from the west as the jumbo jet came in from uh, came in and angled on onto uh, onto building two, onto tower two. So you yeah. saw it happen in front of your eyes. Oh yeah, we saw it all fly in. We're like, what in God's name is he doing there? Because we knew it's a jumbo jet. It had no uh, it had no reason. It had no r right to be there. Right. And we knew, you know, it's like the sickening in the pit of your stomach when you know it's going to happen. <clears throat> the one thing that struck me, uh, and I am former military, the interesting thing that struck me suddenly as I saw the jet come in and hit was the fact that it seemed almost intentionally to hit lower, almost in a one-two sort of, the first one's going to get your attention, the second one is going to hit you lower where the people are evacuating. Right. Almost as if it was premeditated in that fashion. Well, the word we got is there are 18 minutes apart and... Uh... Roughly 15 minutes, yes. 10 to 15 minutes was our count uh, that we experienced, that, that we were reporting to our people before the second one hit. As soon as the second one hit, uh, it was like a live wire. We were all ordered out of our buildings. The Jersey City waterfront was immediately... Be immediately we begun a full-scale evacuation. I was part of the crew going around making sure that people eventually got out of their buildings. Um, I, was, uh, I was later, I volunteered to drive people home who were panicked and who had problems. Mm -hmm. um, uh, traffic out of the area, 
don't go into the area, period. And That's what we've been telling people. All right, Mark, thanks very much. The National Guard and the state uh, police have been put on uh, full alert and have been put into uh, activation in uh, emergency use and in transportation transportation use as well. Um, Tom in Jackson, you're on New Jersey 101.5. You also say you saw the plane uh, fly over a few minutes ago? Uh, yes, I did. I'm actually Tom from Monroe, and I'm listening to you guys down here in Jackson, right by Great Adventure. Okay. And it looked like a passenger plane. It didn't look like a Fort Dix or a McGuire plane, and it was heading in that direction. Yeah. It was following 537 towards, like, like, I don't know, southwest or whatever it is. Mount Holly area. Yeah, from that your, direction. From your area. Following, uh, I guess it's west. Yeah. From here. All right, Tom, thank you. All right. I appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5. Uh, the reason why that would seem odd at this point to the last two callers, to this caller and the caller called from Spotswood, is that uh, all planes have been ordered grounded and uh, out of the sky. Uh, perhaps uh, this is a flight that was lingering from somewhere and needs to get down uh, safely somewhere. Uh, perhaps, of course, it still could be one of the hijacked planes uh, that are still in the sky. Earlier reports had the toll of eight airplanes were hijacked this morning. Four accounted for in the crashes at the Pentagon, the two at the Trade Center, and the one in Pittsburgh. And that re leaves three remaining in the sky. Uh, so that could be one of those planes. It could be a plane, like I said, that needs to get down safely that was called out of the sky uh, prior to this all happening. It's 11.56. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5. We have reporters uh, near the scene. We have an eyewitness who is staying put. Uh, one of our listeners in a building three blocks from the World Trade Center on the 21st floor of a 30-floor building in Lower Manhattan. Uh, and we are in touch with him as well to find out the latest on the scene. Uh, it's bedlam and chaos, of course, in and around the scene with both towers collapsing. How many people were in the building at the time of the collapse? No one knows. Those buildings together can hold up to 50,000 people. 50,000 people reportedly work there. This happened at a time just before 9 o'clock, so not everybody may have been in the building. Once the first building was struck, enough people may have gotten out of the building, both buildings to avert a total tragedy and, and a further loss of life. But there may have been lives lost on the ground as well from uh, both the implosion or the explosions and both of the towers collapsing. Uh, just about 10.30 was the uh, second tower collapse. And about 20 minutes to a half hour prior to that was the first tower collapse. We have um, the newsroom working on the story, of course, from all different angles. And we have a news report coming in about two minutes. It's 11.58. Uh, let's talk to Steve in Jackson, who also reported seeing a plane fly overhead, and which seems odd since all planes across the U.S. have been grounded. Steve, hi. Yes. Steve, what did you see 10 minutes ago? You saw a plane fly I've over. I've seen a plane, but it was a military plane because it, I work in... Uh in Jackson, right? Right, right. by Great Adventure. Right. I see him all day long coming and going, so I just wanted to call so nobody would panic. Okay, you, what you say you saw looked to you as a military plane? Yes, okay. one of those cargo planes. Yeah, I live... Going toward, um, like, McGuire Air Force Base. Yeah, I live in the flight path of McGuire, too, and I see them all the time, and I, I pretty much can tell between a passenger... Yes, yeah, so, uh, you plane. know, not to let the... Uh, the listeners uh, panic too much. Yeah, I, you know, and that's the last thing I want to do, and I will not put anything on the air for sensationalism's sake to panic people. And, and I've urged people, if you have kids, don't let them, let them watch TV or listen to the radio today. Right. God them. bless America. <sighs> Absolutely. Steve, thanks for the call to New Jersey 101.5. Like I say, it's been the strangest day in, in my 43 years of life, and I think it's going to change most of our lives forever in what way we don't know how yet. But uh, to see grown men walking around with tears in their eyes... Uh, and uh, and people sobbing uh, who were so many miles away from this uh, because it's such a devastating attack. Like I said, unless you lived through World War II and Pearl Harbor um, and all of that, you, you've probably never seen anything the likes of this. And again, uh, since we live in the United States of America, you may not be accustomed to military personnel on your street or on your highway. They are there for your protection. Give them every bit of cooperation you can. If you're trying to make your way home, do it quietly, safely, courteously and, and without any panic and again those uh, the sight of military personnel today should be a comfort to you the new jersey national guard is out there to help with transportation and emergency services eric are we going to go at 11 o'clock are we going to switch to uh, ap 
Uh, we'll we'll do uh, we'll pick it up here on our on our own, Dennis. All right, I hate to do this all on the fly, but uh, things are happening so fast. New Jersey 101.5. The time right now is 12 noon. From New Jersey's most listened to station, New Jersey 101.5 Radio News starts now. Worse than Pearl Harbor, the words of Lou Eisenberg, head of the Port Authority, as New York, New Jersey, and the world digest the magnitude of the destruction brought by those seeking to bring America to its knees. More resources of the federal government are go to help the victims and their families and to, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. President Bush leaving no doubt this was an act of terror. In the West Bank, thousands of Palestinians are dancing in the streets, celebrating with chants of God is great. Not confirmed, but Palestine and terrorist Osama bin Laden are prime suspects. After each tower of the World Trade Center took a direct hit from a passenger jet, they collapsed a short time later in a massive cloud of smoke and debris. The second plane to hit the World Trade Center may have flown out of Newark, according to an official from the U.S. State Department speaking on condition of anonymity. Asked if there was any possibility the crashes were anything other than deliberate, the official said it appeared not to be an accident. Evacuations continue up and down the East Coast. New Jersey is mobilizing the state police. New Jersey is also mobilizing the National Guard to deal initially with rescue efforts, but eventually, possibly for security. In Manhattan, an AP correspondent reports the downtown area is being evacuated as well, wholesale, on foot and by car. There are literally, as I stand here on the sidewalk, thousands thousands of people, uh, some in shorts, some in business suits, some with briefcases, some with cell phones, walking north. It's like uh, picture a ball game or a rock concert letting out, but uh, picture the biggest stadium in your entire life. Because subway service has been completely suspended in New York and cabs are immobile in the horrendous traffic jam, people are simply walking their way out of what they perceive as danger. Where are they being taken? Well, by boat, many of them are being taken to Jersey City to the Liberty Science Center. New Jersey 101.5's Alan David Stein was there earlier today. He said the exodus will continue. Some of the wounded, we are told, are also being taken to the trauma centers in Newark. That is also where New Jersey 101.5's uh, David Mathau is. A truck driver in Hudson County watched all of this unfold. He was on the turnpike, had just made a delivery to the city of industry and watched in horror as the planes crashed into the World Trade Center, describing the second crash just before the tower fell. I just couldn't believe it myself. I just a big ball of fire that came out of it and that aircraft disappeared right into that building. Uh, it's horrendous. There were similar stories told hour after hour as this first happened sometime around 9 o'clock. Uh, we are told the president will be uh, briefing his staff again shortly. We may hear something more from him um, across the river in Philadelphia. Independence Hall, the Liberty Bell, other historical landmarks in Independence Park in Philadelphia have all been closed as a precaution. That according to the park spokesman. All airplane flights have been grounded in New Jersey and around the nation. Nothing is flying into or out of the U.S. Any flights that were due um, to arrive in the U.S. have been diverted now to Canada. Any planes that were on the ground are staying there. Any planes that were in the air were ordered to the ground. We were told eight planes, as many as eight planes, may have been hijacked this morning, including one, if not two, from Newark Airport. One flight uh, that, was, uh, that took off from Newark Airport crashed outside of Pittsburgh. There may be as many as two or three additional jetliners in the air. There have been unconfirmed reports flying from north to south now in New Jersey of at least one more passenger jet. A couple of eyewitnesses say they have seen though that plane uh, in the air. We're attempting to contact some folks over at Fort Dix and some of the air traffic control centers to see whether that is in fact a military plane or not. If you are traveling in northern New Jersey, um, it is virtually impossible to get around. Um, what, I, what, what do we got, Dennis? We have the guy who's at three blocks away from the World Trade Center. Is he back on, He's back back on, the line? on with us? So he may have something more to add to this. Stu, uh, you're three blocks away from the World Trade Center and still on the 21st floor of your building, correct? correct. What's going on at this moment? Uh, really nothing in terms of what's going on in the street. The police have cordoned off the area. I see the top of a police car over at Broadway in Fulton, which is one block east of the uh, Trade Center. And there are a few people on foot actually walking down the block toward the Trade Center. 
Um, I see now uh, in the distance some uh, people look like firemen walking in the street. What uh, about uh, all the dust, I guess, has settled and happened two hours ago? Uh, the not collapsed. really. The, there is still a considerable amount. I cannot see past... Uh, uh, there's a building, I guess, a half block from the Trade Center location. And you can't so see can past that. Barely see that, and nothing behind it. Uh, the smoke is still billowing up as far as I can see. Up, I'm, I'm craning my neck to look up in the sky, and it's, uh, it's up there, probably a good mile. All right, thank you, Stu. Thanks very much, and we'll keep in touch with you. Appreciate Some of the rescue officials were telling us, Dennis, that the death toll here is likely to be in the thousands. In fact, I think it was Stu earlier who said he saw bodies falling out of that tower right. um, as people attempted uh, attempted to get out. Now, there is another United Airlines uh, flight. I don't have a flight number yet, but United is now confirming that a second plane has crashed. We do not yet know the location. Because there are so many planes that are involved, as many as eight, we apologize if this is if this is confusing. Uh, no more so for us. Uh, but there were as many as eight planes that were hijacked um, this morning. Um, we have some numbers here from the airlines and also from the Red Cross. They will be passing along to you here shortly. I think you have the Red Cross number. I do have the Red uh, Cross Dennis. number. It's the American Red Cross uh, Family Inquiry Hotline. And the phone number to call is 215-299-0134. 215-299-0134. The American Cross Family Inquiry Hotline. So if you have questions about loved ones who are in Manhattan or around the area this morning, uh, give that number a call. That would be your best avenue. All right. If you had if you had relatives or loved ones on a United Airlines flight, particularly now this is United Airlines flight 93, the one that crashed uh, outside of Pittsburgh, um, that phone number is 1-800-932-8555. This is United Airlines 1-800-932-8555. Eight five, and again we. Is it eight five eight five or eight five five five? I'm sorry, eight five five five. Thanks, sir. Eighty five fifty five one eight hundred nine three two eighty five fifty five. Um, don't mean to be editing your your uh, numbers and words here, but it's, there's so much information coming at you at once, and I'm trying to uh, back you up on what you have. Um, oh, in Jersey City, uh, hospital officials in Jersey City, and we believe in Newark now uh, as well. Any doctors and nurses who work in any of those hospitals have been asked to report to duty. That is where a number of the casualties are being brought now is to, is to Jersey City and in, in, into Newark. So they are asking for medical staff and medical personnel um, to, uh, to please report. Um, that's it from the newsroom at this point. Uh, Dennis, we'll be back, um, I guess, inside of here 15 minutes now with, a, with another update. Thanks very much, Eric. It's uh, 12.08, and uh, of course... We've been on this since uh, it happened at uh, 8.47 this morning. Uh, I'm listening to Jim on the way in at 8.50. Uh, Eric broke in with a bulletin that a plane had struck uh, one of the towers of the World Trade Center. And then the conversation in the next few minutes switched over to talking about the incident. And then at the top of the news, um, calls were coming in of, from eyewitnesses who saw it. And around 9.05, we had an eyewitness on the air uh, talking about the, f the fire. He said, oh, my God, there's another plane just hit it. And we all thought it was a practical joke. And it turned out to be the, the opener of the nightmare that has unfolded for the last three, three hours and 20 minutes. Um, Mike in Trenton, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dennis. I I'm really, really mad. I, I just don't know how to explain what I feel, but... I'm really disappointed in the federal government. I mean, how I can understand the vulnerability in the towers getting hit. Nobody could figure that. But how does the Pentagon get hit? That that's amazing. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I thought there was a 40 mile flight radius around that place. I, I I mean, I fly for a hobby, and I've been chased away from McGuire. How do, how does a plane get even close? Well, here's the, the center. Here's the dilemma, Mike. 
You have people, presumably, who hijack the plane, who don't care about their life and certainly no one else's. They hijack, if they come in <clears throat> on their own plane, they're going to get shot down. And whether it's two guys in a plane, they don't care, they're going to shoot them down. You have a commercial airliner that's been hijacked with, say, 150, 200 people on board, mothers, fathers, children. I understand. You're not going to shoot that out of the sky. So the Pentagon or the military is faced with a dilemma, do we kill 200 people? Uh, when this may resolve itself, you don't know that it's finally going to impact on the uh, Pentagon. I, I, I thought about that too, but I mean, so many we gotta, scenarios. We got to start thinking <clears throat> a little more defensively and, and less well, offensively. Well, Mike, today, September September 11th, 2001, is a day that has changed all of our lives and will change all of our lives for another lifetime or two to come in the way we think, in the way we. we uh, conduct our lives every day and certainly in the security of where we go. Mike, thanks very much for the call. Um, when I heard the first one, I thought, well, you know, some we had the nut from France uh, try to jump into the uh, Statue of Liberty about a month ago. Uh, got caught up in his parachute and I thought, well, it was something like that where some errant small plane hit the building. Then when I heard about the other one and there was talks of terrorism then we all knew, I think, that it's it's something much more serious that we're going to have to watch over the next day, two, three, or maybe even two or three weeks to figure out exactly what's going on. I hope our government uh, keeps cool and cooler heads will prevail and not start something that we all can't get out of. Uh, let's pray, and if you believe in God, pray today that uh, our government acts responsibly and not retaliation first, but in uh, recovery and healing and figure out how to keep any more of this from happening. I'm not sure sending bombs over to some desolate, uh, uh, deserted desert area is the right answer or to bomb an entire country. Uh, but basically to find out who and why and what is it that they want. Kevin in um, Egg Harbor Township, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Uh, I just want the listeners to know that uh, the Air National Guard base uh, here in uh, Egg Harbor Township, there are military aircraft taken off from here. Okay. And we had a report a few minutes ago from another guy that said it looked military to him. Because we've had a couple of callers saying they saw jets still in the air. <clears throat> now, all, all commercial airliners and, and private uh, planes have been grounded, but military, of course, you will see them in the sky today. Right. Well, they have scrambled the Air National Guard out of Egg Harbor Township because they're in the air. All right, very good. Kevin, thanks for the info. Okay, good. I appreciate it. Um, we're going to rejoin AP and find out the latest there and see if there's been any word from... Um, from the government whatsoever. 12-12 on New Jersey 101.5 and uh, back to the Associated Press. The president to ensure that the full resources of the United States government are brought to bear to protect the American people and to punish the perpetrators of these unconscionable acts. May God bless America. And just quickly before I go back to Aaron Brown in New York, hospitals in Washington uh, dealing with the casualties from the Pentagon Washington Hospital Center, 29 patients, uh, a blood shortage we are being told in Washington. So any of you who are able to get to a hospital anywhere in the Washington area, it is very possible that there is a need for blood to be donated. So we will just put that information. Los Angeles International Airport, LAX, has been evacuated again. This is another one of those multi-terminal airports. It's an enormous airport, and that that is being evacuated, at least one of the flights, and perhaps two, if memory serves me, uh, that has gone down today was headed towards Los Angeles, one towards San Francisco. We also have a report that Disney World in Orlando uh, has been evacuated. Um, someone said to me a moment ago, before the day is over, everything's going to be shut down. And that's seems to, to be where we're headed. Uh, CNN's Richard Ross, on the, uh, Richard Roth, rather, is on the streets of New York, and yes. he can join us now. Richard, what can you tell us? Aaron, New Yorkers think they've seen everything, but uh, they'll never, they'll say they, they're amazed at what has happened. Stunned. Right now behind me, what normally would be the World Trade Center, is no more. A huge cloud of white smoke. And right now it's like a war zone. Thousands of New Yorkers streaming north. The mayor of New York City, Rudy Giuliani, has told everyone to get north of Canal Street. We're several miles north of it. Uh, right now, New Yorkers are trying to get out of Manhattan. There's a ferry on the west side going to New Jersey. It's really the only access out. The mayor advising uh, that people should take the subways. We have seen dozens of emergency vehicles, hundreds, firemen being bussed in, decam decontamination vans coming in, call for blood donations. The New Yorkers, their faces, their expressions, stunned, amazed right now. With us, several of those people who witnessed some of the carnage today. Tell us what you saw when you exited the subway station due to a lack of smoke. Eileen. 
Um, it was very smoky, and then we exited on Church Street out of the Path train station. Um, I crossed over to Church and uh, Fulton, and I was trying to get a cell phone. I was trying to get up the block, and I turned around and saw this tremendous fire. I actually thought it was a bomb. I couldn't see a plane, and I saw people jumping out of off the building. Many, many people just jumping. And in a panic, I had my bag and my cell phone and everything, and I was trying to find a phone because the cell phone wasn't working. Everybody was screaming. Everybody was running. The cops were trying to maintain the calm. And in that haste, people were stampeding. People started screaming that there was another plane coming. I didn't see the plane, but I turned around, and it just the second building just exploded. And again, all the debris was flying towards us. There was a woman on the ground with her baby. People were stampeding the baby. Myself and another man threw ourselves over the baby and pushed into the building. I got up and I just ran. I ran towards City Hall and then I said, oh God, why am I running there? And then I started to run towards the water. And then uh, I was by probably Spring Street or, or, or uh, I'm sorry, Prince Street. I was at a payphone and I heard the rumbling. I thought it was another bomb. I thought it was another building close to me. And then I just uh, ran from the payphone. The man is grabbing me back, telling me to stay here. You're safe. I was like, no way. I'm getting out of here. Go north. And then I ran into a shoe store because I wanted to call my husband. That's all I wanted to do was let him know I was alive because he knew I was in the world trade. And um, I got my office and they connected me to my husband. And then we heard the second fall of the World Trade Center. And I, I'm astonished by the bombing. I just want to make a statement that these New York policemen and firemen, God bless them, they kept us calm. They tried so hard to keep us moving north. And it was just absolute, absolute horror. It was horror. And when you look back there at what would be the no World it's Trade Center? devastating. I can't even look back. My six-year-old just last week asked my husband and I to take him to the observation deck. And it's gone. And you know what? Americans will persevere. And I don't think that we'll stoop to the level of these zealot terrorist pigs and we won't kill children I hope and mothers but you know what whatever we have to do to eradicate the country or the world of this of this vermin I just hope Bush will do whatever is necessary to get rid of them and I don't know what the root or what the what the uh, answer is. All right thank you very much a lot of other New Yorkers here uh, continuing the evacuation from lower Manhattan back to you Aaron. Uh, thank you, Richard, very much. Uh, we told you a bit ago that the border, the U.S.-Mexican border, was at a high state of alert, had been essentially closed down, shut down. We're now told that the U.S.-Canada border is also in a high state of alert. So essentially what officials are trying to do is seal off the country. So if anyone is either trying to get in or get out, uh, it's going to be a whole lot harder to do that. Uh, but what is possible and what is imaginable, I guess, changes some on a day like this. Jerry Howers, the former head of FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency here in New York, and he joins us. Um, as you look out, what do you see? Well, this is uh, absolutely devastating. Uh, an incident like this will, uh, will uh, tax every bit of resource in New York City, um, uh, particularly since so many of the uh, police officers and fire uh, firefighters on the scene were uh, injured. Um, let me let me let me stop you for a second. I want to talk specifically about what you suspect is happening, but I want to go to LA first. Frank Buckley is in Los Angeles with us. Frank, what can you tell us about what's going on there? Aaron, we just saw what appeared to be uh, the worst possible situation. The, the last thing that we want to show you, in fact, people arriving here at the airport, appear, apparently friends or family members of some of the uh, victims of at least one of the flights. Three flights were bound for Los Angeles, and uh, they are not arriving here, obviously. Now friends and family are beginning, beginning to trickle in. We haven't seen any until this moment, two people just arriving here at the airport. We can tell you that just within the last uh, 15 15 minutes also uh, this terminal has they have begun a process of evacuating this terminal and in fact all of uh, Los Angeles uh, Airport is being evacuated now we are told by uh, airport police who we just uh, spoke to uh, just a few minutes ago I'd like to, to let you hear from Lieutenant Howard Whitehead of the Los Angeles Airport Police all right we are breaking uh, again from AP this is New Jersey 101.5 and Dennis Malloy it's 1219 if we have our traffic service and Jay Trelee 
Police uh, standing by. Jay, are you there? Thank you, Dennis. I am. Uh, we have gotten word that Amtrak has suspended Northeast Corridor service. Also, uh, the New Jersey Turnpike has been shut down between Interchange 11 and 18. And, of course, the Hudson River crossings heading into and out of New Jersey have been shut down as well. And we do have some word here from uh, New Jersey Transit, apparently. And let me just uh, get this here. All rail service on New Jersey Transit has now been suspended both ways on the Northeast Corridor, the North Jersey Coastline, and the Raritan Valley Line until further notice. And uh, we are hearing that bus service as well into and out of the city, obviously, has been suspended. So that is the situation. That is all we know at this point. And I pass it on to you, Dennis. I'm Jay Trelease with New Jersey Fast Traffic. Thanks very much, Jay. It's uh, 1220 uh, to our... A listener who is in uh, stranded or voluntarily staying in a building, an office building three blocks from the World Trade Center towers where they used to stand. Stu, uh, hi, and thanks for calling back. Yes, hi, Dennis. Uh, well, I guess the word now is stranded because after hearing fast traffic, there's no way I can get home. Uh, if, if the, the, what we've got from uh, other news sources that we have, Alan David Stein is at the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City, and he says that the ferries and police boats are being used to take people across the river to the Jersey side. And where do they go from there? That's the problem with the turnpike closed down and all the, uh, the <laughs> trains and buses. Yeah. What's got to happen from that point is temporary uh, shelters will be set up and transportation, I would imagine, they want to clear the area as much as possible from New York City. So to imagine with the New Jersey National Guard and the state police being fully activated, uh, use every mode of transportation they can and those personnel to evacuate people from the Jersey City sites. Yeah, well, right now there's no way we could leave because the wind has shifted. And uh, from what I understand from people on a lower floor, and there are only two or three floors occupied here uh, right now, uh, there are about two or three inches of debris, broken glass, et cetera, on the street. And if you don't have a mask, uh, you're going to get very sick very quickly mm. walking through the streets because you can't really breathe. I mean, I, I'm looking down into the street now and there's like a, a haze down uh, in the lower levels. Now, Stu, uh, how many people are in your building? We've got, well, uh, on this floor, we probably started out with about 40 people. There are about a dozen of us left. How about the other floors? Uh, I understand there may be only two other floors occupied now. Uh, some uh, emergency uh, uh, crew members came up here and were asking if we were all right, if we had enough water. Right. Uh, one of the gentlemen uh, can, has a hard time walking, so they brought up a, a wheelchair, you know, just in case uh, there is a time when we can leave. You have air conditioning and power and phone, right? Air conditioning, power, phone. Yeah, I was having trouble getting 609 area codes for a good while to get in touch with my wife and my son. Uh, I was able to get in touch with my wife. Uh, do they hear you on the air here? Uh, well, I, in fact, uh, a friend of ours was listening and also contacted my wife That's and uh, let her know. All right. Uh, Stu, so do your plan right now, I guess, is minute to minute until you're forced out of that building until by... Until uh, forced out of the building and until we see that the wind has shifted away and uh, the air is about as clear as we can get it so that I can walk up north and then circle around uh, toward the west. Uh, well, hang in there. I, I would imagine <clears throat> you've weathered most of the storm, and uh, as soon as oh, I, things clear, you'll be able to get out of there safely. I can tell you the debris, the smoke is now moving downward and more over to the, to the east because whereas I saw buildings on Broadway before, now they're totally obliterated by uh, the smoke. Well, it could be from the firefighters' efforts putting out the fire. Did that or the, or the wind shifted, yeah. Uh, we're supposed to get a north-northwest wind today. I don't know how that affects you and where you sit. Well, north, north, that would make pretty much sense because the the smoke was blowing into the south southeast. Now, uh, Stu, is your building, thirty story building, usually fully occupied? Usually fully occupied. Uh, what are, kind of what kind of business, just out of curiosity, are you in? Uh, well, uh, I work for the New York State Comptroller's Office. Uh, we have the entire floor here. There are other floors that have uh, other businesses, and the New York State Department of State has a couple of floors here. Mm. Stu, thanks very much, and uh, like I said, stay put and, you know, hold your ground there, and I think you'll be out of there safely within a few hours. Okay. All right, thanks again, Stu. We'll look to, forward to hearing from you again. Uh, that's uh, one of our listeners who's uh, in an office building three blocks from where the World Trade Center uh, tower stood. It's 1223. I'm Dennis Malloy, and Bob Williams has joined us uh, from New Jersey Traffic North. Bob. And a couple of uh, additions to the transportation lockdown in the north part of the state. Looks like the interstate's Route 80 is now closed going eastbound at the park. Way, and that makes sense so that people can't go into the turnpike 
or the George Washington Bridge with just an extension of that lockdown. And Route 78 is now going to be closed eastbound at the airport. And it looks like that eastern spur, like I mentioned last time, the eastern spur of the pike is closed. You can't go north of 14. It looks like you may be shunted up the western spur to just get you out of there. But there, it looks like the eastbound roadways are closed. It looks like they're keeping the south and west roads open so that people can get out of the yeah. area. We got a report from uh, Jay Trelease just about yeah. five minutes ago that uh, 11 to 18 is closed. Yeah, Northern that's Northern? that's what I'm hearing okay. as well. Right. And, uh, you know, these things are changing so quickly, Dennis. Right. Um, and uh, New Jersey Transit, of course, the Northeast Corridor and Amtrak, they share tracks. They're not running into and out of New York City, which basically is, in, is the cutoff point for the Northeast Corridor. So you're stuck in New Jersey somewhere on Amtrak and New Jersey Transit, or you're stuck north of New York City. Right. And I would um, imagine they'll, they'll take those trains back to the, where they came from. Yes, probably. Yeah. They'll probably turn them around. And we're, we're, we're trying to find out if anybody is trapped on any of these, you know, path trains that were in transit, you know, at the time of the incident. We haven't heard anything. If anybody out there, you know, can enlighten us on that, but we're this, trying to find out. This will be days maybe yeah. weeks before things get back to you know, some, right. some semblance of normalcy, not even right in lower Manhattan, but all around the, uh, right. the tri-state area. But the lockdown is getting bigger. All right. Thanks, okay. Bob. Appreciate it. Uh, we have somebody on uh, line one, Dan and Edison. You're on New Jersey 101.5. Dan, what do you see? My God, I was just coming over the bridge over there on the parkway over in Edison. Mm -hmm. The smoke that is still billowing out of the Isle of Manhattan, you can see it for 15, 20 miles long. This is the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. And, and you, you imagine both of those towers, 110 oh. stories each, with all of the equipment and all of the fuel and all of uh, the chemicals and, uh, and all of the building materials in there. When both of those explode and both of those go down to the ground, you're going to have yourself uh, a fire and chemical uh, disaster, the likes of which you've never seen and, and will take days to, to untangle. So you're going to see scenes like that for quite a while coming out of Lower Manhattan, I, I'd imagine. It's a horrible thing what happened today. I, I, my heart goes out to anybody's family that was up there today. I, I just feel so... I, I can't even describe my emotion. It, it has been so shocked. Yeah. And Dan, thanks very much for the call. Um, like I said before, in my lifetime, I'm 43 years old, I've never seen anything like this. And a lot of us watched the, the war, uh, the Gulf War on TV and saw isolated incidences of, of bombings in, in a country halfway around the world. When something like this happens in your own backyard, uh, it's very unusual. And again, the New Jersey State Police and the New Jersey National Guard are uh, out in force helping with transportation, traffic, and emergency services. So if you see people in military uniforms, uh, those are American service personnel helping you get home and helping you stay out of areas where only emergency personnel are uh, allowed. So if you see uniforms today, it's a good sight uh, to know that they're, they're out helping and doing what they can. Uh, Beryl in uh, Belmar, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Beryl. Hi, Dennis. Actually, I'm on the parkway heading towards the Raritan Tolls. I'm on my way to work. Um, the gentleman who called before who was angry about the Pentagon being hit. Yeah. Unfortunately, National Airport is less than 10 miles from the Pentagon where 395, 95 and Route 1 all kind of converge. Right. Uh, if you see a, a passenger jet come flying in, you don't think that the passenger jet is going to be the one that's going to crash into the Pentagon. And evidently that's what happened. Short of blowing it out of the sky... What do you do? Nothing they could have done. You, again, you, ha you had the dilemma of killing 170 or 200 innocent people on board a commercial airliner or letting uh, things unfold and see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, these people, these people who've done this today are good at what they do. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't think at that point in time the full realization of what was going on had clued everybody in that, you know, this is a possibility. I think at that point in time they were still like... Everybody was still in shock about the, the Trade Center, and when it hit in the, at the Pentagon, it just, like, woke everybody up. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, Beryl, thanks for the call. When they uh, had the, the bombing in 93 of the World Trade Center in the garage, and it didn't come down, and they uh, found the people and prosecuted them, um, that seemed bad and strange and crazy and, and bizarre and horrific enough, but this this is beyond... Uh, a TV or uh, film producer's wildest imagination. The sights we're seeing on today's television. Again, my opinion only. Keep your kids from watching TV or listening to the radio when they get home today. Give them the information as you see fit. A lot of the information we're getting is raw. 
to an 8-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old mind. It can be very intimidating and scary. Don't let them watch TV and radio, in my opinion. Linda at White House Station, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Linda, thanks. Hi, Dennis. Hi. I, I totally share that opinion. I'm, I'm on my way home. I was up in Livingston, and I'm coming west on 78, and I just passed a few minutes ago. All I can think of to call it is a convoy of ambulances from all towns in western Jersey. There were probably 12 of them, and there was a state police vehicle in front of them, and they were booking it down East 78 with all their lights and sirens headed to New York. It was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. Yeah, how many, how many in the convoy? There were probably 12. They were from White House and Clinton and Tewksbury and Lebanon, every town to the west. Well, imagine with, with 50,000 people working in those two buildings. Oh, I'm sure. The, the amount of injuries. The they can get. Yeah, and all the hospitals uh, on this side have been uh, put on. The the, uh, the emergency personnel, may it may spread further south as to who's needed and how many people will be called in. But it was the strangest thing, and it's weird because on westbound 78, as I'm heading home now, I've seen about 10 yellow city taxi cabs. Yeah. Which you never see. I'm, you're not familiar with the area, but right. on rural 78, you don't see a yellow cab with that little light on the top. Yeah. And I don't. I guess they're all coming from Jersey City and Hoboken. You know, be, I don't know. People must be stranded, and this is how they're getting home. But you never see those cars out here. All right, thank you, Linda. I appreciate the call. Um, oh, we got Mike in South River City. Saw a couple of fighter planes a minute ago. Hi, Mike. Yeah, how you doing? Good. Um, yeah, I guess what makes it so, I guess what they're saying is surreal or down to earth here is I, I thought there were a plane out there. So I walked outside and I saw about two or three must be their fighter jets that they have up there yeah. flying by the noise and stuff. And it just like brings it down and I can hear them coming now again. Um, and they're, I guess they must just be patrolling it. But, you know, you hear a lot of sirens in the town stuff. It's just like everybody's going crazy. But that what really makes it come down to earth when you see those planes flying above. Well, uh, take, take, yeah, at this hour, three hours after all this started, take comfort in knowing that they're out there making sure nothing else gets in. Yeah, and like I'm sure a lot of people said, they, they got to do something about this. And they can't just sit back. They got to get after these people and, you know, do something about this. Well, but Mike, you, you, th you think about, well, we got to get after these people and do something. Okay, tit for tat they bomb us they kill a bunch of our people now what do we do if we if if we find out specifically who's responsible then what do we do and then what do they do on top of that yeah it's, a, it's never ending it just keeps on going on and yeah. on mike thanks for the call to new jersey 101.5 i'm no international diplomat but if we strike them uh, i would imagine some other strike is going to come back and you can see how vulnerable we are and how invulnerable we thought we were and uh to, to have this escalate into one country if we bomb some group of people who happen to be related to another country that, that has nuclear weapons you don't want to think about the possibilities so george w bush has his work cut out for him and, and as does the state department and the uh, joint chiefs of staff whoever remains uh, after all the, the pentagon was bombed this morning and uh, they have to carefully think out what the next step is and we have had no official word from washington i thought by noon we would hear something but I can imagine it won't be till dinner time tonight before we get some official word. This is an entire day. I'm watching scenes on television now of cars driving through what appears to be about an inch of powder on the ground, almost like snow on a light dusting of snow, and that's debris and powder. And it looks to be somewhere outside New York City or Washington, D.C. Uh, we'll head back to the AP in just a minute. It's 1233 when I head back to a New Jersey fast traffic and find out what the latest is on the roadways. New Jersey fast traffic. Well, the New Jersey Turnpike northbound side is now closed at Interchange 11 in uh, Woodbridge and northbound uh, 95 uh, closed and eastbound Newark Bay Extension uh, closed off as well. So uh, this uh, situation continues and uh, not a good idea to be going anywhere towards uh, New York City. Meanwhile, the traffic along the Garden State Parkway running without uh, any uh, major problems. No reported delays getting uh, through the tolls on the traffic along 287 with uh, no reported problems or obstructions right now. 35 still have construction work heading through Bayhead and 33 in Howell as well. Across the Hudson, of course, Everything closed off. Holland, Lincoln Tunnel, George Washington Bridge, Staten Island Bridge is affected as well. And uh, New Jersey Transit, all bus service in and out of New York City suspended till further notice. And all eastbound rail service in the Newark, Hoboken, and New York City also suspended. Jersey Transit rail service on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, and Raritan Valley lines also out of service. And continuing, uh, no service at any of the area airports. And uh, this uh, report is sponsored by your Quality Plus Ford dealers. It's the Ford factory authorized clearance, and that means great savings on the new two. 
2002 Explorer. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers. Next report at 1248 on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. Thanks very much, Tom. It's at 12.34. I'm Dennis Malloy. We're continuing our coverage here at New Jersey 101.5 of the uh, the bombing this morning. Uh, the bombings, that is, and the uh, terrorist attack. Uh, we'll t- continue to take your phone calls and then return to the AP uh, radio news to find out any of the latest on the national scene. Alan, Surf City, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Al. Hey, Dennis. How you doing? Um, I just had a comment um, one of your past... Uh, reports from the AP Newswire. They said that the Palestinians are one of the factors of the Palestinians were taking credit for this. Well, they okay. showed it on TV in, uh, in, in that area of the world, if you want to call it Palestine, uh, and they were Palestinians dancing in the streets saying, God is great. Right. Um, with what you were just saying with the past few callers, uh, I totally agree with you. I don't think we should go like tit for tat and... Uh, you know, like, just because they did this, we should go out there and bomb them or whatever. But uh, what do we do? You know, I mean, yeah. if you look at this from the point of view of uh, well, everybody's talking about Pearl Harbor, yeah. that was a terrorist attack. And we went right out and, you know, got rid of a couple of towns out there. Well, it was the nation of Japan. And what do you get rid of in, in what is what they call Palestine? Uh, what do you get rid of there? Who do you attack? Well, uh, now the, these pe- these people are just anybody. I mean, yeah. knowing about this Bin Laden guy. Right. I mean, where, where do you think this is coming from? This has got to be. I mean, the, eight years ago they tried to do this and it didn't work. So now they tried it from the sky down. I mean, this is like a, a holy war that these people are waging against this country. No, why? And and most of the people who work in those twin towers, the fifty thousand right, people, that, that, don't even right. have it's don't it's even it's have it's an it's opinion. It's they don't right. even have an opinion exactly. on the Israeli exactly. Palestinian situation. That rent space. These people come yeah. over here. They think they know what they think they know, and they know nothing. Yeah. All of, all of those companies in there, they're all private companies that rent space from the New York, New Jersey Port Authority. Yeah. Everything from the hotel on the ground. All I'd like the way. to I'd like to sit down. With some of these idiots and say, listen, you may be all caught up in your religious holy war and that you hate whoever you hate, but most of the people that you're, you're dancing and singing about killing don't even have an opinion and, uh, about what you're talking about. And it's just so ridiculous and, and, and infuriating that it's, it, I don't even go in that direction and still try to sift out the information we have. Al, I'd love to continue to talk about this, but I'm going to blow my stack. Thanks for the call to New Jersey 101.5. That report really bothered me. It's 1236. Uh, Bob Williams is back from New Jersey Traffic North. Bob, what's and up? And we're uh, trying to coordinate the information between traffic north and south. The phone lines are not as uh, not working this afternoon. Afternoon. Um, a couple of South Jersey updates for you. Patco extra service is running on the Patco system. SEPTA, the regional rails in and around uh, Burlington, Mercer County. There is no train service on SEPTA, but buses are running on the regional rails. Bus service running on SEPTA. Amtrak, as you heard, the entire Northeast Corridor is suspended now. Washington to Boston. And uh, one would assume that uh, wherever the trains have stopped, that's where they're going to be. And uh, just to recap uh, this uh, area that they're trying to lock down, it appears that with all the interstates being closed, eastbound 78, Route 80. It looks like they're trying to keep everybody out of that uh, loop of 287. Now, the inner loop of 287 towards New York City, northeastern New Jersey, it looks like that is the area that they're trying to evacuate. Now, and uh, it seems like people are trying to go south and west. They're trying to keep people to get out of the area, but they're trying to keep people uh, from going into the area. I would imagine, Bob, that for whatever reason, terrorist attack or a hurricane or some devastation of some kind, that they must have an emergency evacuation plan, and that's what they're implementing now. Yes, of some sort. I'm sure we haven't had to use it for, uh, for at least a couple of years since yeah. uh, Hurricane Floyd, and then before that, how many years before that? But, uh, but I know there's ongoing there is a re- There yeah. is a regional transportation evacuation disaster plan, and it appears that this is what's going on, because we're getting closures, Dennis, as far north as Bear Mountain, New York. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the bridges Bridges out of New York City are closed um, as far north as Connecticut and Bridge um, uh, Bear Mountain up in the Catskills. Those bridges are being closed, so uh, th- there is no uh, precaution not being taken at this hour. And again, you've had no word on the Delaware Memorial. No, no I just spoke with the. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned okay. that uh, Delaware Bridge. They're open. Uh, the Philly bridges are still open. Commodore Barry, Walt Whitman, Walt Whitman ben, ben Franklin. Franklin those Betsy authorities Ross, surprisingly Coney, still open. Still open. Uh, okay. But uh, of course, Center City, Philly, and all the uh, federal buildings in Philadelphia. That area is open. Closed and down. It, it was a while ago, but the Philadelphia closed all school public, systems, uh, yeah, public and parochial schools closed in Philadelphia at noon. I have had no word from New Jersey public no. schools whatsoever. I'll go check on that for you. All right, Bob, I appreciate it. Uh, Mark in Southampton, you're on New Jersey 101.5 before we head back to the AP. Hi, Mark. 
Hey, Dennis, how you doing? Good. Am I to understand that we should not retaliate? Is that what you're saying? Well, I, I'm t I'm saying that whatever we do, we do it cautiously and carefully as to not escalate into World War III. Because in the year 2001, the technology is there to press a few buttons and we're all gone. And not all rational parties have those buttons. We have some mavericks out there who may have the bomb as well. So whatever we do, uh, we don't want to bring more terror upon ourselves by doing something rash and, and quick. And again, who do you attack? When you got hit by uh, in Pearl Harbor, you went right after the Japanese because you know where the planes came from. Who the hell did this, Mark? Well, Bin Laden uh, accepting the blame for it, so we go after him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know what? We, well, we we got to find a find out where he is and and maybe employ the mafia because you got one guy who testifies against a mafia, a Don, and you have uh, personalized protection for him for the rest of his life. Uh, the government hasn't seemed to be able to catch up with this Bin Laden. Maybe put a couple of uh, mob guys on his tail and, and knock him off. And if that's the source of it, great. But I don't know what country you bomb or what nation you blame. These people are all intertwined somewhere in the middle of the Middle East. So there's no no clear defined target like there was in Japan. And most of these bombers were living in this country. So mm. now is the time to get them out of this country. Screw immigration. Yeah, all right, Mark, thanks. Listen, there's going to be a lot of that feeling all day, all week, all month. Um, and at this point, so early in the game, I want to focus on what you saw, what's happening where you are, and what's being affected where you are. Uh, Bush is coming on soon. All right, we'll switch to the AP. It's 1240. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5. And now back to the uh, new Associated Press Radio News. ...view that he believes that it's only the bin Laden organization that is capable of carrying out attacks this coordinated and on this massive a scale. What are you basing your information on? Well, keep in mind, there there are nations that uh, that also could carry out these attacks, but they, I don't think, would dare do that, knowing that uh, their signature is going to be figured out. We're going to find out who did this, then we're going after the bastards. It's that simple. And, and uh, I, I just have to say that uh, both the FBI and our intelligence community believe that this is a bin Laden signature. And uh, and I believe it is. I, I was the first to point out bin Laden to the uh, Clinton administration and said they're going to kill Americans and we've got to get on top of that. And I think we're well, going to have to get on top of it because this uh, this is a cowardly bunch that will stop at nothing to, uh, like you say, uh, have a jihad. But, but Senator McCain, I mean, there will be those who are saying the United States was taking all reasonable precautions. We had security at airports, metal detectors, uh -huh. and so forth and so on. How much more is going to have to be done to prevent something like these things from happening again? Judy, I don't think our lifestyles will be the same for a long time uh, for, uh, since uh, it was before these attacks as far as uh, use of transportation, particularly airports, are concerned. Uh, you know, there have been warnings about uh, whether our security was good enough and, and whether the proper measures were being taken. I'm sure that will all be uh, reviewed. Um, by the way, I have no information as to who... Uh, who caused this, um, and I hesitate to speculate, but I am confident that the President of the United States will lead us, and, the, and we will find out who has carried out these acts. And I think it's a little premature to, uh, to, to deter make that determination until we have the hard facts, but I'm sure that we'll get them. The other aspect of this is that uh, it may highlight over time the need for more human intelligence. We have very good technical intelligence capabilities, satellites, etc. But we, oh, for many years, we haven't had the kind of human intelligence which determines motivations before actions are taken. I'm gonna. I'm going to interrupt you, Senator McCain. These are the first pictures we have in. Uh, this is from Somerset County, Pennsylvania. This is where the United Airlines flight, I believe it is 176, went down. I'm sorry, I, I'm correcting. United Airlines 93. This was a Boeing 757 bound from Newark, New Jersey to San Francisco. It crashed in Somerset County, Pennsylvania near the town of Shanksville. South of Pittsburgh, we're told about 80 miles outside of Pittsburgh in Run. western yeah. Pennsylvania. It is not known how many passengers or crew were on board, although initial reports indicated uh, no survivors. Again, these are the first pictures we have coming in from WTAJ there in the Pittsburgh 
area. United Airlines telling us earlier they had lost uh, they have lost this flight and they knew that it had crashed near Pittsburgh. There is a second United Airlines flight, the Boeing 767 flight 175 bound from Boston to Los Angeles has crashed. The airlines still telling us at this point that they do not know where. We don't have information on the number of people aboard. It is possible, it is possible but not confirmed that this would have been the second plane to hit the World Trade Center. Now again, two United Airlines flights and in addition to American Airlines flights, uh, the flight 11 from Boston to Los Angeles, this was a Boeing 767 with 81 passengers on board, nine crew members, two pilots. This is believed to be one of the planes that crashed into the World Trade Center. All four of these planes that we're describing to you now, these flights, all headed to California. The second American Airlines Flight 77, this is a Boeing 757, left Dulles Airport near Washington on its way to Los Angeles. It had 58 passengers on board, four crew, two pilots. This plane unaccounted for. However, a commercial jet was seen crashing into the Pentagon a few hours ago, and it is believed that this could have been the one, but again, not confirmed. So two commercial airliners, American Airliners, American Airlines, two United Airlines. And I would just add at this point, because to be reassuring to some extent to those of you who are watching, we've been reporting that all flights within the United States have been canceled. There's been a complete hold down on all commercial travel. However, there were planes that were already in the air when these terrible uh, incidents took place this morning. And as of a few moments ago, the Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA, was reporting that there were still 50 aircraft in the skies. Now, some of those may have landed in the last few minutes, but that was the information as of a few minutes ago. All of them were said to be within 50 or so miles of their destination. Now, I'm getting new information in my ear. Now reporting uh, our, our congressional correspondent Kate Snow. You're looking at a picture of the Pentagon Live. There's still smoke billowing out of our military command center in the United States. As we look at these pictures, I'm going to turn it over right now to our congressional correspondent Kate Snow, who has with her two members of Congress. Kate? Judy, it's been a bit difficult to get in touch with members of Congress. Uh, as we've been reporting, the Capitol has been shut down. You can see it behind me here. You can see that everything's fine there, but it is in a state of lockdown. They've evacuated the Capitol. Joining me here on the roof of a church, I might add, we've managed to get up on the roof here to get a vantage point, is Congressman Kurt Weldon, a Republican from Pennsylvania, around the Philadelphia area, not exactly where that video that we just saw, the other, uh, the other end of the state. The closest military base to Florida, where you would have the full command center and the strategic nuclear capabilities of the United States. And I don't mean to raise the nuclear issues, but what you have at Barksdale is all of the communications that would support links to every aspect of the U.S. national security complex. Uh, Bill, uh, you, you, you mentioned, of course, the, the ultimate here. And uh, in, uh, in trying to get to this studio, uh, I uh, encountered several people uh, who were expressing our FBI and our CAA are there to intercept raw data. This is a massive operation, and it's a failure that was caused by a lack of resources and by a complacency that set in America over the past 10 years. A complacency that convinced all of us that with the demise of the Soviet Union, there were no more threats. It's a tragedy that it took the loss of thousands of lives to wake this country up and realize that our number one responsibility is not education, and I'm a teacher, and it's not health care, I'm married to a nurse. It is, in fact, the security and the safety of the American people. And today, our government failed the American people. Congressman Schrock, how much information have you as a member of Congress been able to get? I know that the members have been milling around here trying to get yeah. information. Have you been able to get information? Uh, not a whole. Well, we just lost our audio feed to the AP. Uh, we'll try to pick it up uh, in a couple of minutes. It's uh, 1248. We're going to switch to uh, New Jersey fast traffic and get an update on the situation on the roadways uh, around uh, New York City and throughout New Jersey. New Jersey fast traffic. 
All right, the way it looks right now, Dennis, we do have uh, no service on Amtrak on the Northeast Carter. Jersey Transit, pretty much the same deal. They're knocked down on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Raritan Valley line also affected. And we have uh, just uh, bus service of uh, Alcepta with no regional rail service. They are providing bus service. Patco running with some extra service. And, again, the airports remain uh, closed off. Jersey Turnpike, they've shut it down now on the northbound side from about Interchange 11 and heading on up. They've been diverting people away from the uh, eastern spur. Looks like the western spur is the only thing that's getting through in that area. 78 East is also closed down by Newark Airport and Route 80 reported to be closed eastbound too right by the Garden State Parkway. All the Hudson River crossings remain closed off till further notice. That goes for travelers in both directions. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. Next reported 103 on New Jersey 101. New Jersey 101.5. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, it's 1249. We can go to the phones. 1-800-283-101.5. Tell us what you saw. Uh, if we can try to get that uh, Stu back on the line, or Stu, if you're listening from Lower Manhattan, uh, on the 21st floor of a 30-story building just three blocks from where the World Trade Center towers uh, stood earlier this morning, uh, that is our correspondent on the scene, a uh, listener named Stu, works for the, uh, I think it's the New York State Controller's Department. Uh, we'll hopefully be talking to him in a couple minutes to find out the latest right there at uh, Ground Zero what's happening. Carlos in Manahawkin, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Dennis. Uh, in case people don't realize uh, why this happened, is because we established a very dangerous president in 1982 when the Marine barracks in Beirut was bombed. 240 Marines died, and our only response was to park the New Jersey uh, battleship a few miles off the Beirut coast and bomb um, Shiite Muslim positions. If we do not respond on a massive scale this time, it is going to extend that president to the point where every single terrorist who ha has a gun and owns a half an ounce of C4 will come flocking to our shores. Oh. And as far as bombs... And the other alternative is to uh, escalate into World War III. So w w whichever path we take, it has to be taken with a lot of uh, patience and a lot of uh, thought and forethought uh, as to what our actions will bring. Look, look at New York. That's where our patience and our forethought in previous engagements and acts with terrorism, that's what it got us. Did we bomb a major city? No, but look what happened to our city. And let me tell you, the average 10-year-old Palestinian boy isn't playing softball or Little League. <clears throat> he is preparing, he's learning how to operate a Kalashnikov AK-47. He knows how to work with Semtex, C4, C3, and develop an intense hatred for this country. And everybody better wake up. We are at war, and we have not seen the end of it. Well, I, I hear that. Carlos, thanks very much for the call to New Jersey 101.5. Um, and I hesitate on saying things uh, like we are at war. I mean, it certainly looks like we are under attack from somebody, or were attacked this morning. Um, and we'll wait to see what uh, our government leaders need and want to do. Uh, Peter in New Brunswick, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Peter. Yeah, hi, Dan. I just want to warn the American people that this is, to have this kind of attitude towards Palestinian people and towards Muslims is, is, is not appropriate. It's incorrect. All right. That the, we, we cannot paint Palestinian people with one brush and say they're our enemy. Now, I'm Christian and I'm not Palestinian, but I, I hear people calling the radio station. I'm shocked. Uh, oh, don't be shocked, Peter. I haven't let on half the stuff that people want to say today. Uh, but we have to rem remember that, though. Yes, I when you but but listen, Peter. If you get a news report that they've seen this on television in Palestine and they're dancing in the streets saying God is great, what the bleep does that make you feel? Well, yes, Arafat pays people to do that. What he, he pays television. people to dance dance in front of TV cameras? Yes, he does. Okay. He's been doing it for many years, and whenever he has a rally, he pays the people. But we have to remember one thing that. Even though Yasser Arafat called and apologized to the American people for what happened and sent his condolences, he is the teacher of terrorism. He is the master. He taught the world terrorism for over 30 years. And what's happening today is textbook Czech Rivera, the urban guerrilla. They attack the communication systems. They attack our bridges and our roadways. They mm. shut everything down. They haven't attacked any bridges or roadways well, yet. We've I mean, got, mm. what they're causing is a total transportation and communication failure. They don't have the resources to, to overtake us. They, they have the resources, uh, apparently, and, and obviously, uh, to wreak havoc like they've done, but uh, there's no way they can swarm us. 
uh, like one might fear. Peter, thanks for the call. I got to move on. Uh, Bob Williams is here uh, from New Jersey Traffic North with some closings and cancellations for yeah, schools. Yeah, we've acted, activated what we call the winter weather alert, but we're using it for closings today. Here's what we have. We have about 20 uh, businesses and schools and things like that, so we'll run them down quickly, Dennis. Bridgewater Commons Mall is closed as of 12.15 this afternoon. The Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill was closed as of 1130 this morning. First Savings Bank at Woodbridge is closing at 3 o'clock. Georgian Court College classes are canceled after 2 p.m. Any classes at Georgian Court College are canceled after 2. Gibbs College evening classes are canceled today. Hamilton Township, the municipal building, the blood drive will be held on the second floor for the uh, relief effort between 4 and 7. That's Hamilton Township. Holy Angels School in Trenton. Back to school night has been canceled tonight. Night. Holy Angel School Trenton. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool is closing at 1 p.m. Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campuses, all classes are canceled tonight. Jersey City Public Schools will be closed tomorrow. The Lewis School in Princeton is closed tomorrow. Matter 1, Aberdeen Regional School District. All afternoon programs are canceled, but arrangements are being made for those who are still there. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools. Dismissal at 225 this afternoon. All after school activities have been canceled. It looks like uh, the North Plainfield Adult High School and Community School has canceled their day. North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Ocean County College closing at 1.30 this afternoon. Rutgers University in New Brunswick, Rutgers University in Newark, all classes have been canceled at this point. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, the uh, Superior Court afternoon sessions have been canceled for Mercer County. Ultrasound Diagnostic School day and evening classes are canceled. University Radiology Group, the Imaging Center is closed as of 2 p.m. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School District EDP is still open. And Wheelock and Company, they are closing at noon and no second shift this afternoon. And that's our list, and I'm sure it'll be uh, growing as the afternoon goes on, Dennis. Bob, thank you very much for doing that. Uh it's 12.55. We're going to have a news, Jersey, a news report from New Jersey 101.5 Radio News in about five minutes. Mike in West End, which is in Long Branch, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Uh, right, Mike? Yes, hi. hi. I just saw the state police bring down a boat, one of those uh, boats that they use to take uh, doctors to the New York hospitals, medical equipment, and the medical, uh, like, golf pads, that stuff, and doctors to New York to help with the... Uh, with the hospitals uh, and another thing i understand everybody's all upset and you, you have every right to be that way but i think what everybody should do is go to your local hardware store get an american flag and go outside and put it up let people know that um, we can't me and you personally can't go pick up a gun and go start shooting whoever whoever did this right. okay so if you want to go do something keep a level head go to get an american flag and put it up outside and let people know that you st still believe and stand up for your own country. All right. Good, good words, Mike. Thanks for the call to New Jersey 101.5. Um, Bob, on the parkway, is that what you're telling me? Bob, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Bob. How you doing? Good. Uh, I am. I'm watching the fire engines from as far south as Middletown Township heading north on the parkway. I just came out of Westchester County um, doing a job up there and... Uh, uh, I was there when the uh, uh, towers uh, were hit. Uh, it's, it's it's unbelievable the feelings that I have inside of me. Um, it's it's unbelievable, and to see the amount of uh, fire and rescue that are on their way to go help <laughs> New Jersey is unbelievable. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Appreciate the call, Michael in Freehold. You're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Michael. Hi, how you doing? Um, I just uh, left work about 20 minutes ago. I worked for AT&T in Dayton. They uh, issued a, uh, an email to everybody stating that they're closing all of their facilities in the country except for uh, non -essential, except for essential personnel. And as I was driving home, leaving Dayton on Route 130, I guess it was about 20, 25 minutes ago, I saw some military helicopters heading north, parallel to 130, about, uh, I guess, five miles uh, closer to the shore. Yeah, I, and, and what you'll see in the sky now, if you're normally in a flight path of a, a commercial airport, whether it be small or large, you, you, it's eerie to look up in the sky and see nothing all day long today. What you will see is occasionally fighter jets, uh, military helicopters, and these are the fighter jets, of course, patrolling and making sure nothing else is around, and of course the helicopters, I'd imagine, would be for transport and medical uh, personnel. 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I, I be comforted, but be comforted by whatever you see in the sky. I would think from this point on. I hope so. I hope that's what we're going to see. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Michael. And again, if you see military personnel on a highway, roadway, a town in your uh, street in your town, uh, they're there for transportation and uh, medical support and. Uh, uh, and help. So be comforted by that. And I know growing up in this country, not used to seeing military people on uh, public streets, but you'll probably see that today, uh, especially the closer you live to New York City. Be comforted by that sight. Mario in Seattle City, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Mario. How you doing, Dennis? Good. Well, after the events of today, I would like to wish my, or extend my condolences to all family and family members and victims of the World Trade Center. But the other thing, I just wanted everybody that can hear my voice. Whatever differences we've had as Americans, whatever it is, racial profiling, bigotry, we need to put that aside. We need to come together, one nation, under God. All right, thank you, Mario. Appreciate the call. It's in New Jersey, 101.5. Um, again, I have a phone number if you're concerned about loved ones uh, in New York City. Uh, the American Red Cross has set up a family inquiry hotline at 215-299-0134. That American Cross family inquiry hotline number is 215-299-0134. Um, United Airlines had a, a phone number set up for their uh, flight number 93 that left Newark this morning. It was reportedly crashed outside of Pittsburgh. Their number there to call is 1-800-923. I'm sorry, 932. 1-800-932-8555. 1-800-932-8555 for United Airlines flight 93 out of Newark this morning. New Jersey 101.5. The time is 1 o'clock. Attack on America. Now the latest from New Jersey 101.5 Radio News. And good afternoon, if in fact it is a good afternoon. An unprecedented terror attack in the history of America today. The World Trade Center in Manhattan has been brought down in a pair of terror attacks. Airliners crashing into the twin towers of the World Trade Center. They came down in a shower of rubble and smoke. Mark in South Amboy was in a Jersey City office building when the first of the planes hit. We heard the whump of the first hit. I turned around and said, what's that? Everybody told me, oh, it's air conditioning, nothing big. We look out the window and sure enough, there's billows of smoke pouring out of the Trade Center. Earlier this morning, New Jersey 101.5's David Mathau talked to eyewitnesses at a turnpike rest stop as they watched in horror as the World Trade Center collapsed. And it's over. It's the apocalypse, baby, man. It's very nerve-wracking. There goes the fucking tower. Excuse my language. There go oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Today's New York City attacks just part of the story. Hijacked planes are apparently involved in at least some of today's disasters. One plane crashed into the Pentagon. Federal buildings in Washington are also being shut down. American Airlines says it has lost two aircraft in what it calls tragic incidents. American says one of the planes involved Flight 11, a Boeing 767 from Boston to Los Angeles. The airline says that plane is one of the ones that crashed into the World Trade Center. Meanwhile, United Airlines confirms that one of its flights from Newark to San Francisco crashed near Pittsburgh today. The Boeing 757 went down this morning about eight miles east of Jennerstown, Pennsylvania. Now, it's not clear if the crash is related to the others taking place. Meanwhile, Jersey is one of the prime destinations right now for the thousands of injured expected to be ferried out of New York City. New Jersey 101.5's Alan David Stein is live right now on the news line from Newark's Beth Israel Medical Center, a prime destination for medical evacuees from Manhattan. Alan? Okay, the scene right now is uh, bustle of activity, Joe. Um, outside the emergency room, uh, there are gurneys lined up. There are uh, people just uh, getting ready. There's a, probably in this courtyard about 100 people. A lot of fire personnel. They've actually set up a tent for decontamination in case that there's some... Uh, some uh, problems with chemicals. Uh, they, I was in the uh, actual ER for a moment, and then it's almost like the TV show, art in, in, imitating life. People running around every which way preparing for the onslaught. Uh, a couple of moments ago, I spoke to Dr. Michael Jaker. He's the head of emergency services, and he told us what they're expecting. It's just a, a disaster that we saw on television, we can and expect um, many, many more injured and people who were killed, so we have to be prepared for big several hundred patients uh, coming in. So you have to excuse me, we got a lot to do. And they do have a lot to do, as again, they're getting ready. We have not had any wounded here yet, 
from the disaster. Uh, word is that uh, a big problem is getting here. Uh, they can only helicopter two or three people at the most at a time. And the roads, as we've been hearing, are an absolute nightmare. Uh, they're, of course, going to try to open them up, but uh, we should very soon, we're told, uh, be uh, getting uh, more people here. In Alan, has, Alan yeah. has anyone that talked about ferry, uh, using ferry service to get some of the injured out of Manhattan and over to the medical center? Well, over here, they're, they're basically, it, they're concerned with uh, their own people and uh, what they're doing. Uh, as far as uh, the boats and uh, evacuations, uh, they're really concentrating on getting everything here and uh, waiting for the people. Once they arrive, then uh, it's their responsibility. But uh, what they're saying is, you know, the problem is uh, with, the, with the roads, once you ferry them uh, over to Jersey, uh, yeah, if they're at Liberty, uh, you know, where we were earlier, Liberty Science Center or wherever, Liberty State Park, how do you get them to Newark? That's the problem. Uh, the uh, roads are uh, uh, just stopped uh, in many cases. All right, Dad, that's uh, New Jersey 101.5's Alan David Stein. Alan, thank you very much. Word now reaches us that injured victims from New York's uh, terrible tragedy today are also being taken to Jersey Shore Medical Center. And at this point, uh, 104, New Jersey 101.5 News Time. Let's go live to New Jersey 101.5's uh, David Mathau. He is at Palisades Medical Center, where they are also awaiting arrival of some of the victims. David, can you hear me? Yes, Joe. Several doctors in full surgical dress are standing outside the emergency room entrance here at Palisades Medical Center in North Bergen, waiting for patients to arrive from the Twin Towers disaster. This is Medical Center spokesman Yuris Rojas. What the hospital has done is uh, basically uh, gotten together its, its disaster, disaster plan uh, with all the required medical personnel, including doctors, nurses, uh, including additional volunteers that are, that are looking to help in this disaster. The injured will arrive, Joe, in Jersey on ferry boats that have been commandeered, we understand, by emergency service personnel over in New York. They will arrive about five minutes from here, and they'll presumably be zipped up on ambulances and perhaps even buses. I'm told that doctors don't know how many patients are being brought to this facility, nor do they have any word on the exact nature of specific injuries. As these patients are brought in here, they're going to have an amazing view of the New York skyline and the disaster scene. Palisades Medical Center is right on the Hudson River, directly across from Manhattan. And smoke continues to billow into the sky from the rubble where the Twin Towers crumbled earlier today. Reporting live from North Bergen, this is David Mathau, New Jersey, 101.5 News. All right, David, thanks very much. It's uh, six minutes past the hour on New Jersey, 101.5. New Jersey in a lockdown mode right now because of the terror attack in New York. And that, of course is causing an understandable jamming and gridlock on the highways, as that particularly in North Jersey and particularly in the areas closest to New York City. And we go now to New Jersey fast traffic to get an update on what's happening on the roads and highways. Well, the eastbound side of Route 80 express lanes are closed down at exit 62 in Saddlebrook. The local lanes are closed over by 95 in Fort Lee. Pretty much if you're going eastbound, you're going to find things closed off and uh, going uh, towards the city. Not a good idea. The Newark Bay Extension has been closed eastbound side and also the Jersey turnpike northbound is closed north of interchange 11 and so that's a must to avoid for now 78 east is also reported to be shut down near newark airport of course new jersey transit no rail service northeast carter north jersey coastline raritan valley line and also the northeast carter of amtrak disrupted as well on the septa trains no regional rail service uh, they are providing bus service patco is running with extra service and still not spotting any traffic whatsoever across the hudson river and that's new jersey fast traffic New Jersey 101.5 News Time 107 as we continue our coverage of today's terror attack on America. Both civilian and military targets have been hit across the United States today in an unprecedented terror attack. The New Jersey National Guard has been mobilized on orders from Acting Governor Donald D. Francesco. A spokesman for the Guard says the state's three emergency operations centers have been activated. The spokesman for the Guard says key personnel in the Jersey Guard have been activated, particularly in the area of medical specialties. The Guard is also offering any and all assistance to New York City. There's late word Air Command has ordered Newark Airport to notify them about any flights still in the air and any unauthorized flights will be shot down. New Jersey residents are coming out of the woodwork to help fellow Americans that they don't even know. Blood centers around the state of New Jersey are seeing a surge in donations, the likes of which has not been seen since World War II. 
Pat Juan at New Jersey Blood Services in Trenton tells us. The outcry has been, uh, as you know, with this disaster. People are coming to the blood center. Uh, to donate blood. We're lined up around the corner and we're going to need all the plasma and whole blood we can get, as you know. Juan says the all staffed around the clock. There will be no such thing as too much blood. Now, if you'd like information about donating blood, you can call them at area 609-883-9750. That's 609-883-9750. New Jersey Transit reports their train lines out of Hoboken and Newark are on a load and roll mode for all lines out of Hoboken and Newark right now. In other words, they're loading up with passengers and they are leaving Newark and Hoboken. Now, all trains into Newark and Hoboken are shut down. Northeast Carter, New Jersey Coast Line, Raritan Valley Line service all suspended. Meanwhile, in Manhattan itself, an unbelievable scene. Thousands and thousands of people poured out of office buildings and started leaving on foot this morning after the tragedy. An AP correspondent tells us. There are literally, as I stand here on the sidewalk, thousands, thousands of people, uh, some in shorts, some in business suits, some with briefcases, some with cell phones, walking north. It's like uh, picture a ball game or a rock concert letting out, but uh, picture the biggest stadium in your entire life. Meanwhile, President Bush had this to say about the earlier attacks. More resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and to, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Bush made his statement from a Louisiana Air Force base. One of the minor league baseball teams, the Newark Bears, has a view of the lower Manhattan skyline where smoke filled the air after the World Trade Center was destroyed. Major League Soccer has postponed all four games that had been scheduled for Wednesday night in hockey. The Toronto Maple Leafs postponed their trip to Newfoundland after Canadian airports grounded all outgoing flights. The Leafs were to travel to Newfoundland for training camp. Airports, railways, highways shut down. Dozens of ambulances race to Liberty State Park. Jersey emergency officials are preparing to deal with the aftermath of the tragedy. Jersey City police tried desperately to clear roads and keep onlookers away. One officer directing traffic screamed, Get out of here, we have to bring dead bodies through here. People fleeing Manhattan were dropped off by ferries at the parks and had nowhere to go. Workers from Manhattan walking to the Bayonne Bridge, hoping to get to their homes in Staten Island. Jersey airports and river crossings to New York City were closed after terrorists crashed two airplanes into the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center, and they subsequently collapsed. New Jersey 101.5 News Time. It's 1-11. New Jersey 101.5 will continue to follow this still unfolding story. Incredible in its scope and heart. We have uh, the president speaking now at a news conference. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens. And to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake, we will show the world that we will pass this test. God bless. President Bush speaking earlier in Florida. He is now at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. Let's go live now to our White House correspondent, Mark Smith. Mark? Yes, and Chuck, uh, let's just paint the scene there. That uh, statement was made in a, a small room on the base at Barksdale Air Force Base to a small group of reporters and photographers, what we call the pool, which travels with the president uh, whenever he moves. Uh, in this case, it would have been approximately, uh, 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 well, a dozen and a half uh, reporters, photographers, uh, camera crews. Um, and, uh, you know, the president is, uh, as we speak, again, at uh, a secure and undisclosed location at the, at the base. Uh, and we are told by White House officials that 
is uh, likely going to remain there until such time as the Secret Service military officials in Washington uh, are convinced that uh, Washington itself and the White House in particular are secure and he is able to return there. Mark, where's the First Lady and the Vice President? Well, uh, similarly secure, we are told, and similarly uh, secret locations. Uh, the, both uh, were in Washington, of course, uh, when this took place. The Vice President, we're told, was at the White House in the midst of his uh, daily national security briefings when first word uh, filtered in of uh, the attack on the World Trade Center in New York, uh, the, the first of the airplanes that apparently crashed into the side of those now no longer standing structures. He was uh, immediately taken to a secure location, uh, we are told, but again, uh, where he would be now, uh, cannot say. It would be purely speculation. Oh, and, and sorry, just to, to follow up, to Chuck, your other question was about the First Lady. She was on Capitol Hill. Uh, she was going to be doing her bit for uh, the President's Education Initiatives today, uh, but uh, she never got to that event, and uh, she too was taken, uh, as soon as word reached uh, her uh, security detail, to a secure and undisclosed location. Mark, you're in Longboat Key, uh, Florida, obviously. Uh, tell us why you're not with the President. Well, because uh, there is not room on Air Force One for all of the reporters and photographers who uh, who, uh, who travel uh, with the president and uh, so at any given moment we take it in turns to be in that pool that I just described. It was not my turn this morning uh, and so uh, I was uh, with the folks who remained behind. Uh, there are many of us here and uh, we are all grounded just like many other air travelers in America. Uh, you're listening to New Jersey 101.5. Uh, it's 1.15. I'm Dennis Malloy. We'll go to New Jersey fast traffic in a few minutes. As you heard, pretty much the entire North Jersey area around New York has been locked down and shut off to traffic except for emergency uh, personnel. We have some closings in and throughout the state of New Jersey, and we have a list now of the things that will be closed and canceled for this afternoon and this evening. Eric? Thanks, Dennis. Uh, the Stone Institute in Mount Laurel, uh, they're closing their evening classes tonight. Bridgewater Commons Mall closed from 1215 on. Catholic Youth Organization of Mercer County after school program canceled preschool program closing at 3 o'clock. The Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill is now closed. First Savings Bank in Woodbridge closing at 3 p.m. General Motors, the Linden Assembly Plant, production employees on second shift, maintenance, material repair, and salaried employees report as usual. Georgian Court College classes canceled after 2 p.m. today. Gibbs College evening classes are canceled. Hamilton Township Municipal School uh, Municipal Building, that's the Hamilton Township Municipal Building, the blood drive on the second floor happens from 4 to 7 today. Holy Angel School in Trenton, back to school night canceled. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool closing at 1 p.m. Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campus, all evening classes are canceled. Jersey City Public Schools will be closed tomorrow. The Lewis School in Princeton is closed tomorrow. Marlboro Township Public Schools, the board meeting for tonight is canceled. Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those that have no ride. New Jersey Department of Personnel, all state civil service exams are postponed. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High School dismissing at 225. All today's activities are canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School and Community, uh, Community College uh, is closed. North Plainfield Municipal Court, uh, no evening court tonight. Ocean County College is closing at 130. Princeton Regional Schools, all afternoon school activities are canceled. Rutgers University Campus in New Brunswick, all classes are canceled. Rutgers University Newark Campus, all classes are canceled. St. David, the King of Parish, all religion programs canceled. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, the MCC Superior Court afternoon sessions are canceled. Just a few more here. Ultrasound Diagnostic School day and evening ca uh, classes canceled. Um, we also have the University Radiology Group. All the imaging will close at 2 o'clock today. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School, the EDP is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated closing at noon and no second shift. And that's all we have. When we get an update, we'll let you know. Thank you, Eric Johnson. It's uh, one seventeen. I'm Dennis Malloy. We continue our coverage of uh, what's been happening all morning in New York City and Washington, D.C. And, uh, of course, the other plane that crashed in Pittsburgh. Details still sketchy on just about everything. We have some flight numbers. Uh, American flight, American airline flight number 11 crashed. Um, American flight number 77 from Washington to L.A. crashed. A uh, United flight number 175 Boston to L.A. Uh, reported down. And the United flight 93 out of Newark was reportedly the flight that went down 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. No reports of fatalities or what kind of structure that may or may not have hit there. Uh, early reports were that eight total planes were hijacked this morning and that we were accounted for four and there may be four more still up in the air. Um, 
No further reports have come in about the uh, high, any additional hijacked flights. Most of our information has been concentrated on the evacuations in New York City and the uh, bombing and devastation in Washington, D.C., and what the president had to say about that. Um, we still have uh, some people on the line who witnessed this morning's tragedy in New York City. Uh, and we, we're waiting to hear from Stu, our correspondent, has not call, called in uh, as of yet. Stu, if you're listening, uh, on the 21st floor of a building three blocks from the World Trade Center. We'd love to hear from you, and we'll try to get in contact with you. We don't hear from you soon to see what the latest is there. It's 118. want to get an uh, update on what's happening on the highways with New Jersey fast traffic. Uh, Tom? All right, looks like uh, we still have the situation continuing uh, with the uh, Hudson River crossings all closed down in both directions. This is going to be a must to avoid for now. Of course, the uh, roadways are still closed. At least the Jersey Turnpike is on the northbound side coming up towards uh, Interchange 11. Newark Bay Extension eastbound side is also closed off. There's a lot of traffic on the Garden State Parkway and police presence on some of the overpasses, too, as you make your way some around some of the roads. Garden State Parkway, we just got a report, is heavier than usual, both ways between the Essex Tolls and Exit 140. And Route 3 is also very crowded anywhere from 495 and up to the Garden State Parkway. Route 80 has had a continuing closure east on the express lanes at exit 62 in Saddlebrook. And the local lanes are closed off over at 95. Again, all the Hudson River crossings are closed. Jersey Transit Service still knocked out on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Raritan Valley Line. No service on Amtrak's Northeast Carter as well. And, of course, the airports remain closed until further notice. Very limited ferry service out of New York City into New Jersey as well. In fact, we had... A word of only two uh, ferry services being open, one at Pier 11, another one at West 30th Street. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers on New Jersey 101.5. Thank you, Tom. It's a 119. Uh, kids are getting out of school early in some school districts, and some have been canceled even for tomorrow. Jersey City in particular being so close to New York City. The ramifications of this will be felt for days and days and weeks and months to come. Uh, and one, one piece of advice I have that it might be a good idea not to let your children uh, watch television or listen to the radio, at least through the remainder of today and maybe into tomorrow. Some of the images, if you haven't gone home yet to see a TV or haven't seen one in your office, some of the images are just so frightening. Uh, and to know that it's happening here uh, is, is a, maybe a little bit too much for a kid to handle. Now, you wonder what the rest of the country is thinking about this. They've got to be seeing the images of this all day. It's got to be disruptive and disturbing to them. Probably not as disturbing, not having as many family and friends uh, and people so close to New York City who live and work there and, and, and uh, touches our lives every day. If you're out in Ohio and Florida and Utah, it's still to see, you know, your nation's capital bond and the, and the nation's largest city uh, bond has got to be just as disturbing to them. But it's a little extra here with us being so close and having people who live and work there uh, every day. 1-800-283-101.5 is the phone number. We'll take your phone calls on what you've seen this morning, what you see uh, right now. And try not to fan the flames of the hatred and the, the anger that must be in a lot of people's hearts and minds today over whoever is responsible for this. Palestinians, bin Laden, names being tossed around, Arafat. We don't know for sure who, and we have to be real careful in who we go after and what we do when we decide to go after anyone. Uh, you don't want, in this day and age, to escalate into a world war because it goes too far from there. So, not to roll over and take it, but just take our time in sifting out what we do. John in uh, Absecon, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, John. Hi, Dennis. How you doing? Good. Um, I obviously haven't had the misfortune yet of seeing any of the uh, devastation on TV. I've been at work all day. Um, so most of my information has come off the radio. And I've heard people calling in um, some for retaliation, some against. And, and I feel once we find out who did it, we need to retaliate. Um, just uh, food for thought for the pacifists out there. This country is what it is today because we have fought for everything that we've believed in. And if we believe that we need to get rid of terrorists, we need to fight for it. No doubt. And I, I'm on your side 100%. But you have to think about who has nuclear weapons these days and what countries are tied in with what boneheads who are responsible for this. You're not, de not dealing with a normal human psyche. You're dealing generally with religious zealots who would put their eight-year-old son on the street to take a bullet for their cause. So... All conventional wisdom goes out the window. You really have to take measured steps 
to figure out what to do next. Hey, if there was a country and a city responsible for this, I'd be the first one to say push the button and wipe them all off the face of the earth, men, women, and children included. But Amen. this is such a tangled web in the Middle East with such morons, retarded idiots who believe in whatever the bleep they believe in, that you really can't act in, 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 in the conventional ways and react in the conventional ways. So I, well, I, we, do have, we do have to stick up for our beliefs, though. That's no that's doubt about it. You just don't want to push it to the point where there's going to be nuclear warheads sailing back and, cross, uh, back and forth across oceans. So that's, that's my big concern on how we react. John, thanks for the call. This is bad enough. This is horrible. We're all going to know someone who knows someone who lost their life this morning in New York City. Um, and that's a horrible tragedy. But to consider, you know, I don't know if you got that feeling that I did about 9, 30, 10 o'clock this morning, that this is way bigger than anything we've ever seen. And that was certainly enough for my stomach. You don't want it to go any, any f much further past what we've, we're seeing on TV and hearing about on the phones right now. Stephen Highland Park, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Steve. Hi, Dennis. I'm afraid I have to disagree with you, okay, yeah. because it's already gone further. And, you know, I was... This, this is a couple of bomb attacks and plane attacks, and it is severe and yeah, horrible. Right. But, but, Dennis, but, Dennis. but think about if somebody got... If we retaliate in a way that causes nuclear retaliation toward us, I don't even want to think about that. I understand that, but, I mean, what is the answer? You can't let it go by. And if oh, not, I... And if there's not... A real response by the United States, and um, uh, unleash Israel, whatever you got to do, okay, then it's going to happen again and again and again. This is like Pearl Harbor. I was watching that moron, Tom Brokaw, on TV. They're, they're all morons as far as I'm concerned. You're right. There. But, yeah, but he's one of the least offensive, less offensive, I don't know. Okay, um, and he was talking in a nice, sterile picture of the uh, Twin Towers crumbling in, in the background. He was talking about the Palestinians dancing in the street. Now, where's the camera crews? Why aren't they showing that? Why isn't that on every front page? That's the image we got to remember. Well, I, I'm afraid to see that because if, if they, you showed that, if, if you showed that image to the American people, uh, you know that that's going to stir up a lot more anger than I, I don't know George Bush could control it. Uh, Steve, thanks for the call. And if that is the truth, which we've been getting reports around the world that that's what's happening, then some people will say, yeah, well, Arafat pays them to do that. Jerome and Bellmead, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Jerome. Yes, good afternoon, Dennis. Uh, Dennis, I'm going, to, I'm going to agree with you uh, to, to this degree. I don't think that any steps should be taken until we definitively know exactly what group, whether it was homegrown, our own state uh, militias, or whatever they call themselves out in the woods, or if it were Osama, Osama, Osama bin Laden, um, but whomever was responsible, once we know definitively, I think we should take appropriate actions against that individual. But I would also like to ask that we Americans, black, white, and indifferent, uh, come together on this one and understand what foreign policies are being carried out in our name that brought this upon us this time. So well, the, well, Islamic Jihad and Hamas have both denied having involvement and blamed this on U.S. policy. So like you were saying, what policies brought this on us? I don't know. Well, for example, I mean, the, uh, 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 what's his name? The, the fellow that walked out on uh, the South African uh, 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 world um, uh, meeting in, in uh, Durban, Durban, South Africa. I mean, we just arrogantly walked out uh, because we said that uh, we would not be associated with uh, Zionism uh, being associated with racism. I, I think if, if, if language is all we're talking about, we could have stayed at the table and it hammered out the language and, and, and come to some consensus on it. But to simply uh, arrogantly push, uh, push ourselves away from the table and walk out, then what is that saying to the rest of the world? We are, we are going to engage in the proliferation of nuclear arms, whether you like it or not. I mean, yeah. All right, Jerome, I, I hear what you're saying. Thanks for the call to New Jersey 101.5. Uh, we're going to join AP again in a few minutes and then try to break again for a report on traffic again. If you're trying to get anywhere uh, north of Route, uh, on the turnpike, north of Exit 11, or anywhere in New York, New York City, <clears throat> you absolutely positively have to uh, forget about it for at least today. Jeanette in Colonia, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, you know what? I was just listening to a caller saying that the Palestinians weren't shown on TV, uh, you know, clapping and hooping and hollering and, you know, like 
or uh, it was on ABC actually, and and actually they did show it on TV that they were, um, you know, cheering and you know having a good time over there. That 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 actually happened to to us in the United States. I think it's appalling, and I think that really we should do something about it. All right, Jeanette, thanks. Appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5. We had a, an eyewitness or a, uh, a person who was still hanging out three blocks from the World Trade Center towers and where they once stood. Uh, Stu is in an office building on the 21st floor. We have tried to make several attempts at contacting him and haven't had any luck. And if he is still listening and still at that uh, position, if he can call us at 1-800-283-101.5, uh, we'll get his uh, latest on the air. I think we haven't heard from him about an hour and a half, and it was touch and go um, as to what he was going to do. They had been asked by the build management of the building to leave the building, but uh, to go into what? There was a lot of smoke and debris down on the ground, so they were kind of waiting for the dust to settle, and he may still be there. Uh, it's coming up on 1.30. We'll try to break at 1.33, get a, a, another report on the roadways and traffic. Right now, let's head back to AP radio and find out the latest on the stretch and more than 500 wounded timothy mcveigh was convicted and executed for that attack well new york police officials are saying the number of trade center casualties remains unknown but could be in the thousands earlier the mayor rudy giuliani said he has a sense it's a horrendous number of lives lost about 50,000 people work in those towers air travel has been shut down at every airport across the united states incoming international flights to the u.s are being diverted to canada or back to their home bases where they took off from all federal buildings evacuated in washington as a precaution in new york a tunnel and roads into and out of Manhattan shut down. Trading at the New York Stock Exchange has been suspended. And uh, the New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani mobilizing the National Guard after these horrific and almost surreal attacks. One minute the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center were there. The next they simply disappear uh, disappeared. Virginia's Governor Jim Gilmore has uh, uh, put the National Guard into work uh, ordering them to keep an eye on uh, things along the East Coast. Uh, airplanes have been scrambling to do just that along the East Coast today. I'm Chuck Rice. AP Update. I'm Lisa Meyer. It's being compared to everything from a tornado to a war zone to the attack on Pearl Harbor. The World Trade Center's Twin Towers in New York City are no more after being leveled in a terrorist attack this morning. Several people described mayhem, billowing smoke, broken glass, lots of screaming. The nerve center of the nation's military has survived a direct hit in today's apparently coordinated tax. A plane crashed into the Pentagon. There have been casualties. For more on the story and presidential reaction, we go live to White House correspondent Mark Smith. This is the first word of the attacks reached the president during a visit to a school near here. He quickly motorcaded to Sarasota, Florida's airport and flew in secrecy to Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana. There, the president went before microphones and cameras to pray for the victims of the attacks and to vow those responsible will be hunted down and punished. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. Seeking to reassure the nation, he said he's been in regular contact with the vice president, national security aides, and cabinet officials. He says America's military is on high alert and all appropriate precautions have been taken to protect the American people. And right now, Lisa, we're told Bush is at a secure location in Barksdale and will stay there until he can safely return to Washington. That's White House correspondent Mark Smith joining us live. Air travel has been grounded. Greyhound has halted intercity bus service through much of the country and Amtrak service in the Northeast Corridor running along the nation's East Coast has been suspended. American Earl Airlines earlier indicated that two of its planes were involved in the World Trade Center tragedy this morning. American Airlines now backing off that statement saying involvement of two planes is unconfirmed. This is AP Network News. New Jersey 101.5, it's 132. Again, to recap what we have, if you're concerned about people, loved ones who may have been in New York City and lower Manhattan, uh, this morning the Red Cross has a phone number you can call. To set, uh, it's a family inquiry hotline. The phone number is 215-299-0134. 215-299-0134. And United Airlines uh, had a number at 1-800-932-8555. Questions concerning the United Flight 93 that left Newark this morning that was reported crashed 80 miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. The number again to call United Airlines, 
55. Coming up on 133, we'll go to New Jersey Fast Traffic and get an update on the situation on the roadways. Uh, Tom? All right, Dennis, we still have the New Jersey Turnpike closed down on the northbound side, uh, coming up towards Interchange 11. They won't let you go any further than that on the northbound side, and uh, pretty much diverting people away from the eastern spur as well. Newark Bay Extension has been closed on the eastbound side, as has been uh, Route 78 heading east down towards Newark Airport. Route 80, the express lanes closed down at exit 62 in Saddlebrook, and the local lanes of 80 closed down over by 95 heading through Fort Lee. Garden State Parkway is open, but very crowded, especially around exit 153 heading into 145. You'll notice a lot of police presence, too. There's also an accident further down the line on the Garden State Parkway south near exit 91 in the brick area. That involving a flipped-over car. So that's just adding to the mayhem. All the Hudson River crossings are still closed in both directions, and the uh, Staten Island bridges remain uh, closed off uh, leaving New Jersey, but coming back to Jersey, you will be able to use the Bayonne Bridge, the Gothels, or the Outer Bridge Crossing for now. Still no service on Jersey Transit's Northeast Carter, the North Jersey Coastline, or the Raritan Valley Line. SEPTA with no regional rail service. They are providing buses, and PATCO is running with extra service. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers. Next report at 148 on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. Thank you, Tom. It's 134. Our contact in New York City apparently has evacuated that building. Uh, some of his co-workers had answered the phone and then said uh, it's kind of crazy in the building and they had to move on. But uh, apparently our contact in a building three blocks from the United, uh, the World uh, Financial Trade, uh, the Trade Towers, the World Trade Center uh, Towers uh, has left that building and uh, has decided to evacuate and, and try to get to uh, safety on the Jersey side. It's 134. We have an updated list of closings and cancellations, and uh, we're ready to read those, or are we going back, go back to the phone calls? I, I want to reiterate just a couple of things here before we go. In Bergen County, they've declared a heightened state of readiness in the wake of the, the Trade Center attack. As many as 50,000 of those county residents work in New York. Ambulances are going to a staging area right now near the George Washington Bridge as the fire equipment is assembled at the Hackensack are in Hackensack at the Meadowlands. The county's mental health task force is also being mobilized. There will be a lot of trauma to deal with, uh, mental trauma, in the hours and days ahead. There is also a massive blood drive. No matter where you are, chances are there is a blood bank or a blood mobile near where you are. Just a couple of them to add. Uh, the blood center on Linwood Avenue in Paramus is also accepting donations now. In Union County, at the Barnes & Noble in Clark, the New Jersey Bloodmobile is there on Central and Raritan Avenue. And pretty much anywhere uh, you are, somewhere around there, um, there is, a, uh, there is a, a, a blood donor center. That is going to be critical now as New Jersey becomes kind of the staging area for the wounded that are just now, many of them, reaching um, the hospital in northern New Jersey and as far down as uh, Jersey Shore Medical Center in Monmouth County. Of course, we'll have more on that coming up um, as the information becomes available. Thank you, Eric. 1-800-283-101.5 uh, is our phone number. Bob in Lakewood saw the uh, second plane hit the tower. Bob, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, Bob. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? Good. Yeah, I wish I was calling in for something else here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still shaking, I can't believe it. I was coming down the extension, heading towards uh, Jersey City, you know, by 14 A, B, and C there. Mm. And I could see the smoke in the distance. I thought it was just one of those chimney towers at first, you know, that I couldn't see it in front of the tower. And then when I realized it was burning, I started switching around on the radio. You guys hadn't even picked it up yet. Nobody had picked it up yet. And uh, finally, you know, you guys got it, and I started listening to what was going on. And when I paid my toll at 14, feet. Uh, I come up and, uh, you know, the highway is high over there. I don't know if you've ever been there, right by the Liberty Science Center there. Sure. You have a beautiful view of downtown there. And yeah. I, was, I was looking at the building smoking, and I was looking at the helicopters flying overhead, and in comes this jet from the right, and it's, I thought its wings were kind of like tipping up and down, you know, and uh, just wham, right into the side of the building. Oh, man, I started, uh, I got very upset. I've had to pull it, well, everybody pulled over, you know, and uh, I just sat there. I mean, you know, it, it lit up the inside of the building. And uh, just, I mean, I'm sure you've seen it on TV. The giant fireball just engulfed the whole thing. I mean. And at that moment, uh, a number of cars pulled over to the side. Oh, yeah, everybody, just about everybody that was on uh, the extension there, they all pulled over to the side. You know, a lot of people had cameras. They, you know, there were people pulled over to the side already when just the first building, you know, before the second plane hit, they were taking pictures on the side and everything, you know. All right, Bob, thanks. Appreciate the call to New Jersey 101.5. Let's get a list now of the closings and cancellations that have been caused by this tragedy. Eric? Okay. We got the, uh, 
the Satone Institute. The Satone Institute in Mount Laurel, uh, they're closing all evening classes. Brid- Bridgewater Commons Mall closed from 1215 on today. Catholic Youth the Organization of Mercer County, the after-school program canceled. Preschool program closing at 3 o'clock. Chubb Institute Cherry Hill is now closed. The du- Ducret, the Ducret School of the Arts is canceling classes. First Savings Bank in Woodbridge closing at 3 o'clock. General Motors Linden Assembly Plant. Production employees on second shift maintenance material repair salaried are to report as usual. The Georgian Court College classes are uh, can- canceled today, and uh, that's from 2 o'clock on. Gibbs College evening classes are canceled. Hamilton Township Municipal Building, the blood drive uh, on the second floor is happening from 4 to 7 today. Holy Angel School in Trenton, back to school night canceled. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool closing at 1 p.m. Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campus, all evening classes are canceled. Jersey City Public Schools are closed tomorrow. The Lewis School in Princeton is closed tomorrow. Marlboro Township Public Schools, the board meeting for tonight is canceled. Madawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those who need a ride. New Jersey Department of Personnel, all state civil exams are postponed today. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools dismissing at 225. That again, that's North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools dismissing at 225. All activities are canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School and uh, Community College closed. North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Ocean County College closing at 1.30 today. Princeton Regional Schools, all afternoon activities are canceled. Rutgers University Campus in New Brunswick, all classes are canceled. Rutgers University Newark Campus, all classes are canceled. Springfield Public Schools, all afternoon activities are canceled. St. Anne of Raritan, CCD canceled for late this afternoon. St. David the King Parish, all religion programs are canceled. St. Gregory the Great School in Hamilton, all evening activities canceled. The chapel open for pray. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, the MCC Superior Court afternoon sessions are canceled. Ultrasound Diagnostic School day and evening classes canceled. University Radiology Group, imaging closing at 2 o'clock. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional Schools, EDP is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated closing uh, have closed. Great, thanks very much, Eric. And again, to reiterate, all bridges and tunnels, including train service in and out of uh, New York City has been shut down. All air traffic throughout the entire country shut down. If you see any planes flying in the sky, uh, more than likely uh, it would be military personnel uh, either in surveillance or in defensive mode uh, flying overhead. And if you're on a flight path, very eerie today not to see any uh, planes going overhead when you normally would see uh, dozens uh, by the hour. It's 140. You're listening to New Jersey 101.5 and back to AP Radio News for an update. Said that there was a bomb uptown. We didn't know. We don't know. We haven't heard. Can't get a car out. Can't leave. Can't do anything. How do you feel? Are you annoyed? Are you scared? Uh, anxious? It's a scary feeling. Yeah. Very scary feeling. Sad situation. What do you think this means? It means like we're, I think it means we might be going to war. Pearl Harbor. The plane had had uh, struck the Pentagon and the smoke was billowing up. Well, I think the reaction is, is one of uh, utter astonishment that uh, such a heinous act could be uh, orchestrated, not in one location, but in uh, several different locations, uh, virtually the sa- same time. This is an act of war. I'm filled with anger and, and uh, feelings of revenge. I would hope that our government takes every measured, responsible uh, action to bring the perpetrators of uh, this crime and these crimes against uh, our nation to uh, justice. If that means war against a country that uh, aided in this action, then uh, I would absolutely support that. It's unreal. Just unreal. So I don't know what else to say, to tell you the truth. It's just, you know... Too much, too much happened all at once. People think, you know, this is, we might be at war. Yeah, but who the hell are you going to go to war with? I mean, you know, we don't even know who we're fighting, do we? Reaction on the streets of Washington to today's uh, strikes in at the Pentagon and at the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. A state of emergency has been declared for the District of Columbia. That was a short time ago. These measures being taken so public safety vehicles can move through the city in the event they're needed to respond to any explosion or other incident. All right, we'll take it back from AP. It's 142, New Jersey 101.5. I'm Dennis Malloy. Uh, Stu, who is three blocks away on West Street in Manhattan. Uh, Stu, thanks uh, for calling back in and welcome back on the show. Yeah, hi, Dennis. Yeah, I'm, uh, I left my office about an hour ago. I'm now walking up West Street along with hundreds of other people. Uh, we've heard that uh, there are, there's ferry service in the Chelsea Piers. 
uh, which is somewhere in the 20s. I'm uh, probably right around, uh, let's see, West 13th Street. I've walked about three miles, and I, when I look back, there's nothing there except smoke. Now, you, uh, you're on a cell phone. I'm on a cell phone, yes. So uh, there are towers, I guess, still up and, uh, and uh, able to get a signal out to us. Uh, once I got past the uh, Greenwich Village uh, area, I was able to get a cell tower. I was not able to in lower Manhattan at all. All right, so you're heading to Chelsea Pier to get on a ferry or a police boat and head over to Jersey City or Hoboken, I would guess. Uh, wherever I can get a police uh, boat. I, I will tell you that I've seen young men in army fatigues. I guess the uh, National Guard's been called in. Uh, the police are uh, all over Manhattan. Uh, traffic, there's no real traffic except for emergency vehicles. Uh, you, you, walking, you know, up uh, West Street, you wouldn't even know, looking northbound, really, that anything occurred behind us because the, the, the smoke and the soot all went south and east mm. of the Trade Center. Now, uh, how many people are walking with you, Stu? Well, I mean, it's right around me probably a dozen or so and you know there, there are people in the street really just standing around you know not knowing where they're going and what they're going to do and you're you're you since you live in new jersey you're heading to the uh, pier and hopefully get on a ferry and somehow make it back home and then once i get to new jersey then i've got to figure out what to do from there but uh uh, you know, I, I'd rather at least be on that side of the river. Hey, Stu, this is Eric Johnson. Is this Stu from Heightstown? Yes, uh, Windsor, yes. Yes, yeah, Stu, thanks so much for taking the time to call us. We know you're a regular listener to the radio station, and we, we really do appreciate you taking the time to call us today. Uh, well, you're very welcome. And, uh, my main concern is that, you know, so many people from central New Jersey, uh, the kids in school today, don't even know, you know, what the fate of, of their parents and their close relatives are. And, it's, 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 you know, I don't know what to say. It's, mm -hmm. it's just devastating. Stu, would you mind uh, if we bothered you enough to put you on hold and get your cell phone number so we might uh, keep contact with you as you head toward the pier? Sure, no problem. All right, hang on the line. We'll get your cell phone number and see if we can uh, stay in touch with you. Closest thing we have to... Uh, Someone right there on the island. Uh, well, I got somebody right there on the island right now. Um, Lilo Stainton is uh, a reporter with the Trenton Gannett Bureau, um, who was actually uh, in Manhattan right by uh, the building as it as it first collapsed. Uh, about as close as an eyewitness as as, as you're going to get. Um, Lilo, good afternoon. We're glad to hear that uh, that you're safe. Hi. Thank you very much been quite a morning. What can you see from where you're at right now? Well, I'm actually looking out the window of my apartment in Greenwich Village, and um, I can see the steeple of the uh, Catholic Church nearby, and this morning I saw two towers there. One had a gaping hole in it. Um, now there is nothing but a giant plume of gray and white smoke, and no towers anymore. I mean, it's hard for New Yorkers and all of us to imagine they're just gone. I worked in Manhattan for, you know, a few years and that was the first thing you always saw that kind of said New York City or Lower Manhattan. You saw those two towers there. It's unbelievable. I mean, they just there's now just smoke where there were towers. Have um, they been reduced right down to the ground, or is there well, something of the tower still standing? That's the part that we can't tell. Um, I was walking uh, north up Hudson Street, which becomes Eighth Avenue after after the, the crash, which was a very dramatic incident in itself but it, and you couldn't looking back you can't see the smoke obscure is actually how high they do go um take us back to the to the time when the when when that tower right. went down when that first well, tower collapsed i was about i i would guess two or three blocks north of the northern tower and uh just slightly to the east of it um i was on west broadway and um the police had let the press maybe a block or so farther than the public. And then the police all of a sudden were getting very, there must have been dozens of police and FBI, plain clothes, Office of Emergency Management people around. There are sirens screaming in all directions coming down, downtown. And all of a sudden, it was just before 10 o'clock, and all of a sudden the, the, the police, maybe it was closer to maybe 9.30, the police got very, very, very panicky. And they started saying, um, there's a bomb, there's a, a suspicious package, and they rushed all of us west towards the river. And then I was uh, paused on um, Greenwich Avenue talking to some people for, for uh, the newspaper, and we looked up, and there's, at that point, um, it was terrifying. You could see people jumping out of the World Trade Center, the, the, the farther northwest building, I mean, from just below the fire line. I must have seen two dozen people just jump out. And the crowd was crying and moaning and, oh, my God, they're jumping. And it was 
It was the most emotional scene I've ever reported on, or been in for that matter. And then, and then we got to the part where it sounded like there was another jet plane coming in. There was a very, very low rumbling, and it was very close. And it came sort of around, and that was when everybody started running north. And um, running north uh, so fast that you know you couldn't tell you couldn't tell what was going on. The emergency vehicles were barreling north, as, you know as fast as they could go. Police are running, firemen are running, babies are screaming, mothers are trying to get their carriages, you know, old people are tripping, and we had no idea what was going on, but that, it turns out, was the collapse of the World Trade, you know, the, the original building. Um, but at the time, no one knew if it was a third bomb, if it was, you know, nobody knew what was going on. Could you feel the blast standing in the in the street? Was there a rush of wind? That, it, was, that... it became windy and very, yeah, I mean, there was sort of a wind. It, you couldn't feel it like an earthquake quake so much but the sound I mean it was like a jet plane and at this point you know people knew that the first two had been caused by planes and so of course your terrors here comes a third plane I mean just absolute panic people running dropping briefcases just heading north no one knew what to do cops are just yelling run 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 everybody run and everybody just took off and then I looked back I must have run three or four blocks and looking back there was a ball of smoke I mean ten buildings high rolling up the avenue behind us I mean and we couldn't tell if it was fire if it was you know some kind of toxic gas I mean you have no idea but when the emergency personnel are running you know running north as well it's a very frightening thing you know all right thank you uh, Leela you're welcome good luck thank you appreciate right. your time uh, on the phone with us this morning or uh, this afternoon it's 149 we're going to check in with New Jersey fast traffic and Tom Rivers and see if Tom has an update on anything Tom all right we do have the uh, New Jersey turnpike northbound side still closed on interchange 11 east Bend Eric Bay extension also remains closed off and any of the roads that feed into the Hudson River crossings uh, heading eastbound are closed like route 4 east and Englewood and 46 and Fort Lee and they shut down route 3 very recently too eastbound side coming down through Rutherford so if you're headed towards the City, it's not a good idea. The Hudson River crossings are also closed in both directions. Staten Island bridges are open if you're uh, coming back to Jersey, but uh, leaving New Jersey, those bridges to Staten Island are closed off for now. And mass transit still disrupted. No service on Jersey Transit, Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Raritan Valley Line. Amtrak has been disrupted up and down the Northeast Carter as well. And a very limited ferry service back to New Jersey, and all the airports are closed. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers. Next report to 203 on New Jersey 101.5. New Jersey 101.5. Thank you, Tom. It's 150. The phone number is 1-800-283-101.5. You'd like to give your thoughts on what you saw this morning um, or what, where you are now, if you can see anything at all, if you're that close uh, on the island, just across the river in Hoboken or uh, Jersey City. The phone number is 1-800-283-101.5. Uh, it all started around 847 this morning with the initial plane hitting one of the towers of the World Trade Center. 17 minutes or so later, around 9.05, another plane hit the other tower. Within a half hour <clears throat> from that moment, around 9.35, the Pentagon was hit by another airplane. And then by 10 o'clock, one of the towers had collapsed and fallen to the ground. I believe which was the first tower, the second tower that was hit. Shortly after that, within a half hour, the second tower collapsed somewhere in the 10 o'clock hour. And just all mayhem and all hell broke loose. And any lives that may have been safe up to that point may have been endangered uh, far beyond anybody's imagination from that point on. Um, the American Red Cross has set up a family inquiry hotline. And I'll give you the phone number now again, 215-299-0134. 215-299-0134. Three four for the American Red Cross. United Airlines has a phone number for information on their flight. United Flight number ninety three, flying out of Newark, that was reportedly crashed eighty miles southeast of Pittsburgh in Somerset County, Pennsylvania. No more details on that crash or the fate of the people on board. The number to call for United Airlines and information is one eight hundred nine three two eight five 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 eight hundred nine three two eight five Five, five. Some of the cities have closed their schools. I know in <clears throat> Pennsylvania and Philadelphia, they closed their schools, public and parochial, about noontime. In New Jersey, some have closed, some have remained open. If you're going to pick up your kids now, best advice, only my advice, don't let them watch TV tonight. 
Don't let them listen to the radio. Give them whatever information you think they can digest. Don't let them see the images that a lot of us have seen on TV this morning. And if you want to watch it, if you haven't seen them and you want to watch it with your children, watch it first. Tape it. And then see if you want to show it to your children. It's so devastating and horrifying and so much like a fantasy from a, a movie, you'll want to screen it before you let a younger kid watch. Lance in Plainsboro, you're on New Jersey, 101.5. Hi, Lance. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah, I did see what happened today. I was in uh, Jersey City at the time. And um, I would just like to say that uh, I hope the United States government uh, takes action. Um, against the Palestinian people because I feel they're responsible. you want to make a comment on that? Well, we don't know. I mean, it could be the Palestinians. They were seen dancing in the streets on TV. Yeah, um, they were. Now, I mean, what about if we have kids? I mean, what's the future of our kids, uh, you know, to go to school and uh, have a life here in the United States? And, uh, the well, they have a different, you know, first of all, I, I think the religious zealots in, in that part of the world are all nuts anyway. And if you, you watch how they behave and how they put their eight-year-old sons out on the street to be shot just for their cause, it makes no sense to I'm our minds. I'm concerned but, about them. I'm concerned no, no, about but the I'm, United States. You know, absolutely. United States. So, so that part of me says, well, why not wipe out each and every one of them? Well, why but, don't we? Well, 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 well because, because, because we can't. We because we don't know who's responsible. Chinese people uh, getting upset about it? Yeah, I, I, we, we don't know. I mean, anger, and trust me, I have as much anger in, in my heart as you do, Lance, and, and uh, there are going to be a, a lot more people more angry than the two of us put together. We just have let the powers that be in our government handle it the right way. They have a lot more information and a lot more expertise than the average citizen like you and I. Um, 154, uh, we have an updated list of closings and cancellations. Mark Shepard's here with a list. Thanks, Mark. All righty, we have Satone Institute in Mount Laurel uh, closing the evening classes today. Bridgewater Commons Mall closed uh, starting at uh, 1215, and that is uh, continuing until further notice. Catholic Youth Organization in Mercer County. The after-school program there has been canceled. Preschool program will be closing at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, the Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill is closed. Ducret School of Arts is canceling for today. First Savings Bank in Woodbridge is closing at 3 p.m. this afternoon. General Motors Linden Assembly, the production employees on second shift, maintenance, material, repair, salaried employees report as usual. Georgian Court College classes canceled from 2 p.m. on. Gibbs College evening classes have been postponed tonight. Hamilton Township Municipal Building, the blood drive on the second floor is scheduled from 4 to 7 p.m. this afternoon. Holy Angel School in Trenton, uh, back to school night has been postponed this evening. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool uh, closed at 1 o'clock this afternoon. The Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campus, all evening classes have been postponed. Jersey City Public Schools are closed tomorrow. Lewis School in Princeton also closed tomorrow. Marlboro Township Public Schools board meeting for tonight has been canceled. Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those who need a ride. Monmouth Regional High School uh has been uh, dismissed all after school activities have been canceled montclair state university uh it looks like it doesn't say here but i'm assuming since it just says montclair state university that has been uh, closed new jersey department of personnel all state civil service exams postponed north hunterdon and Voorhees high schools up in hunterdon county uh be dismissing at 225 this afternoon all activities in those uh, two high schools have been postponed as well North Plainfield Adult High School uh, also uh, canceling tonight. North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court is scheduled. Ocean County College uh, closed at 1.30 this afternoon. Princeton Regional Schools, all after-school activities have been canceled. Raritan Valley College is also closed. Rutgers University Campus, New Brunswick, all classes have been canceled. Also, Rutgers University, Newark Campus, classes have been canceled there as well. St. Anne's School in Lawrenceville, back to school night for grades 5 through 8 has been postponed. Somerset County Administrative Office's IDRC classes are canceled for tonight. Springfield Public Schools, all afternoon activities are canceled. St. Anne's School of Raritan, the CCD, has been canceled for late this afternoon. Bingo is also canceled. St. David the King Parish, all religious programs are canceled. St. Gregory the Great School in Hamilton, all evening activi activities rather canceled. The chapel is open for prayer. St. Raphael's School closed. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, the uh, Superior Court afternoon sessions have been canceled. Ultrasound Diagnostic School, day and evening classes postponed. University Radiology Group Imaging closing at 2 o'clock this afternoon in just a few moments. 
Uh, West Windsor Municipal Court 6.30 p.m. session has been canceled tonight. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School EDP is still open. Again, West Windsor Plainsboro, Plainsboro Regional School EDP is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated closing uh, at noon today. There will be, will be no second shift. And Dennis, that is the latest closing cancellations for uh, this afternoon and some of them into tomorrow from New Jersey 101.5. Thank you, Mark. It's 1.58. We have a full report from New Jersey 101.5 Radio News in two minutes. Let's talk to a German in Weehawken. You're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, German. Yes, how you doing? Good. I was working in my office, and um, they, uh, we were, because I work for a stock company, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we saw the ex one of the explosions, and it thought something caught fire in the World Trade Center. So we all started looking outside, and all of a sudden you see this plane coming around the other building. It was unbelievable. What was your reaction inside your office when you saw the second? Everybody time? just started screaming. It was it was it was like it was surreal. Yeah. And then you know we're watching TV and looking out the window, and all of a sudden you see one of the buildings come down, and then you start watching it again and again, and you see the building start coming down. It's unbelievable. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Now Weehawken is directly across from the right road across road. the river. Yes. Yeah. Uh, did are you still there? No, I'm already. I already left. It's um. It's a madhouse over there. Everybody's walking everywhere, trying to get to pay phones. What time did you get out of Weehawken? Uh, I left about an hour and a half ago. Yeah. It's um, unbelievable. The latest report is they're using uh, police boats, uh, ferries, uh, whatever they could to get people off the island. And, well, that's uh, what we, I noticed uh, a couple of the ferries take off straight right down to downtown. I, that's what we figured that was going to happen just to, see, to try to get people out of there. Right. All right. Thanks very much, German. I appreciate your uh, information. No problem. All right, take it easy. Um, Scott and Casey are going to be coming up next and taking your phone calls and steering this, I guess, in whatever direction they want to. Your reaction, if you were an eyewitness to it, would you feel that the country should do? Um, stay tuned for that. We have a full report, New Jersey 101.5 Radio News, uh, just ahead. Again, if you're concerned about loved ones in... Uh, the twin, twin Towers or in uh, on the island of Manhattan, the American Red Cross has set up a family inquiry hotline at 215-299-0134. That's area code 215-299-0134. New Jersey 101.5, and the time right now is 2 o'clock. Attack on America. Now the latest from New Jersey 101.5 Radio News. Make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. That from President Bush saying terrorism against the nation will not stand in response to an unprecedented attack on the United States of America today as one of the most recognized structures in the world. The World Trade Center in New York City has toppled down to rubble after two planes hit the structures. One eyewitness who was driving on the turnpike heading north gives his account. I just couldn't believe it myself. I just a big ball of fire that came out of it and that aircraft disappeared right into that building. Uh, it's horrendous. The attacks today in New York has brought the city to its knees as hijacked planes are apparently involved in the tragedies of today. 266 passengers were on board the four planes involved. To start, one plane crashed into the Pentagon and federal buildings in Washington are being shut down. In what they're calling a horribly tragic incident, American Airlines says Flight 11, a Boeing 767 en route to L.A. from Boston, was involved. That plane was one that crashed into the World Trade Center. United Airlines confirms that one of its flights from Newark to San Francisco has crashed near Pittsburgh. The Boeing 757 went down this morning about eight miles east of Jennerstown. New Jersey is one of the prime destinations for the injured, which is expected to reach into the thousands. Many are taken out of New York via ferry. Joining us live from University Hospital is New Jersey 101.5's Alan David Stein. Alan's here to tell us more. Alan, what's going on? Okay, Raquel, right now the uh, first of the women are starting to come in uh, one of the doctors is briefing the media right now. What he has said is uh, what they're seeing a lot of smoke. The things you'd expect, smoke inhalation, uh, some uh, uh, mater uh, material, some burns. Uh, they have a hazardous material set up. They have uh, actually a tent for uh, decontamination all set up. As far as what is coming, they don't know. The doctor was saying that uh, the numbers, the more they hear, the more horrific it gets. Uh, they have several hundred uh, uh, doctors on the ready. Uh, everything is right now. Again, it's it's already imitating life when you see on ER everybody preparing, running every which way. That was the scene here a little while ago. Right now, it's just a state of waiting. The first few ambulances have come uh, come in. Uh, we are expecting obviously a number more. The doctor uh, just stated that uh, the fire chief here uh, told him that there were 200 firemen uh, in the building when it collapsed. 
So uh, they're, they're expecting from there. Again, everyone is expecting the worst. And uh, sadly, it looks like their expectations are going to be met. Raquel? Alan, do we know how many people thus far that the hospital has taken in from the city? Uh, we're not sure. It's, it's just a small number at this point. Uh, a couple of helicopters have come. problem, of course, with helicopters is you can transport two or, or three people. Uh, we've uh, seen about, in the last half hour, about three uh, uh, ambulances come in. But, again, there's no way to confirm whether they were all related to this. You don't know. Uh, they are right now. A uh, number of people are uh, leaving the hospital. They're, uh, they've sent a lot of the workers home. They also uh, are in basically a lockdown situation. Uh, the university hospital itself, the entire hospital, is not permitting visitation today. Uh, they, they're stopping people at the door. Uh, there is a fear, of course, that you know, uh, as there is everywhere, that someone could strike again, and a hospital could be a logical choice, especially where they're bringing uh, wounded from this uh, tragedy. And of course, the hospital, as you said, is ready in case something like that does happen. Yes, there is ready. There's, of course, uh, law enforcement uh, personnel everywhere, fire personnel, hazmat people, medical personnel. It's, uh, you know, it's very much uh, well populated here with this, these high people. Alan, thanks so much. Alan David Stein reporting live from University Hospital in Newark. Reportedly, some of the injured have been taken to Jersey Shore Medical Center. New Jersey 101.5's Lynn Richmond joins us live with details. Lynn. Raquel, Ron Joukowsky of the New Jersey Hospitals Association says he expects as many as 5,000 people have been or will be transported to Liberty State Park and other locations in the state to be triaged after fleeing New York City. Based on their condition and after they're evaluated, they would be uh, uh, sent to uh, uh, hospitals in, in central and northern New Jersey. Reports we have so far, a Meridian Health System spokesperson says three victims have been taken to Riverview Medical Center in Red Bank, and Jersey Shore Medical Center's trauma unit is on alert for more patients. It's not confirmed whether any patients have been taken there as of yet. Joukowsky says all hospitals in the state are on full disaster alert to ready personnel and supplies for an expected onslaught of patients. He says the call has also gone out for blood donors who should contact the Central Jersey Blood Center to find out how to give. And that number is 732-842-5750. Reporting live, Lynn Richmond, New Jersey 101.5 News. Thank you, Lynn. On orders of the acting governor, the New Jersey National Guard has been mobilized. A spokesman tells us the operation centers are at the rest. The National Guard has been activated. Our three emergency operation centers uh, are, have been active since the uh, first reports of the situation in New York City. New Jersey 101.5 News Time 205. Now let's check the traffic situation. Well, the Garden State Parkway southbound side is bumper to bumper exit 98 and wall heading down to 91 on the brick area. There is an accident with a flipped over car. Two lanes reported to be closed off. In addition to that, we have all the continuing closures around the area because of the emergency situation. The New Jersey Turnpike northbound side is shut down at Interchange 11. And the eastbound Newark Bay extension is also completely closed off. There's also continuing closures of Route 78 east near the airport and Route 80 eastbound express lanes shut down in Saddlebrook at exit 62. And the local lanes of 80 are also closed. Coming east down towards 95 in Fort Lee. Uh, Garden State Parkway has also been heavy up around the Essex tolls down through Union. Uh, Hudson River crossings, Holland, Lincoln Tunnel, George Washington Bridge are closed in both directions. And the bridges uh, to and from Staten Island, you can get back to Jersey, but you can't leave New Jersey across those uh, Staten Island bridges for now. Jersey Transit, still no service on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, or Raritan Valley Line, and also uh, no service on Amtrak up and down the Northeast Carter. There's also a suspension of service on the SEPTA line, no regional rail service, bus service provided, and Patco running with some extra train service. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. Next report at 218 on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. New Jersey 101.5 news time 206. New Jersey 101.5's David Mathau is in Newark at Palisades Medical Center where they're ready to take more of the injured. Palisades Medical Center in North Bergen right across from Manhattan remains on a high state of alert. Dr. Alvin Goldberg, the director of emergency medicine, tells New Jersey 101.5 News, even off-duty physicians and nurses have been called in to help patients from the Twin Towers disaster. The person on, upon arrival is triaged, and they're given a uh, they're designated, uh, whether they're emergent, urgent, uh, uh, life-threatening. So we have a tag, and we put that on them, and then we put them in an area of the uh, emergency department where they're the best uh, suited to be treated. And Dr. Goldberg assures me a host of physicians are available to offer specialized treatment, even for exposure to biological agents if it is needed. 
At Palisades Medical Center in North Bergen, David Mathau, New Jersey, 101.5 News. Blood donation centers around the Garden State are swamped with people rolling up their sleeves to do whatever they can to help complete strangers who may be injured in the World Trade Center tragedy. Ewing Township resident David Missouri tells New Jersey 101.5. I live across the street. I've never donated blood yet. But now, given the situation, I mean, there's people that are dying and they need my blood. And I'm, I'm healthy. I'm only 25 years old. Why not? Blood service centers will be open around the clock and officials say that every drop is needed. Travel in and around the state has been crippled because of the tragedy. New Jersey Transit has restored extremely limited train service on the Northeast Corridor Line between Newark and Trenton, on the North Jersey Coastline between Newark and Bayhead, and on the Raritan Valley Line between Newark and High Bridge. All trains into and out of New York remain suspended, and the Hudson Bergen Light Rail is running only South Marin Boulevard. Bus service is running throughout New Jersey, but not into or out of New York City. Access link service for the disabled is suspended. The Middlesex County Emergency Management has over 28 ambulances. All bridges and tunnels are closed. We've activated our emergency command center. We're in contact with the county coordinators. See what they need right now. Early on, it seems uh, the biggest problems are in Hudson County area where they've uh, experiencing phone difficulties. Speaking to New Jersey 101.5 News, State Police Spokesman Al Delafave tells us arteries into New York have been cut off into all civilian traffic. He says until they're sure the worst is behind them, State Police will maintain what he calls a lockdown on routes, tunnels, and bridges into New York from New Jersey. New Jersey 101.5 News Time 209. I'm Raquel Williams. New Jersey 101.5 will continue to follow this continuing story of this incredible attack on the U.S. 209, New Jersey 101.5. It's the Scott and Casey Show. He's Scott Hassock, and I'm Casey Bartholomew. Welcome to the program. 1-800-283-1015 is the number here. Obviously, we're going to take your calls uh, about what happened today in New York. Of course, the World Trade Center is gone. Uh, the Pentagon uh, has been damaged. A uh, plane is down in Pennsylvania, about 80 miles outside of Pittsburgh. So there's all kinds of problems, and we want your reaction to them at 1-800-283-101.5. Also, I have a list of closings that we want to read to you here so you know... Uh, if where you need to be is still going to be open when you get there. Uh, do you have this list? No, I was just about to ask, can I, can I have a copy of that list as well? Can yeah, somebody? I'll read it now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right now, uh, the Satone Institute in Mount Laurel is closing evening classes. Bridgewater Commons Mall closed from 12.15 p.m. Catholic Youth Organization of Mercer County After School Program Council, uh, canceled preschool program is closing at 3 o'clock. That's in less than an hour. Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill is closing now, uh, uh, closed at 11 a.m. Gonna update the list. Uh, Ducret School of the Arts uh, has canceled something. Uh, First Savings Bank in Woodbridge closed at 3 p.m. General Motors Linden Assembly. Production employees on the second shift. Maintenance, material repair, salaried employees report as usual. Georgian Court College. Classes canceled from 2 p.m. on. Gibbs College. Evening classes canceled. Hamilton Township Municipal Building. The blood drive on the second floor from 4 to 7. They need blood. And we'll get into that uh, more later on. Holy Angel School in Trenton. Back to school ca uh, canceled tonight. Uh, Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool shut down today at 1 o'clock. Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campus, all evening classes are canceled. Jersey City Public Schools closed tomorrow. Lewis School in Princeton closed tomorrow. Marlboro Township Public Schools, the board meeting for tonight has been canceled. Matawan, uh, Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those who need a ride, so you don't have to worry about your kids. Monmouth uh, Regional High School. Regular dismissal, all afternoon after school activities canceled. Montclair State University is closed. New Jersey Department of Personnel, all state civil service exams have been postponed. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools dismissing at 225. That's in about 15 minutes. All after school activities canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School uh, is shut down. The North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Ocean County College shut down today at 1.30. Princeton Regional Schools, all after school activities canceled. Raritan Valley College is closed. Rutgers University Campus, New Brunswick, Brunswick, all classes canceled. Rutgers University, Newark Campus, all classes canceled. St. Anne School, Lawrence, back to school night, grades 5 through 8 canceled. Somerset County Administrative Offices, IDRC classes are canceled tonight. Springfield Public Schools, all after school activities are canceled. St. Anne School of Raritan, CCD canceled for late afternoon. Bingo, also canceled. St. David 
David the King Parish, uh, all, re- all religious programs canceled. St. Gregory the Great School in Hamilton, all evening activities canceled. Chapel open for prayer services. St. Raphael's School is closed. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, MCC Superior Court, afternoon sessions canceled. Ultrasound Diagnostic School, day and evening uh, classes have been canceled. University Radiology Group, imaging closed uh, down today at 2 p.m. West Windsor Municipal Court, 6.30 p.m. session canceled. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School, EDP is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated uh, shut down today at noon. There is no second shift. And uh, for those of you who want to do- donate blood, they've got a nationwide blood donation number. That's one triple eight blood 88 Blood 88? Yeah, one triple eight blood 88 I just saw that on the television uh, to, uh, to donate blood nationwide. That's the number to give. Also, they say, and I don't know if you already said this, but uh, if you want to donate blood, go to blood banks, not to hospitals. Yeah, because the hospitals, uh, they need it to the blood banks because through the blood banks, they can distribute it. And that's the big thing. If you... Um if you're looking for something to do, my wife and I were talking because my wife works at a school and came home early today and she was just beside herself. What do I do? I, I feel like there's something I should be able to do. If you feel like you want to get involved and they need you involved um, because there could be upwards of 50,000 people that could have been in uh, the World Trade Center today and that's right in our area, uh, that's going to put a severe weight on our blood supplies. If you feel like you need to do something and you do need to do something, go give blood. Find out what your local blood bank is. Call the number 888-BLOOD-88 and go give blood. That's the way you can help right now. Don't try to drive into the city. Don't try to drive to D.C. Don't go look at the damage. Don't be a ridiculous looky-loo. Anything like that. If you want to help, if you really want to do something useful and constructive today, go donate blood at a blood bank. 888-BLOOD-88 is the number. I want to clarify something I heard earlier as well, and I don't know if you've heard anything more about this. Uh, the two planes collided into uh, into the Twin Towers there. Right. And, uh, and of course, there was damage from, from you know, the shock, of course, of the plane crashing into the side of the building as well. Uh, a few hours later, of course, when both of the towers went down, there was some claims that there was another explosion, and there has been some uh, speculation as to whether or not there may have been either bombs planted in the building or bombs on board the plane as well that were to detonate at a later date. Have you heard anything more about that? All I've heard, I've heard a couple of different things about that. I've heard, uh, and again, this is all very sketchy because nobody's been able to go through the rubble yet. Nobody's been able to get be able to get through. Right now, the main concern of everybody is getting people out of there, getting any survivors out of the rubble who are still there. Uh, but uh, I've heard that there may have been bombs planted in the World Trade Center set to go off possibly today. Uh, around this time, because clearly they knew what they were doing right. and about what time they were going to be able to get there. Uh, yeah, there may have might... been bombs on the planes because they may have been able to get plastic explosives, explosives through there. And something else I heard that was kind of curious, um, the, the specific flights that were chosen, if you look at all of them, they were going cross-country which means they had a lot of fuel on them for a long flight and that would have maximized oh. the explosion and fire if they hit something close up because they would have been full of fuel. These That's were right, flying because fuel they were tanks because uh, they were going to the, to the West Coast. So, That's right. They yeah. were supposed to be going to the West Coast, and instead they you know, crashed within you know a couple of hours of, yeah. uh, of takeoff. Um, I had another... Oh, I was going to say, as far as the, the, the buildings collapsing, in fact, I just saw for the first time, I've been waiting to see this all day because every time they were talking about it, I missed it. And they just showed uh, they just showed it again where the towers collapsed. I would have thought immediately, oh, well, that was just because it couldn't stand the weight, you know, what with the plane being in the side of it. But no, apparently there may have been some explosives involved. Yeah, there may have been some explosives, but and then afterwards they were, bu- and, and we heard reports from uh, rescue crews who were in there that while they were in there, after the initial planes hit, uh, there were explosions that went off. There were explosions that went off inside the building. So so uh, that's that's what we have so far. Uh, nothing new that you don't already know. Thank God nothing else has happened. Uh, all flights are canceled. Uh, we've closed off the border between the United States and Mexico in California. That's gone. Any international flights that were coming into uh, the, the United States via the Atlantic are going to Canada. And every airport's closed now. And every airport is closed now. So if you were thinking about flying any, anywhere, uh, think again. It ain't going to happen. So um, what we're looking for is your, ex- your reaction here. Or maybe uh, as if to you, what, would ha- what has happened. And if you were anywhere near it yeah, and were able saw to see anything. anything. My wife works in Edison at a school out there. And she was released earlier 
you really thank God, uh, but they could walk down the block from their school and see the World Trade Center on fire when we still had a World Trade Center. And uh, that's the kind of thing we're looking for here. And just your general, general reaction to what happened. We're going to be doing that all day. We'll have updates as soon as they are available. News, New Jersey 101.5 News is on the ball here. There's guys running all over the place. i had never seen half these people. <laughs> and they're running That's around uh, getting information for you, and they'll bring it to you. Scott and I are here just to fill time and take your reaction. We're going to have the information for you, and we've got to get some traffic here because uh, it's affecting the Turnpike and the Parkway. But 1-800-283-101.5 is the number, and we'll take your phone calls coming up. All right, New Jersey Fast Traffic. Well, the New Jersey Turnpike northbound side is still closed north of Interchange 11, and the eastbound Newark Bay Extension also completely closed off Route 80. The eastbound express lanes are shut down at Exit 62 in Saddlebrook, and the local lanes are closed near 95, heading in towards uh, Fort Lee. Any approaches that uh, head down towards the Hudson River crossings are also closed off Route 4 and 46, and Route 3 is closed over by the Jersey Turnpike. Western Spur should go east on Route 3. The Garden State Parkway has been open, but very heavy traffic. In fact, uh, not only busy around the Essex and Union Tunnel, but also very crowded, too, on the southbound side coming from 98 down to 91. There was an accident in that spot with a flipped over car knocking out a couple of lanes. Hudson River crossings are closed except for the George Washington Bridge upper level coming back to New Jersey. That has just within the last few minutes been reopened. Very heavy traffic across that span coming back to Jersey. Across the Staten Island bridges, the uh, bridges to uh, Staten Island are closed, but coming back to Jersey, they are open. Jersey Transit, still no service on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, or the Raritan Valley line and there's also uh, no service currently on the uh, regional rails of uh, SEPTA. They are providing a bus service. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers. Next report at 233 on New Jersey 101. New Jersey 101.5. 219 New Jersey 101.5. Scott and Casey, your phone calls now about what happened today. Let's go to Keith and Wildwood. Keith, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Um, gee, I don't know where to start. I saw the whole thing. You um, saw it? Where were you? I was on the turnpike going north, uh -huh. um, right before the extension. Um, so I'm just glancing out the passenger side window, looking at the trade center towers. Plane goes around it, looking like you know it's going to turn around to go to Newark uh, Airport, and it went right through it. Was this the first one or the second one? The first one. And so it actually s circled the trade center before it went into it. Looks like it turned right into it. Wow. Uh, what was your reaction when you saw it? At, at first, I was shocked. I, I didn't know what to think. And then uh, uh, my coworker, I was like, yo, man, a plane just crashed into the Trade Center. Uh -huh. He's like, no, no way, no way. And then I lift up the visor, and it smoked. Oh, man. man. Did and you, you know, see the second one hit? Well, I, I saw everything. Really? The uh, second one hit within, what, like five or ten minutes of it? Not long like, afterwards. I wasn't sure exactly. Yeah, it, was, it was like uh, seven minutes afterwards. Seven minutes wow. afterwards. Wow. And, you know, that's the thing, too, is you're, you're watching the first one, and you think, oh, my gosh, what a terrible accident. Yeah. You see the second one, and now you realize, oh, my God, that was no accident. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. And, uh, we're, we're going to the Vince Lombardi rest stop because uh, 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 we're currently uh, putting in a floor there. Mm -hmm. And the next one looked like a kamikaze driver. It just, I mean, aimed right for it. Yeah. That's the one that uh, we've seen on TV. That's the one that's been out there, and uh, there's no pictures from the... You, you, we can only see it from the opposite side on the TV, right. but it flies right into it and almost looks like it partially flies through it. It's, it's really frightening what happens there. And then I was talking to my dad on the phone after it all happened, and Keith, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5, by the way. Uh, he called me from work. He works in Dover. Uh, Jersey, and he said, so what do you think about, you know, what's going on today? And I said, well, you know, Trade Center's gone. He said, it's not gone. I said, no, it's gone. It fell. Oh, he yeah. hadn't seen he that hadn't yet. He hadn't seen that yet. He saw the, uh, and he had heard that it had been hit. And I, and I was watching TV when the uh, the South Tower fell, and then the North Tower fell about 15 minutes later. And it was just terrifying. Let's go to Tony in North Plainfield. Tony, you're on New Jersey 101.5. How you doing, guys? Hi. Good. How you doing? Uh, all I can say is uh, I was traveling on uh, 24 just a little while ago and you could still see the smoke billowing uh, from the distance. Oh yeah, and, I mean that's not going to clear up for quite some time. North Jersey's yeah. going to have some serious problems with that. I, I, I tell you, it only makes me think that alright, we we as a country suffered the first day of infamy. I can say now today was the second day of infamy. Yeah, but you know what? At least we had an en enemy, uh, the first one. At least we had a clear-cut enemy. Now we need to... Um, 
Uh, now we need to find out who did it. Bush said that the U.S. will hunt down and punish the attackers, and I hope we can find them. And I, I, I hope we do punish them. I, well, of you course. Know, I, uh, I, mean, I don't want to get into carefully. Yeah, I, I don't want to get into World War Three. I don't want to get into. We're not going to get into World War Three over this. This, this isn't going to lead to World War Three. This is a terrorist attack. It's not going to be like another. Na this isn't like Ch China attacking us. Another nuclear powered uh, superpower. But uh, uh, you know, I hope we do something about it. Tony, thanks for calling New Jersey one hundred one point five. I was listening to them interview uh, Norman Schwarzkopf this mm -hmm. morning and uh, he said something really interesting he was talking about you know the way you punish somebody for doing this sort of thing is by attacking swiftly and giving them tenfold what they gave to you sure. and he was uh, he was saying that that poses a bit of a problem on two fronts a because we're not sure who did it yet and B and B because um, the people who did this, you know, much like the caller earlier was talking uh, when he used the word kamikaze, you know, P these people are willing to kill themselves, yeah. whoever they are, uh, you know, uh, for their own strikes. Uh, what on earth could we possibly do to them? Yeah, and you know, the most disgusting thing I've seen today, and it's been mentioned before on the radio today, that NBC, I didn't see it on the other uh, networks, I'm sure they showed it, but NBC showed pictures of celebrations in the streets. I saw that. And the Palestine children whistling and cheering, and they were throwing candy around in the street and doing a big old celebration and one uh, Palestinian group claimed, or somebody who claimed to be this Palestinian group claimed responsibility for it and said they did it, and then Arafat came right out and said absolutely not. Uh, and, uh, you know, so the, first, the, the one thing I would hate to see happen here, and I, like I was telling you guys off the air that I went into some of the, they, on the news things on AOL, you can go in and chat about what happened, and I hear people talking about going after the Arabs and this kind of, and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's not about that, you know. That's ever. not that's, a solution. That's not going to change anything. That's certainly not going to help. And no Arab who lives in this country, who whatever you know, any ethnic group in this country was behind this, as far as we know. As far as we know, all the uh, information points to they say there's about four suspects. Uh, Iraq, Iran are the uh, two big countries that could have done it. Uh, there was another one who I can't remember, and of course Osama bin Laden. Who was probably the guy who did it, and uh, I wouldn't be. So, he's being holed up somewhere in Afghanistan right now. We can't find him. The last I heard, so I wouldn't be surprised if Afghanistan is punished severely for uh, keeping that uh, right. SOB and there. Mass so, uh, generalizations and, and racism is certainly not the answer at a time like this. Also, right now there are no commercial airliners anywhere in the sky in the United States. There is no. There is not one single commercial air, airplane in the sky right now anywhere in this country which is unprecedented uh since air travel uh you know started becoming more commercialized in this country so that's sh that shows you how seriously we're taking this let's go to lewis lois rather you're on new jersey 101.5 yes hi. hi i just want to know what's the difference between what happened today and what happened at pearl harbor they were both surprise attacks we declared war on japan we had our lives will probably be lost today then we knew who our enemy time. was. Yeah, we knew the enemy. We knew the enemy in Japan. They, well, they, we know the enemy. I we don't know. Biden is not Israeli. Ben well, Biden we can't. But Lois, Lois, Lois. We don't know the enemy. Okay, he's one man. He's not a country. He's not a leader of a country. He's a billionaire who leads a radical terrorist organization. So we, while we probably know, uh, you know, beyond a fairly reasonable doubt that it was Bin Laden, we don't we don't know where he is. If we bomb Palestine, you know, the the Palestinian people, uh, then you know we're bombing them. Bin Laden somewhere in Afghanistan. There's no, there's nobody to go after here. We need to do some serious investigation. We need to piece things together. We need to find information from the wreckage. This, it, the, the, uh, the retaliation that people are clamoring for that is supposed to be swift isn't going to happen anytime soon because evidence has to be gone through. And then we'll do something. Then we can strike no, no. if we're going to strike or anything like that. But we, we knew Japan. They announced themselves. They had the, the flags. They said they were doing it. They flew right back to uh, you know Japanese territory. Japanese uh, ships. Uh, there, there's none of that here. So we have to do some investigation before we attack. And going off half cocked with an assumption that it was Osama or or any faction in the Middle East, and, and letting ourselves, you know, letting that get the better of ourselves. Suddenly now we become no better than those people who are chanting and uh, hooping and hollering this morning and on, on the television out, and throwing candy and those people who attacked us. Uh, so we certainly don't want to end up like that. All right, lost. Thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. I mean, it's nice to think. Right away, everybody thinks that, uh, okay, yeah, we're going to go for it. Okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go get bin Laden. Okay, that's great. 
But uh, then what? Well, and it's an and emotional... Then, you know, who, who do we go... At? Okay, we go get Bin Laden. What if it wasn't Bin Laden? Okay, Bin Laden's, uh, you know, uh, a Muslim that's trying to, uh, you know, that hates Israel and is in favor of Palestinian rights. Okay, so we, we help Israel eliminate the uh, Palestinian people. Or isn't that great? Then what happens next? you got an entire, uh, you know, millions of Muslim extremists all over the country that could do the same kind of thing. It's also an understandable reaction for those people who are getting themselves worked up and upset. Uh, you know, those Middle Easterners, those Palestinians... Who whoever that you feel that it may be. I even did it this morning, you know, for about an hour. I was ranting and raving, and then I thought better of it. And, and we really need to take some time to think about it and make sure that the things we do benefit us and don't end up hurting us in the long run. Now, they've uh, shut down the United Nation and, uh, Nations and all Philadelphia landmarks. Historical, historical landmarks are shut down now. We've also got reports that Disney is closed. Yeah, Damn. in fact, uh, do, are you talking Disney World in Florida? Yeah. And uh, I, I was also told, I think uh, I heard that Disneyland in California shut down as well. And there's another thing that uh, um, we haven't mentioned yet, but all of our crack emergency personnel people, all the people who are trained in terrorist uh, evacuations and, and rescue and everything like that, there was a big conference in uh, Northern California. So the bulk of our most qualified people weren't even in New York. I wonder if that's think, a coincidence. Think about the planning that's going on. Yeah. I've heard on the news that this sort of thing takes, um, takes years and a lot of money to plan. To train people to do it and to have everything line up what just about right. What so this have... just wasn't just planned in the last couple of weeks. This has been going on for a while. Perhaps even getting people into the rank and file. You know, people planting people. Yeah, they talked people. about that. They say they said today that you you know ultimately there were some inevitably there were some people involved on the inside. Sure. Let's go to Debbie in Woodbridge. Debbie, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, how are you? Good. Um, this morning when I was driving to work, I work in Jersey City school system. Um, I saw the first plane go in to the building, and I ran inside the Catholic school where I was going and let them know what had happened. And then when we all went back outside, that's when about 15 minutes later, the second one went in. Wow. We also, I, we also stood and watched um, both buildings collapse. Yeah. And coming home, just to let you guys know, to update your traffic, leaving Jersey City, you can't get on the turnpike on any of the entrances. Really? And also, the, um, my neighbor was deployed for the, at the triage uh, center that's in Liberty State Park, and he called home, he's a paramedic, and he called home saying that um, they're taking all the injured over on the boats. Yeah. And that it's just 99% of them are burned. Well, oh, hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's the case, but there's so much we don't already know. All right, Debbie, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. 1-800-283-101.5 is the number here. We're getting your reaction to what happened today. World Trade Center's gone. Pentagon had a plane fall into it, and the plane crash landed in Pennsylvania earlier. We're going to go for an AP Network news update here, and then we'll come back and take more of your phone calls. Radio Network. AP Update. I'm Lisa Meyer. A day of unforgettable tragedy. In New York and in Washington, terrorist attacks on buildings that are among the most identifiable symbols of our nation. The World Trade Center Twin Towers and the Pentagon. Presidential reaction to the attacks has been swift. White House correspondent Mark Smith joins us live with that part of the story. Mark? Lisa, the president's vowing terrorism against our nation will not stand. First word of the attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon reached Bush at an elementary school here in Florida. He was driven quickly to the airport, boarded Air Force One, and landed at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana, where, he told reporters, those responsible will be hunted down and punished. The resolve of our great nation is being tested. But make no mistake. We will show the world that we will pass this test. At the same time, he is seeking to calm the nation. Bush saying he's in regular contact with Vice President Cheney and other officials back in Washington. He says he's ordered U.S. military officials placed, uh, the U.S. military, I should say, placed on high alert and all appropriate security precautions taken to assure the safety of the American people. And Lisa Bush is planning to stay in Louisiana for now as officials determine whether it's safe for him to return to Washington. Correspondent Mark Smith joining us live with that. Two hijacked airliners slammed in to the World Trade Center this morning, collapsing both of the Twin Towers. Shortly after that, a plane slammed into the Pentagon, causing widespread death and destruction there as well. The military has boosted security across the country. The borders to the United States, the entrances to our country, have now been closed. Sunday's Emmy Awards have been canceled, and for just the fourth time in baseball history, the entire Major League schedule is postponed 
for reasons other than a work stoppage or weather. This New Jersey 101.5, uh, Scott and Casey show. He's Scott Hassock, and I'm Casey Bartholomew. Uh, we got to check traffic now, I believe. Oh, we do? Yeah. That's what they told me. Let's go ahead and see what's like on the roadways out there with New Jersey 101.5 traffic. If they're there. I don't know. Are they not there? No. Traffic guy? <laughs> Hello? Okay. No, we'll, try right. to, we'll try to get back to them in a, in a minute here because that's important because of what's going on on the, uh, on the turnpike and we the parkway. We do have some closings here. Some, yeah, closings we need to read from you. Uh, for you here, the Satone Institute in Mount Laurel closing all evening classes this evening. Atlantic Cape May Com Community College closing at 445, no evening classes. Bridgewater Commons Mall shut down at 1215 and is staying closed. Catholic Youth Organization of Mercer County or after school program canceled. Preschool program closing at 3 p.m. Chubb Institute, Cherry Hill, closing at 1130, already shut down. County College of Morris, all evening classes and activities canceled. Ducret School of the Arts is canceling classes. First Savings Bank in Woodbridge shutting down today at 3 o'clock. Freehold Borough Elementary Schools, no back-to-school night for an immediate school tonight. General Motors and uh, the uh, Linden Assembly Plant production employees on the second shift. Maintenance, material, repair, repair, and salaried employees report as usual. Georgian Court College classes canceled from 2 o'clock on. Gibbs College evening classes have been canceled. Uh, Holy Angel School in Trenton, back to school, uh, has been canceled tonight. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool closed at 1 p.m. Holy Rosary School, they closed, uh, they're going to be closed uh, tomorrow, is Wednesday. Hunterdon County Polytech uh, Central Campus, all evening classes canceled. Jersey City Public Schools closed tomorrow, as well as Lewis School in Princeton. They are also closed tomorrow. Marlboro Township Public Schools board meeting for tonight has been canceled. Matawan, Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those uh, who need a ride. And uh, Monmouth Regional High School, reg regular dismissal, all after school activities have been canceled. Montclair State University closed at 5 p.m. New Jersey Department of Personnel. All state civil service exams have been postponed. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools dismissing at uh, 225. All activities have been canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School and... Uh they, they're closed as well. North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Ocean County College shut down today at 1.30. Princeton Regional Schools, all after school activities canceled. Quaker Bridge Mall shut down today at 3 o'clock. Department stores are staying open, however. Raritan Valley College is closed. Rutgers Can uh, University Campus in New Brunswick, all classes canceled. Rutgers University Newark Campus, all ca classes are canceled. St. Anne School in Lawrenceville, back to school night for grades 5 through 8 has been canceled. Somerset County Administrative Offices, IDRC classes are canceled tonight. Somerset County Vocational Technical Institute is closed. Spring Field Public Schools, all after school activities are canceled. Uh, I guess we need to take a break and get an update from New Jersey. 234, state of emergency has been declared now in New Jersey. Let's go live to New Jersey 101.5 senior state house correspondent Gene Diller to the state house for the latest. Gene, state of emergency in New Jersey now? Yes, there is a state of emergency. It was declared by acting Governor DeFrancesco, uh, but it is primarily uh, um, designed to allow the state officials to move vehicles. That's uh, state police vehicles, National Guard vehicles, move them to hospitals, move them to other areas uh, if necessary. It really does not affect the general public. The only uh, area of the roadways that are affected so far by this uh, order is uh, exit 11 north on the Jersey Turnpike. You know, you're aware of that. That has been, uh, the traffic there is being diverted over to the parkway. And DeFrancesco and other officials at the news conference urge people to stay away from that area. They may decide at some point to close other roads, but at this point there are no other roads closed, and pretty much uh, life goes on um, as far as the roadways are concerned uh, as it normally does. It sounded like the acting governor was attempting to at least keep some semblance of normalcy for the state, even while trying to make sure that we had the tools necessary to, to aid in this crisis. That's absolutely correct. In fact, he said there's no reason for people to alter their daily uh, schedule. Uh, he said that, you know, we're all shaken by this. But life uh, must go on, and uh, we will get through this. And uh, that, uh, as I say, only the, the proviso that North Jersey residents should avoid the major highways. And other than that, uh, people... We have no word uh, from the governor's office or the state police about anything to do with schools. He said that's all handled on the local level by the local district uh, officials. And uh, as far as he knows, school will continue. School will be open uh, unless... A particular local school or district decides to close them. 
All right, Gene Dillard, a senior state house correspondent in Trenton with the latest uh, state of emergency declared in New Jersey. There are a number of schools who are closing early today and may close again tomorrow. We'll send you back for the latest on the list, and we'll keep you updated throughout the afternoon. All right, it's 237, New Jersey 101.5. Let's continue with the list of closings we got going on here. Somerset County Administrative Offices, IDRC classes are canceled tonight. Somerset County Vocational Technical Institute is closed. Springfield Public Schools, all after-school activities are canceled. St. Anne School of Raritan, CCD canceled for late afternoon. Bingo. Bingo is also canceled. St. David the King Parish, all religious programs canceled. St. Gregory the Great School in Hamilton, all evening classes canceled. Chapel's open for prayer service, though. Uh, St. Raphael's School, CCD program canceled for today. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, MCC Superior Court, afternoon sessions have been canceled. Ultrasound Diagnostic School, day and evening classes canceled. Um, University, Ra University Radiology Group, imaging, closing at 2 p.m. West Windsor Municipal Court, 6.30 p.m. session canceled. West Windsor Plainsboro uh, Regional School District, EDP is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated closed uh, at noon, no second shift. 237, New Jersey 101.5, Scott and Casey Show, 1-800-283-101.5. More of your phone calls, we're getting reaction. Uh, basically, the United States has isolated itself from the West, rest of the world right now. We've closed off our borders as best as we can. Uh, as wonderful as that is to say, it's also not the easiest thing to do. We have no walls. We don't have a border crossing checkpoint at every point uh, in this country. The borders where their crossings are closed down in Mexico and in uh, Canada. And uh, did you want to say something? No, I know Giuliani's holding a news conference right now. If you wanted to bring up the AP. Yeah, okay. Okay. We okay we've got, uh, I think that's Governor Pataki. No, George no, Pataki. No, no, no. The freest yeah. and most diverse people in the world. We're also, I believe, the most capable of rising to meet the challenges of this type of attack. And right now we want New Yorkers to uh, remain calm, to go about their business, to appreciate the fact that everything to provide for their safety is being done, to appreciate that everything that can be done to provide for the health and the needs of the people who are still at risk is being done. I don't, I don't think we, we really want to speculate about that. The number of casualties will be more than any, any of us can bear, ultimately. And I don't think we want to speculate on the number of casualties. The effort now has to be to save as many people as possible. They're large numbers. And I don't think I don't think we will know the answer to that until sometime tomorrow or the next. Were there day. large numbers of firefighters? There are a large number of firefighters and police officers who are uh, in harm's way, and we don't know how, ma how many we've lost. But there's no doubt we've lost. <coughs> We've lost some firefighters and police officers. Do you know anything about the cause of the explosions that brought the two buildings down yet? Was it caused by the planes or by something else? We, be we, second explosion? we believe we believe that it was caused by the after effects of the of the planes hitting the, the, the buildings. We don't we don't know of an additional explosion after that. Could you tell us do you expect any further attacks on New York? Anything to indicate that there could be more bombs, more planes out there? I know originally there was a report that eight planes have been hijacked, four have only been accounted for. What about the remaining four, and is there any possibility that there could be bombs on the ground planted by... Citizens? We have no specific in information to that effect. Obviously, the city is now closed, the airspace around the city is closed, uh, and we are on heightened alert. But we have no specific information suggesting any further attack. Can you tell us where the planes came from? Where planes came from? Coming into the port of New York. I think to give the people of New York confidence, to show that the federal government is standing with us, and and to uh, just to make certain that nothing further happens. This has been a very very difficult and traumatic day for the people of the United States and the people of the city. And I think that it's, a, it's an act that shows that the federal government is going to do everything they can to support us and help us. New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani, you're listening to a live news conference. Okay, we're, uh, we'll go to that if uh, any more inf information pops up available. Something else that just cost across our uh, screen here, Greyhound. We said that uh, there are no commercial airliners anywhere in the skies in the United States right now. Greyhound, the nation's largest bus company, has also suspended service to much of the country. So we're really shutting ourselves down and closing ourselves in here so we can find out what's going on. But we want to get your phone calls also. So again, we can't stress enough the importance of donating blood right now. Call a blood bank, get to a blood bank, and donate blood. Those two buildings alone 
the World Trade Center. We have no idea how many people were in them at the time uh, of the uh, attack, if you will, can hold as many as 50,000 people, and that's going to severely hamper our ability to serve them properly and treat them properly. If we don't have blood, go to a blood bank, donate blood, or call this number if you don't know what to do, 1-888-BLOOD-88. That's 1-888-BLOOD-88. If you're sitting around like my wife is going nuts, thinking it, wishing there was something you could do, that's what you can do. Let's go to Jeff. What? Let's talk to, to Steve, Steve Oldbridge. on Oldbridge. Steve, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. My feelings fluctuate among anger, relief, and sadness. My fiance was on the 41st floor of the building. Have you heard from her? Uh, yes, I did. She's okay. Thank God. Uh. I, I was conducting a training seminar down in Valley Forge, and somebody came in the seminar room and said, Hey, a plane crashed in the World Trade Center. And I said, Is that a joke? And they said, No. And uh, in this company, they had the TV on. I ran in there and I saw it and I buckled because it looked like at that time the smoke looked like it was coming right out of the middle of the building. Yeah. So I couldn't get a hold of her. My mother happened to be at my apartment here in Old Bridge at the time and she was frantic. I was frantic. Canceled the seminar and drove up here and you know you couldn't get into New York. Uh, my fiance's sister called me here and I was en route from Pennsylvania and I got up here and she Where is she okay. now? Uh, they've obviously evacuated her out of the building. She's at her apartment. She, she lives in Midtown. She had to walk and I asked her, I said, did you feel the impact the first time? And she said, well, I felt something, but I didn't know what was going on. And she said she works for a law firm. And she said one of her colleagues said, hey, you have to get out and you have to walk down the stairs. She left. She realized she forgot her purse. And she went back in for. Her oh purse. no! She forgot her purse. <laughs> well, and she went didn't to know go what was it. going on. Yeah. yeah. Went back in, and she said, uh, "By this time, people were panicking. And women were like losing their shoes." How, was it hard for her to get out of the buildings, Jeff? No, she, she didn't give me the details because a lot of she, was call waiting. People were calling her from other. Mm, sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, as long as as long as she's okay, that's great, Steve. Thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Jeff is in Tom's River. Jeff, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Yeah. Hello. I Hi. wanted to uh, first send out a heartfelt sorrow for. Uh, family and friends, but I was at Newark Airport when this whole uh, terrible thing happened. Uh -huh. Basically sitting in an airplane and looking out of the window on the left-hand side of the plane and just seeing smoke billowing from the building itself. Wow. The World, the World Trade Center. Yeah, because you got a view of that right there at Newark. And yeah, it was, it was, it was just terrible. And then to hear from the, the pilot with his voice just being audibly shaken. Were you on a plane? I was physically on the plane. Wow. Can you imagine uh, if you're going to uh, have a pilot whose voice is shaken, can you imagine how serious that's got to be? Because those guys don't shake for anything. Yeah, and it, and it was audibly shaken. I mean, he said that uh, there had been a, a terrible accident that happened involving two planes uh, at the World Trade Center and that, uh, you know, our flight was going to be seriously delayed and that if anybody wanted to get off of the plane, now would be the time. And uh, at that point, you know, it was just a, a panic getting out of the plane. And then well, you probably you weren't going anywhere anyway. Yeah. So they would have eventually, after you've stayed, they would eventually cancel the flight anyway. Where were you headed? Uh, I was heading out to Las Vegas. Uh -huh. and, uh, one of the worst things is one of those airplanes was uh, a plane that was out of Newark. So I yeah, heard. that's what I heard. The one that I heard it was the one that landed in uh, P Pennsylvania. Is that yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's one. the one. It was that... on its way from uh, Newark to uh, uh, San Francisco. Yeah. All right, Jeff. Thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Well, what's we creepy also got about that for Jeff is that he was doing one of those, you know, cross long, the yeah, cross the country, country flight. uh, flights. Uh, we also got reports that uh, the, of the plane that landed in Pennsylvania crash la crashed in Pennsylvania. Someone called from the restroom and said, this is not a joke. We're being hijacked. This is not a joke. Yeah. And uh, what was going on? So uh, something may have happened there. We don't know what could have, uh, what that plane was headed for because apparently it crashed into the woods and certainly it's a terroristic act to take out an airplane. But since, given that the other ones were flying into buildings, that uh, the obviously World Trade Center and the Pentagon, something else. the World Trade Center and the Pentagon, then that thing might have been heading someplace else. And, you know, that's scary as to what could have happened. It makes you wonder what went on to keep what went on with the pilot of that or some other people on the plane to keep that from happening. Let's go to Bill in Middletown. Bill, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, guys. Afternoon. Um, we're um, over here in Middletown, and everybody is really nervous because we have the largest ammunition depot right here, Earl Naval Base. Yeah. Today we can stand on the beach and we can see New York burning. We can see the clouds and clouds of black smoke. But if anything ever hits Earl Naval Base, not only will Manhattan and New Jersey be gone, and half of Pennsylvania will be gone, too. Mm, 
Um, well, right now, I don't think... Been stockpiling ammunition here. Yeah, right now, I don't think there's a concern about that. Certainly, that needs to be protected. But right now, there are no uh, commercial, at least no commercial airliners in the sky anywhere in the United States. So I don't think you have to be concerned about that right now. I'm sure there's a heightened awareness. And uh, once the World Trade Center went, uh, once they went after the Pentagon, I'm sure they were aware about targeting any potential targets or, you know, protecting any potential targets. So I wouldn't be, I mean, certainly be aware, but I wouldn't be terribly worried about that right now, Bill. Thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. 1-800-283-101.5 is the number here. We're getting your reaction to what happened today. Um, if you've been locked in a room for the past six hours, uh, a couple of airplanes crashed into the World Trade Center. It is no more. Uh, it's gone now. They were hijacked airplanes and uh, they ran into the building. There's the possibility that there was some explosives placed in the building before the planes even hit, perhaps on the planes themselves. They picked planes that were, had enough fuel to fly across the country to maximize the damage, and uh, both towers, the South Tower fell and then the North Tower fell, and uh, as many as 50,000 people work in the World Trade Center. Not all of them are dead. We have no accurate counts as to that, and it's going to be a while before we get any, but we're getting your reaction, and uh, traffic is a mess in New Jersey, and we're going to get that information for you right now from New Jersey Fast Traffic. Well, the New Jersey Turnpike is still closed on the North Town uh, car and truck lanes north of Interchange 11. They're diverting traffic to the Garden State Parkway. At that spot, the Western Spur has been reopened. Eastern Spur remains closed, and the eastbound Newark Bay Extension is also uh, shut down. The westbound side, though, is open. Any of the roadways that go to the Hudson River crossings are also closed off, like Route 4 and Route 80 and Route 3 and 46 as well. The Hudson River crossings have been closed down both ways, with the exception now of the George Washington Bridge upper level coming back to New Jersey. That has been reopened for the time being. The Garden State Parkway is open but very crowded with traffic, especially in the uh, stretch of the Garden State Parkway that goes south from exit 98 in Wall down to 91 in Brick, where there's been an accident with a flipped over car. A couple of lanes are still closed off. Jersey Transit, no service on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline, Raritan uh, Valley Line, also uh, knocked out. Limited uh, ferry service coming back to New Jersey uh, from New York. Amtrak has had no service along the Northeast Carter, and the airports remain closed nationwide until further notice. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. 249, New Jersey 101.5. Scott and Casey, Scott Hassick and I'm Casey Bartholomew. 1-800-283-101.5 is the number here. I'm getting your reaction to the terrorist attacks against America today. We are closed off from the rest of the country physically. Uh, a couple other things we haven't mentioned. There is an aircraft carrier that's being placed uh, off the coast of New York City. Probably in the uh, bay between New Jersey and New York City. Oh, it's that's what Giuliani was just talking about. Yeah, there's also uh, one being placed off the coast of Virginia as close as they can get it to Washington, D.C. Other uh, potential military ships are moving into position uh, off the Atlantic. We're just keeping ourselves as protected as we possibly can. All borders are shut down. No commercial airliners in the air. The most important thing you can do right now is give blood if you, ha if, you, if you haven't given it recently and you're in a position where you can go do that, a lot of places are closing down early. A lot of schools are closing down early. If you have the time, go to a blood bank and give blood. They are going to need it. Do not go to a hospital. Hospitals can't help you with the given blood. You need to go to a blood bank. And the number you should call to find out where is 1-888-BLOOD-88. That's 1-888-BLOOD-88. Did you hear earlier uh, the Pennsylvanian congressman, I'm pretty sure he's from somewhere in Pennsylvania, he was going on about uh, how this was our own fault. How uh, yeah, we've had yeah. this lackadaisical attitude for the last 10 years. And I was listening to this thinking, there's no possible way we could ever prepare for this kind of act. No, there's no possible way we could ever know when it was going to happen, no matter what kind of uh, security precautions we were to take. How on earth this could be our fault is beyond me. I, I, I heard somebody, and it may have been him, saying that this is one of the prices we pay for living in such a free society as we live in right now. And uh, by and large, he's right. I mean, our, our borders are open. Anybody, basically anybody who wants to can get in or out as often as they want to. Yeah, and this sort of thing can happen. But yeah, like I was saying, the alternatives are, you know, living in a closed society like we are right now. There's no aircraft in the sky. Greyhound's been shut down. Major League Baseball has canceled all the games for today. 
There are no baseball games today in the interest of security. Borders are as closed as we can get them. we got military ships in the waters off of New York City and as close to uh, Washington, D.C. as we can get them. This isn't the kind of society we want to live in. And unfortunately, that's one of the risks. It doesn't justify it. And it's by no means should anybody think, well, you know, that's what we do and, and go on with our lives. But it's one of the risks. And now we're going to have to deal with it. Let's go to Kevin in Delanco. Kevin, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hey, how you doing? Good. Uh, what I wanted to, to know was how these people managed to hijack four planes just w- at the same time with nobody knowing. If it's, planning. Yeah, if it's Osama bin Laden, and that's what everybody seems to think it is, um, this guy's a billionaire, and these sorts of things take years and years to plan, is what I've heard State Department officials saying. And um, he's been planning it for a long time. If you look at where the planes came out of, at least two of them came out of Logan, which is in Boston. Right. And... Um, you know, what it goes to show is is how easy it was because they got two guys who were probably uh, have had plastic explosives on them. If you believe the theory that there were explosives on the plane, were able to get on the plane. You know, it's not hard to get on a plane. It's not hard to get false documentation. It's not difficult, especially when you've got a billionaire backing you. If it was bin Laden, it's not hard to get all that information. And all you have to do is buy a plane ticket. Once you have the false documentation, it's as simple as uh, buying a plane ticket and, uh, you know, possibly having a gun, possibly having plastic explosives, possibly being able to do something. What it does is it shows a complete breakdown in airport security, uh, not only in Logan Airport in Boston, but across the country, uh, Kevin. That's how this sort of thing is supposed to happen. We do. We kind of get lazy, you know. You know, you got people who are checking bags and going through the x-ray machines and looking at people and trying to figure out who's who and looking at pictures and the FBI investigating. And after a while, it becomes monotonous, day in and day out, people walking through. And this sort of thing never happens, and then one day it does. Kevin, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. What this is going to do, though, by the way, is... From now on, you're going to have to get to the airport really early if you are even brave enough to get on a plane oh, yeah. after this happens. Because this is going to mean every, but every bag is going to be checked. Everybody's going to be looked over. Everything in your carry-on bag is going to be looked at. It's not just going to be x-rays because x-rays might not be able to see plastic explosives. And they're going to look at everybody now. And they should. And nobody should complain about that because the alternative is the threat of this happening here. We're going to expect them to increase security and try to keep us safe. And if that's what it's going to take, then that's what we're going to have to be willing to live with. And I'm not trying to scare anybody here either. But at the same time, where there's a will, there is a way. And it doesn't, you know, it may not matter how tight, uh, you know, how much we tighten our security or how lax our security may have been. You know, if people want to do this bad enough and they got enough money behind them and enough time and preparation and maybe even enough people to throw out the problem. I mean, maybe one or two got through but maybe there were 14, 15, 20 people thrown at, a, at an airport to try and see who could get through. Where there's a will, there's always a way, and this kind of thing may continue to happen no matter how hard we try to prevent it. They go. Uh, they were just showing some pictures on TV of uh, the area around the World Trade Center at the um, at the uh, after one of the, at least one of the buildings fell. I couldn't exactly see it because all we have is a TV. It looked like Jersey after a snowstorm. There's th- like at least three inches of dust, and people were hiding behind cars and getting up. And you could see their fronts. They were laying face down to avoid the dust. Their fronts were all clean and they were their backs were covered with soot and uh, rubble and dust and that's what it was like it was like being in hell okay blood drive at barnes and noble in clark on raritan road is canceled why due to lack of personnel okay okay uh they're at all the blood banks okay well that's acceptable you know how to draw Uh, blood Get on down there. She knows how to draw blood. Uh, but uh, if you uh, if you want to donate blood, the one, again, the blood drive at the Barnes & Noble in Clark on Raritan Road has been canceled due to lack of personnel. Don't not do it. If you were going to go, don't not give blood. 1-888-BLOOD-88 is the number. They'll tell you where to go. That's how you can help. Diane's in Cream Ridge. Diane, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Yes, good afternoon. Hey. Uh, first, my heart goes out to the families and, and some friends that have anybody in the World Trade Center. We had a loved one there. We're very fortunate he got out safe. Um, you know, I, I often wonder, everybody is, is like running crazy. The thing to look at right now is to do what we think we should do as an American. Lower our flags, half mass. I work for a major corporation. We just came home from work. It was a voluntary thing. But they lowered our half mass. And, and for those people that were hurt in the World Trade Center, and by God, everybody should be given blood. 
Absolutely. They're, uh, they're really good. Yeah, it's time for us to come together as a nation. We yeah. mourn those who we've lost and we help those who we can. That's a great idea. You know, anybody who uh, has a corporation, anything out there who has a building with a flag, uh, lower it to half mass. If you're driving around out there, drive with your lights on to show your support for you and that your, your concern and your care for the victims. It may not be dark outside, just to show a united front to everybody. If you're driving around during the day, flip your lights on just to show your support. Diane, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Maria in Princeton. Maria, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Yes, how are you? Good. I just wanted to say I'm very upset about what happened today. I have this pain in my stomach that just won't go away. It's a tragic thing. Mm -hmm. I love this country. I think it's the greatest country in the world, and I don't know why everybody always hurts us. Anytime there's a tragedy, no matter what part of the world it's in, who are the first people to load up the planes with medical supplies, doctors, nurses? Absolutely. absolutely. You're absolutely right, Marie. I mean, we're the, we're the world's peacekeepers, and because we're the world's peacekeepers, uh, this is what they do. This is the kind of thing that they come through. They come to us for help and guidance and to uh, try to, you know, the world's police force is basically what they are. All right, Maria, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Uh, Mark is in Dover. Mark, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Yes, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'd like to make a point here. Uh, if you remember, if you're old enough, that during the 50s and 60s, there was always the paranoia of nuclear war. Right. But the reason it never happened was is because of a concept called mutually assured destruction. Yeah. That, you know, retaliation would be so severe that it would be not a, a thought. Well, what's your point? Now, as far as these terrorists are concerned, if we were to just retaliate against them in such a, a massive way that there was no political gain by any of their acts that it would actually eliminate their whole society. Won't happen. They, they wouldn't be taking these chances. It, it won't. It it won't happen because I'll tell you why. Probably the people, uh, and that's you know what, one of the leads they're following is these radical Muslim groups, and there are millions of them out there. Whether or not they all uh, subscribe to the same theory or the same leader or the same, you know, uh, there's a hundred Osama bin Ladens out there. Uh, whether or not they all subscribe to the same individual, there are so many of them. If we tried to wipe them out, that would eliminate any relationship at all we had with anybody in the Middle East. Israel would have to stand alone and would eventually be wiped out. We would lose our allies. It could cause problems with our oil resources, all sorts of things like that. We can't go after all of them. That's why unfortunately sometimes we have to wait until they strike. I don't think that's the best way to do it, but sometimes we have to wait until that happens before we go after them. Otherwise it could create, create an even worse anti-United States uh, movement across the world and that's not something that would make anything any situation like this any better. In fact, it would make it worse. Thanks, Mark, for, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. What about on top of each individual terrorist group, inside of each group you've got all those cells, right? They say sure. millions of cells. Each cell is operating completely on its own. You don't know which individual group is responsible yeah. for this. It's going to take, ti take time to figure it out. We'll figure it out. But it's going to take some time. Because these aren't countries. This isn't a country that did this. It may it may have ties, you know, like I said, they, they said there's like four sub-suspects. Could be Iraq, could be Iran, could be Osama bin Laden or some other radical Muslim group. Uh, the, it's going to take time. These aren't actual countries with leaders that we can retaliate against. These are individuals and groups that can pick up and move wherever they want to move. All right, 1-800-283-101.5 is the number. We're going to take more of your phone calls when we come back. But again, we cannot stress enough to you the need to go out and donate blood if you have the time. Time. If you are available right now or later on, go to a blood bank, not the hospital. If you don't know where a blood bank is, the number is 1-888-BLOOD-88. That's 1-888-BLOOD-88, and they can tell you where to go, and that's the way you can help if you're sitting at home right now. All right, we got more of your phone calls coming up. All right, more details uh, coming up right here on New Jersey 101.5 Radio News. Attack on America. Now the latest from New Jersey 101.5 Radio News. New Jersey will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. That's President Bush. New Jersey and the world reacts to a deadly series of terror attacks reaching from New York City to our nation's capital. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Cutter. And I'm Eric Scott. Where New York City's Twin Towers once stood, there is only rubble. It is the deadliest terror attack in American history, some already calling it a deliberate act of war, including our senior senator, Bob Torricelli. Two hijacked airliners slammed into the World Trade Center around 9 a.m. this morning, ultimately leading to the collapse of two 110-story buildings. Now, you have been calling in all day with horrific accounts trying to put words to the undescribable. I just couldn't believe it myself. I just a big ball of fire that came out of it and that aircraft disappeared right into that building. Uh, it's horrendous. All along the northern section of the turnpike, people stopped and just stared. 
and it's over. It's apocalypse, baby, man. It's very nerve-wracking. There goes the fuck the tower. Excuse my language. Oh, there go oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Meanwhile, Mark from South Amboy witnessed the horrendous plane crashes into the World Trade Center from a Jersey City office building, and he tells New Jersey 101.5 News. The interesting thing that struck me suddenly as I saw the jet come in and hit was the fact that it seemed almost intentionally to hit lower, almost in a one-two sort of, the first one's going to get your attention, the second one is going to hit you lower where the people are evacuating. But that was not the end. Within an hour after this morning's initial attacks in New York, more explosions rocked our nation's capital. A plane crashed into the Pentagon, a car bomb exploded outside the State Department, and there was a report of a loud explosion in the capital's vicinity. In New Jersey, the acting governor has declared a state of emergency. Airports, railways, and highways shut down. Dozens of ambulances racing to Liberty State Park as New Jersey emergency officials prepared to deal with the aftermath of these terror attacks. New Jersey airports and river crossings to New York, to New York City remain closed. So we're sure these events are indeed over, that's the way it has to be. Your words, exactly a lockdown. Uh, all bridges and tunnels are closed. State police spokesman says troopers are providing whatever assistance they can to New York City. They have opened the state emergency command center in Ewing to help coordinate law enforcement activities. Double guards have been placed at the entrances to state buildings in Trenton, and all off-duty guards have been called in. All of northern New Jersey remains a mess, and you will have to be patient on the way home. Let's get the latest now at 3.03. Here is New Jersey. Fast traffic. So many of the roads heading for the uh, Hudson River crossings are closed off, including Route 4 East in the Inglewood area, 46 East in Fort Lee, Route 3 in the Meadowlands, right down by the Turnpike Western Spur. That section of Route 3 East is closed, and all the Hudson River crossings are closed except for the upper-level George Washington Bridge coming back to New Jersey. They just within the last hour or so reopened the upper-level for drivers coming back to New Jersey. The traffic is also blocked off on the North Bend, Jersey turn by car and truck lanes just north of Interchange 11. You're diverted over to the Garden State Parkway and the Eastern Spur is also blocked off. Uh, traffic diverted over to the Western Roadway for the time being. We've had uh, continuing slowdowns for drivers on the Garden State Parkway, although it is getting better. South exit 98 down to 91 where there was a flipped over car accident. That's been cleared. The uh, drive across the Staten Island bridges, you still can't leave New Jersey on the Staten Island bridges, but uh, those bridges are open coming back to the Jersey side. There's still a continuing disruption on mass transit it. All the airports remain closed off nationwide. Jersey Transit, uh, no service on the Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coastline and Raritan Valley lines. And Amtrak service also disrupted on the Northeast Carter. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. Next report at 318 on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. Bergen County authorities at the request of New York City masked about 50 ambulances by the George Washington Bridge. Fire equipment has been gathering at the Hackensack Meadowlands. A spokesman for Bergen County Executive Pat Schuber. We have uh, mobilized our rapid deployment force, which is a force of 120 police officers from uh, throughout the county. They've been undertaking a number of duties, uh, securing buildings. They've uh, been asked to secure Teterboro Airport, which has been closed to all commercial traffic and is only open to uh, military traffic at this time. We've also sent uh, a bomb squad out to the George Washington Bridge and to the Hudson, uh, I'm sorry, to the Holland Tunnel uh, to check those uh, transportation arteries for bombs. Meanwhile, Jersey hospitals closest to the disaster scene are full emergency mode right now to receive terror victims at Palisades Medical Center. New Jersey's 101.5's David Mathau is live with some of that firsthand and chilling account of what happened today at the World Trade Center. David? Joe, one of the survivors of the Twin Towers disaster who came to Palisades Medical Center, Jerry Iabino of Fairview, was arriving at work this morning at World Trade Center number one just as the first plane crashed into the building. She tells New Jersey 101.5 News as she stepped off the elevator on the 71st floor, there was a huge explosion and she was thrown across the hall. And then she saw debris falling from the ceiling and outside the window. And people just go down the stairs, just get out of, get out of here. And we just, I just went down and the building was creaking like crazy up top. So we're like, oh geez, this is, gonna, this is just going to topple over or something. Iabino was able to get out of the building and minutes later the structure did indeed come crashing down as she ran for her life. Amazingly, the Fairview resident walked into this hospital under her own power after taking a ferry from New York to Jersey. Most other patients were not so fortunate. 
Reporting live from North Bergen, David Mathau, New Jersey, 101.5 News. All right, David, thanks very much. New Jersey, 101.5 News Time, 306. And the watch and wait continues at other Jersey medical centers this afternoon. New Jersey, 101.5's Alan David Stein is live with us from University Medical Center in Newark with the latest there. Alan? Okay, Joe, uh, I have a lot of activity here. I'd say between 5 and 10 uh, uh, victims have been brought in. What they're doing now is they're bringing them to Newark via the rail lines. They're triaging them. From what we understand, at Newark Penn Station, Dr. Eric Muno, uh, Munoz from uh, University Hospital spoke to us a little while ago. And we also expect, depending on the severity of injury, we may start getting helicopter. We run the helicopter program for the state. So, I mean, if you just saw the pictures, you're hard to even get any footage from uh, what's going on in Manhattan. So we can get people by air, uh, and we're ready for that. We've been told military helicopters will be used. So we're just uh, ready. We have people donating blood. Um, and, you know, we're just on full standby. And the sub block is even on standby. They have closed off traffic. Uh, they have about 100 people in front of me uh, where uh, the ambulances will be coming in. They're all set. There's hazmat set up for people who may need uh, decontamination from chemicals. The uh, main hospital has been closed off to visitors today. So uh, that's where we are right now awaiting the onslaught. Live at University Medical Center, Alan David Stein, New Jersey, 101.5 News. All right, Alan, thanks very much. And we would all like to believe that the worst is behind us. However, a spokesman for Passaic Medical Center, Dr. Alvin Goldberg, says they are also guarding against the possibility of a new terror. That would be a threat of biological agents that may possibly have been released during the attack. New York's mayor says the death toll from the destruction of the Trade Center's Twin Towers will be more than any of us can bear. The numbers won't be known until tomorrow, the earliest. But Mayor Giuliani says the dead will certainly include police and firefighters involved in the rescue effort. So where do we go from here? The State Department already has its eyes on possible suspects. Osama bin Laden is the prime. In the West Bank city of Nablus, thousands of Palestinians poured into the streets to celebrate, chanting God is great, distributing candy to passersby. Even as their leader Yasser Arafat expressed horror over the attacks, audiences were transfixed by the awful images from New York and Washington, and world leaders expressed solidarity, but with an America that now looks more vulnerable than ever. The overriding theme being drummed by officials from the local level to our governor to our president is that we will persevere, we will survive, and those responsible will be punished. For Joe Cutter, I'm Eric Scott. Scott and Casey have the latest. 308, New Jersey 101.5. It's the Scott and Casey Show. 1-800-283-101.5. He's Scott Hasek, and I'm Casey Bartholomew. More of your phone calls coming up here, but we do have the updated list of closings uh, in and around New Jersey here. The Satone Institute in Mount Laurel is closing all evening classes. The College of New Jersey has no evening classes. Allegro School is closed tomorrow. Arc of Monmouth membership meeting canceled for tonight. Atlantic Cape May Community College, I'm sorry, Atlantic Cape Community College Closing at 445, no evening classes. Bloomfield College closing as of 4 p.m. today. Bridgewater Commons Mall closed from 1215 on. Cape May County Technical School, all evening classes and activities have been canceled. Catholic Youth Organization of Mercer County after school program canceled. Preschool program closed today at 3 o'clock. Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill closed down at 11 30 this morning. County College of Morris, all evening classes and activities canceled. Decret School of the Arts canceling classes today. First Savings Bank in Woodbridge closed at 3 p.m. Freehold Borough Elementary Schools, no back to school night for intermediate school. General Motors, their Linden Assembly, production employees on Second shift, maintenance, material, repair, and salaried employees report as usual. Uh, Georgian Court College classes canceled from 2 p.m. on. Gibbs College evening classes canceled. Holy Angel School in Trenton back to school night uh, canceled for tonight. Uh, Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool closed at 1 p.m. Holy Rosary School close tomorrow. Hunterdon County Polytech, their central campus, all evening classes canceled. Jersey City Public Schools close tomorrow. Lewis School in Princeton close tomorrow as well. Mainland Regional High School, all activities canceled for the evening. Marlboro Township Public Schools, their board meeting for tonight has been canceled. In the Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those who need a ride. Millstone Public Schools, all afternoon activities have been canceled. Monmouth County Vocational School District, all adult evening programs canceled. Monmouth Regional High School, regular dismissal, all after, acti after school activities canceled. Montclair State University closed down tonight at 5 p.m. New Jersey Department of Personnel, all state civil service exams have been postponed. North Hunter 
Clarendon and Voorhees High Schools dismissing at 225. All activities canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School and Community College closed. Uh, North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Ocean County College closed down today at 130. Princeton Regional Schools, all acti after school activities have been canceled. Quaker Bridge Mall closed down at 3 p.m. Department stores are staying open, however. Raritan Valley College closed. Rutgers University Campus, New Brunswick, all classes canceled. Rutgers University, Newark Campus, all classes have been canceled. St. Anne's School in Lawrenceville, back to school night. Grades 5 through 8 canceled. Somerset County Administrative Offices, IDRC classes are canceled tonight. Somerset County Vocational Technical Institute closed. Springfield Public Schools, all after-school activities are canceled. St. Anne's School of Raritan, CCD canceled for late afternoon. Bingo canceled as well. St. David the King Parish, all religious programs have been canceled. Uh, St. Gregory the Great School in Hamilton, all evening activities canceled. Chapel will be open for prayer. St. Raphael School, CCD program canceled for today. Superior Court of New Jersey in Trenton, MCC Superior Court and afternoon sessions canceled. Temple Shalom Hebrew School in Bridgewater. Religious schools closed from 2.30 and on. Ultrasound Diagnostic School day and evening uh, canceled. University Radiology Group imaging closed at 2 p.m. West Windsor Municipal Court 6.30 p.m. session canceled. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School EDP is still open. Wheelock Incorporated shut down today at noon. There will be no second shift. That's the updated list of closings. If we have them, we'll read them again in about 20 minutes. But keep it here for New Jersey 101.5 to find out with the latest closing information. Okay, 312 now, New Jersey 101.5. It's the Scott and Casey Show. 1-800-283-101.5. More of your phone calls. Two planes crashed into the World Trade Center this morning, destroying it. It's gone. There is no World Trade Center anymore. A plane crashed into the Pentagon. It's been seriously damaged. Uh, a plane that was being hijacked crashed into the woods in Pennsylvania. No telling where that was headed. All kinds of problems, and we want your reaction. Did you, uh, I was listening uh, to Eric Scott during the news, and he was mentioning something that I haven't really heard much of the networks uh, talking about. Apparently, um, the, the possibility of a car bomb as well. Near, near yeah, the Capitol that was, building. That was the, near, near the State House. They kind of um, disregarded that earlier today. They evacuated the State House, but there was no car bomb there. Uh, let's go to Janice in Bordentown. Janice, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, guys. Hello. Yeah, I, this is just an amazing tragedy. Uh, I was actually in the first Trade Center bombing in 93. Oh, where are you? And when I saw this, I haven't, I haven't worked in the Trade Center for about five years now. And when I saw this, when I saw the building collapse, I was just, I just remembered going to work and going up the elevator, going to the cafeteria. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. But I, what I wanted to do was to tell everybody that they should take out their American flags. Every home should take out their American flag. They should go buy one if they don't have one and, and, and raise it. You know, put it up, put it outside their house. Mm -hmm. We should all be together in unity. We should, and we've told people uh, as well. Another caller said to uh, fly their ha the flags at half mast. We've been encouraging right. people to drive with their lights on today right. in a show yeah. of solidarity. Anything we can do to prove that That's we're still right. one nation and uh, we're all together in That's this. That's right. We're not going to let this yeah. uh, put us down. Because whoever this was, Osama bin Laden or whoever, any of the uh, four major suspects, four or five. Yeah. There's four major yeah. suspects. Four major they suspects. There's possibly uh, Palestinian groups, possibly Iran, possibly Iraq, possibly Os Osama bin Laden. Uh, who, whoever, whoever it is, you know, this was obviously an affront against our nation, and we need to come together. That's All right, Janice, get out the American flags. Uh, if you have a flag, fly it at half mass. If you're out there driving, drive with your lights on. Show your support for everybody that uh, was injured or who possibly lost somebody in this tragedy. Uh, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. We just got this. FBI will be holding a news conference in about five minutes. We'll be carrying that live on New Jersey 101.5 uh, and you'll be able to hear what the latest information that the FBI has on that. Uh, let's go to, okay, we'll be, we got a TV monitor in here so we can see everything that's going on, so we'll bring that to you as soon as that happens. Let's talk to Chris in Millville. Chris, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hey, how you doing, Scott? Good. Uh, I went home during lunch. I heard about this in work this morning and we saw reports of uh, people celebrating in the streets. Uh, yeah, from saw the that this morning. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I was just wondering why the American people shouldn't call for mass deportations. If they, they're so because, happy because you, in our country. No, no, no. You can't people. do that kind of thing. You can't blame. That's racism is what you're advocating there. You can't blame individual people for what a man, a madman did. That was disgusting what I saw. I saw children dancing around in the streets with the biggest grins on their faces, yeah. holding up Palestinian flags. Uh, there were people throwing candy about. And what I don't, the, the thing that I don't understand the most is that 
Anytime we hear about Palestinian groups in the West Bank getting blown to hell by Israelis, anytime we hear about uh, you know a terrorist bombing against a Muslim group, I have yet to see any footage anywhere in the United States of America where there are parades celebrating it, where children are flashing American flags or Israeli flags, happy because Palestinian uh, children and, and adults have been blown all to hell, and uh, having candy and declaring a national happy day because uh, people People have been murdered, and that's what they're doing. Uh, you know, and, and that just goes to show you what's so different about our country and their country, okay? And the, and the other countries across the world. We think we're the greatest place. We think the rest of the country should be happy that we're on their side if we're on their side. And this is how we're viewed as big bad guys for not letting people choose their own destiny and blow themselves well, up. Well, and I guess. there is a very thanks for the call, Chris. There's a very large, you know, anti-American sentiment out there, oh, sure. and they, you know, can feel however they want. And I find it very disgusting, and it's hurtful. You know, I'm watching the television, and they're showing me these people rooting in. Hooping and a hollering in uh, in these Palestinian country. I'm like, going, what the? This is terrible, and this is hurting me as a person. But at the same time, to make that next leap of logic to say. Okay, well now, obviously, if you're in this country and you are of descent from some uh, Middle Eastern country, we should either round you up and maybe put you in a camp, because that worked so well the first time around, and then, uh, you know, or we should deport you out of this country. Those aren't the people in this country. Those people are in their country. Yeah. Uh, the people here are Americans and should be treated as such. All U.S. commercial flights have been grounded until noon tomorrow. There will not be another flight until at least noon tomorrow. Um, I can't imagine anybody would want to get on it, but it's going to be there. Uh, again, we can't stress to you enough the importance of donating blood. If you are sitting around like a lot of people, desperate for something to do, desperate to show your support, desperate to help in some way, the way to do it is by donating blood. Don't go to a hospital. You need to go to a blood bank. The number to find out the blood bank is 888 888- blood 88 that's 888 blood 88 we're asking businesses to fly their flags at half mast to, to show your support if you have an american flag put it up if you're driving around right now turn your lights on uh just to show your support for everybody who's been affected by this and let's be honest we have all been affected by this and we're taking your phone calls 1-800-283-101.5 don't be uh, forget the fbi is holding a press conference in a matter of moments we will be carrying it live and we're going to continue to take your phone calls all right scott and casey new jersey fast traffic for an update. Well, the traffic on the Jersey Turnpike still blocked off the north-down side and north of Interchange 11. The Newark Bay Extension is also closed down for all intents and purposes as well. And any roads that go towards the Hudson River crossings have also been closed down, like Route 80 and 46 and Route 3 down by the Jersey Turnpike. Westernsburg also blocked off. The only thing that's been open across the Hudson River has been the George Washington Bridge upper level coming back to New Jersey. And lots of traffic on that span, too. It had been closed off for quite some time. But again, if you're going to New York, all the Hudson River crossings are shut down, including the bridges to Staten Island, and the traffic is open coming back to Jersey on the uh, Gothels and the Outer Bridge crossings. There's also a lot of traffic, Garden State Parkway, even though that's open. There was a flipped over car accident south down side in the area of exit 91. That has now been cleared. Mass transit still uh, disrupted. All the airports around the nation remain closed off. Jersey transit from Newark's Penn Station. There's limited outbound service on Northeast Carter, North Jersey Coast, and Raritan lines, and limited service from New York's Penn Station to Newark's Penn Station, but no service going to New York City via New Jersey Transit. We've had disruptions as well on the SEPTA line with uh, no regional rail service. They've been providing bus service only. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. I'm Tom Rivers. Next report at 333 on New Jersey 101. New Jersey 101.5. 319 New Jersey 101.5. Scott and Casey. He's Scott Hassock and I'm Casey Bartholomew. Going to continue taking your phone calls about what happened today. Also, uh, at any moment um, by the way, just, just in LAX has been evacuated. The airport in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles International Airport, has been evacuated. No reports of anything happening there. They're probably just uh, being safe. But uh, LAX has been evacuated. That's the latest we have on that. But uh, we're continue taking your phone calls here. 1-800-283-101.5. Also, can't stress enough to give blood. 1-888-BLOOD-88 is the number. 888-BLOOD-88 is the number. Don't go to a hospital. Go to a blood bank. That's where you go to give the blood. That's how you can help right now. Also, at any moment, 
There's going to be an FBI press conference, and we're going to carry it live here on New Jersey 101.5 to get the latest information that they have about the bombing. But until that point comes, we're going to continue to take your phone calls. Let's go to Bill in Ocean Township. Bill, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Yeah. Hi, hi, Casey. Hi, Bob. You know, I, I, I disagree with you guys. I really think that this deserves some swift and immediate retaliation. Against who? We know about bin Laden. We know, we know about... Do you know how many enemies we have across the planet? Of everybody. They blew our country up. They yeah, blew but you're our reacting country. too emotionally. Yeah. You've, got to pick your, you've got to pick your target, and you can't just say, well, it's got to be Osama bin Laden. We don't know that yet. Let, let the FBI do their job. The FBI hasn't been doing their job for the last 10 years. Oh, so who do we do? We do what do we do? We just randomly pick targets and blow them up? Do you really think that's going to make things better? Do you really think that's going to make America any safer if we just randomly pick targets around the, uh, around the planet and start blowing them all to hell because we think they might get involved? I personally think that's going to make things a little worse if we just go off haphazard like that, Bill. <laughs> freedoms away from us by blowing us up. They did not take all our freedoms away. Psych it's a psychological war that we're in right now, Bill, and you're one of the victims here because you just think that we should start blowing everybody all to hell. If we engage in that kind of activity without having proof about who did it, we can't justify that to the international community, and that's just going to make things even more unsafe for yeah. Americans, not only in this country, but around the world. We can't just start bombing people all to hell. We can't do that. We have to be able enemy. to put together a case and prove it was been like it probably was. And the FBI will, is going to take their time, and they're going to look for the evidence, and they're going to be able to piece it back together. They're going to be able to find out who did this, and then we can take action. But if we just start blowing people all to hell, all we're going to do is cost more American lives, and I'm not willing to take that chance. Bill, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Like, what are you, you look brown, maybe we should kill you or round you up or get rid of you? I mean, this is ridiculous. And you can't just start blowing up other countries. We have, you know... We, it, all, like I said, all that's going to do is make things more unsafe for us in this country. By the way, I wanted to say something. Uh, our screener, Jessica, our boyfriend's father was in New York, and they couldn't get through because of the phone lines. Uh, they hooked up via email, right? So if, you ha if you've been trying on the phone and haven't been able to get through to anybody, check your email because they may have emailed you. They may have been able to hook up with you via email just because the phone lines are down. I, we can even make phone calls to other states, not New, not New York necessarily or Pennsylvania, but uh, to Missouri where my in-laws live to tell them that everything was cool with us from where we f were from a standpoint because the lines were so jammed. But if you can get through on your email account, you may they may have been able to send you a message because uh, her, uh, her boyfriend's parents were holed up in a hotel right there and they had a laptop. Or if you have a laptop and you can hear our voices and you can't get through because of the phone, lines email the people you love to let them know you're okay still waiting for that press conference from the fbi as soon as that comes on we'll go right to it let's go to paul in pittstown paul you're on new jersey 101.5 hey how you doing hey Casey? good much respect to you guys I, thank you I really like your show it's, it's pretty good i'd like to say i think we should all pray for the people who lost their lives and their family mm -hmm. okay i believe it was an inside job i don't I don't think that these people are smart enough to hijack eight planes at one time four. and do something like this. Well, the, the, we, I know there are reports of eight, but so far we only have definite reports of four planes. But you know what? If they did the years of planning, I'm sure that there was inside jobs. I'm sure that there was inside people there who helped them out. Uh, because it does seem a little far-fetched that they would be able to do everything like that on their own, not because they're stupid, just because they would have to know what part of the Pentagon to go to, what time to hit, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but I doubt that uh, it was all an inside job. I think the people are certainly smart enough. They certainly have the ability. They certainly have the financial capacity to be able to do certain things like that. And uh, while I think it, I don't think it was an inside job, I think it was people on the outside who had help on the inside. All right, Paul, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. And he's right, if you're a praying kind of person, say a prayer for the people uh, and you can help them out if you, you lower the flags to half mask get out the american flag drive with your headlights on do anything you can to so you show your support because that's what america needs right now let's go to shree in somerset shree you're on new jersey 101.5 hey scott and casey uh now i'm from india and we know exactly how it is here because india has also been a victim of terrorist attacks and now i'm here in this country this is my country and i know exactly how you guys feel and I speak for all Indians and people because I've lost friends in the World Trade Center today. Uh, the, the World Trade Center has uh, got a lot of financial institutions, people running computers, a huge population of Indians work in the World Trade Center. And I have lost a lot of friends. Uh, my relatives so far have been accounted for. Uh, two are stuck in New York City. One, uh, my sister has just made her way back. 
through a ferry and and she is we're still waiting to pick her up at some uh, station that she can get a NG, NG transit back. Yeah, well, you know, at least you know she's alive. That's the most yeah, important thing. Exactly. Anything, getting to her is, is one thing, but as long exactly. as you know she's alive, that's, that's what you, guys, you need to know. Like you said, we did use email in the morning to get across to a lot of friends to make sure they're safe. And, you know, I, I, and we, I mean, all Indians, uh, you know, are, are truly in this, and we know exactly how it feels, the pain, the suffering. Sure. These same fanatics are responsible for bombings back home. And well, I, get, I, I speak for uh, everybody. And yeah, the same, the same type of fanatic, the tame, same type of, uh, of idiot that would do something like this to uh, anybody, anybody's country, anywhere, are the same type of people who do this. I really want to hear from the FBI what their information is. I really want to hear uh, what the leads go to. I really want to hear them going through the evidence. That's why we can't respond so swiftly. Shree, thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. I'm glad to hear your family's okay. Again, can't stress enough uh, to uh, check your email. They maybe have been able to, been able to hook up with you at, with, uh, with email here because that's what happened. Now we've heard two instances when that's happened. Uh, also just got a report on the TV here. There are 600 people in New York hospitals. That seems low. Uh, I know they're using, I think they're using some Jersey uh, hospitals as well, but according to the TV that we've got a little ticker tape that's running by on CNN, there are 600 people in uh, New York hospitals. Uh, or there's also been an urgent plea for blood issued in the New York and uh, Washington areas. If you can give blood, if you're sitting around hoping for something to do, call a blood bank, 888-BLOOD-88. Don't go to a hospital. Go to a blood bank and give blood. Cindy's in Jackson. Cindy, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, how are you? Good. I was wondering, there was eight planes reported. Well, I've, I've heard conflicting reports about that. I've heard eight planes, and then I've heard there were just the four. Because right now, there are no commercial airliners in the air uh, in the United States anywhere right now. So if there were eight that were hijacked, if there were eight that uh, maybe somebody threatened, called in a threat or something like that, only four of them did any damage. Right. Because, because the, uh, the, the, uh, the, there, there isn't anything that's in the air right now in the United States. And I was under the impression that all of our commercial airliners have been able to account for all of their other planes. Okay, we, I was just wondering, could yeah. you guys have reported that earlier? Yeah, I, I heard that earlier, and uh, this was the only place I had heard that. I mean, I, mean, I, I know it was on TV, but uh, I, was, uh, I was watching TV, and all I heard was that there were four, and uh, the four have been accounted for. Okay. All right. Thanks for calling New Jersey 101.5. Cindy, what I think might have happened there is that um, airlines aren't quick to admit that their planes had been hijacked because they want to make 100% sure. So while there were explosions going on and planes crashing everywhere, we knew there were four crashes. And then the airlines were saying that there were uh, four were planes they couldn't uh, account for. So it, for that, they probably just added the same two together and got eight. I, I, well, it's to my knowledge, the last I heard, there are not eight planes. There are, only, uh, there are now only uh, four planes and they're accounted for. Okay, this just, uh, just uh, handed to me here. The FBI is now saying that their press conference will be at 4 o'clock. It's not coming up. It's uh, coming up at 4 o'clock as of right now, according to them. They've received no claim of responsibility for this from anybody. But that press conference that we were waiting for is now going to happen at 4 o'clock. All right, let's talk to Bernard in Fort Dix here on New Jersey 101.5. Hi, uh, I'm a former MP in intelligence. Um, but let me say, first off, I'm not speaking on behalf of anybody but myself. I'm no longer attached to the military in any way. Uh -huh. uh, if it's of any uh, reassurance to the listeners, I, I guarantee you that those who need to know already know the exact and precise identity of the people that stepped on these planes this morning. I, I'm pre I, I, I guess that. I always like to think that there's, uh, you know, that the, the system is so great that we know who did it, we know who was on the planes, and we know how to trace them back. But, you know, I don't know. Scott, I don't, I don't think it's any question but that when you, I, I don't think it's a secret. When, when you go to an airport, you're photographed almost continuously, and I can tell you that at least half a dozen times as you're stepping onto a plane, you're being photographed. And we know at this point, I guarantee you, the name, birth date, and everything else, and within days, well, we're going to know their shoe size and everybody they ever had. And it, probably I hope we can go it, get them then. it probably wouldn't be all that surprising if the FBI or the individuals who are responsible for investigating this may have a lot of evidence already gathered. You know, against uh, the individual who it is, uh, we probably wouldn't know about that until after all was said and done. I guarantee it that, that you're 100% correct. We have the full weight of the United States behind this now. There, there's no limit on the resources being applied, obviously, and we're going to know. Um, however, I, I don't know if it was Scott or Casey who said it earlier that uh, just finding out who it is, it's not a situation where it was in uh, Pearl Harbor where you can go and bomb somebody to retaliate. Mm. The people that are involved in this, and not, personally, I doubt it's the Palestinians because they've been playing for world sympathy for the last 10 years. Yeah probably Osama bin Laden or uh, some splinter group off of there. And yeah. So we well, can't just go bomb a country because, you know, you, if it's a country that's responsible for it, we can go get them. If it's an individual, they could be hiding someplace. And we may punish a country for uh, harboring that individual, but there's nowhere to, you know, there's nowhere to go. Okay, we got to take a break and get an update from AP News.
AP Update, I'm Rita Foley. New York's mayor says the death toll from the destruction of the World Trade Center's Twin Towers will be more than any of us can bear. Those are his words. He says the numbers won't be known until tomorrow at the earliest, but that the dead will include police and firefighters involved in the rescue effort. The twin 110-story towers that were most identifiable landmarks on New York's skyline no longer exist after two apparently hijacked planes were flown into them. President Bush says today's terrorist attacks are a test of America's resolve, but we will show the world that we will pass this test, he says. We go now live to our White House correspondent, Mark Smith. Mark? Well, Rita, a short time ago, Air Force One arrived at Offutt Air Force Base near Omaha, Nebraska. How long the president will be there, we don't know, but Deputy Press Secretary Scott McClellan says Bush wants to return to Washington as soon as he can. Earlier, the president himself told reporters at Barksdale Air Force Base in Louisiana these attacks were the work of what he called a faceless coward, and he said the target was freedom itself. The United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. Now, the president, whose day began here in Florida, we're told will shortly be convening a teleconference meeting with his national security team back in Washington. Meantime, he's been on the phone not just with Vice President Cheney and other cabinet officials, but to New York's Mayor Giuliani to express his sympathies and also has spoken to his wife, who has assured him she and their twin daughters are safe. Our correspondent Karen Sloan joins us very briefly now for The View from Overseas. Karen? Well, we had a shock around the world. World leaders expressing sympathy, condolences, and solidarity. Ordinary people stopping what they're doing to be glued to radio and TV to find out what's happened back in the U.S. The only place of celebration so far appears to be in Palestinian territory, where there are cheers and shouts of joy. There is disruption, too, of course. No flights in and out of the U.S. means planes heading there have turned around or landed. That's our Karen Sloan. This is AP Network News. All right, 332, New Jersey 101.5. Scott and Casey. He's Scott Hasek, and I'm Casey. Bartholomew. Coming up in just a moment, we're going to continue to read you the uh, list of uh, updated closings that we have. Uh, we we're going to get your reaction more as to what happened today. Uh, continue to encouraging you to fly your flags at half-mast, drive with your headlights on, put out the American flags, anything you can do. Give blood if you're looking for a blood bank. And again, go to a blood bank and give blood. Do not go to a hospital. That's not where the blood is taken and needed. If you don't uh, know number, where to go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the number, if you don't know where to go, is 1-888-BLOOD-88. That's 1-888-BLOOD-88. New Jersey's in a state of emergency. Disney World has been closed in Florida. Disneyland in California has been closed. Lots of other closings to read you about. And we'll take more of your phone calls at 1-800-283-101.5. But uh, first, we've got to get a check on the traffic. All right, looks like the New Jersey Turnpike at Status Quo is still closed off. North and side, north of Interchange 11. The north and western spur has been reopened, but the eastern spur is still closed. And the Newark Bay Extension eastbound side also shut down. And any of the roadways getting to the Hudson River crossings like Route 4 and 46 and 80 and Route 3 also closed off on the eastbound side. Pretty much anything heading towards the city is uh, still blocked off. Like all the Hudson River crossings and the Staten Island bridges leaving New Jersey, they're all completely closed off. The only thing that's been open across the Hudson has been the George Washington bridge upper level coming back to new jersey that has been uh, open now for the last 90 minutes or so and uh, very busy traffic up and across that span the garden state parkway has been uh, kind of bunched up through some of the tolls but uh, no uh, major problem now the rod of mass transit still very tough on uh, new jersey transit from newark's penn station there's limited uh, service on the northeast carter north jersey coast and raritan lines on trains going south and west and a limited service between penn station new york city and penn station newark coming south but no service uh, north into new york and and, of course, the airports nationwide remain closed off till further notice. New Jersey fast traffic every 15 minutes around the clock. Next report at 348 on New Jersey 101, New Jersey 101.5. 334, New Jersey 101.5. Okay, now we have the updated list of closings in and around New Jersey. Uh, the Satone Institute, Mount Laurel, evening classes have been canceled. College in New Jersey, no evening classes. Allegro School is closed tomorrow. Ark of Monmouth, membership meeting tonight, canceled. Atlantic Cape May Community College, closing at 445, no evening classes. Bloomfield College, closes as of 4 o'clock today. Bridgewater Commons Mall is closed. Burlington County College, closing at 4 o'clock at all locations. Cape May County Technical School, all evening classes and activities canceled. Catholic Youth Organization of Mercer County, after school program canceled. Preschool program closed at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Chubb Institute in Cherry Hill is closed. County College of Morris all evening classes and activities have been canceled. Ducret School of the Arts canceled. Uh, First Savings Bank in Woodbridge closed. Freehold, Bor Freehold Borough 
elementary schools, no back to school night for intermediate school, Freehold Regional High School District, all after school activities and adult classes canceled, Freehold Regional High School District as well, all afternoon activities and adult school is canceled once again. General Motors Linden Assembly, production employees on second shift, maintenance, material, repair, salaried employees, report as usual. Uh, Georgian Court College, classes canceled. Gibbs College, evening classes canceled. Holy Angel School, Trenton, back to school canceled tonight. Holy Cross Grammar School and Preschool closed. Holy Rosary School closed tomorrow. Hunterdon County Polytech Central Campus, all evening classes canceled. Jersey City Public Schools closed tomorrow. Lewis School in Princeton closed tomorrow. Mainland Regional High School, all activities canceled for the evening. Marlboro Township Public Schools board meeting for tonight has been canceled. Matawan Aberdeen Regional School District, all afternoon programs canceled, but arrangements are made for those who need a ride. Millstone Public Schools, all after school activities canceled. Monmouth County Vocational School District, all adult evening programs canceled. Monmouth Regional High School, regular dismissal, all after school activities canceled. Montclair State University is closing at 5 p.m. New Jersey Department of Personnel, all state civil service, service exams have been postponed. North Hunterdon and Voorhees High Schools dismissed at 225 this afternoon. All activities have been canceled. North Plainfield Adult High School is closed. North Plainfield Municipal Court, no evening court. Orange County, uh, Ocean County College is closed. Princeton Regional Schools, all after school activities canceled. Quaker Bridge Mall shut down today at 3. The department stores, however, are staying open. Raritan Valley College closed. Rutgers University Campus, New Brunswick, all classes canceled. Rutgers University, Newark Campus, all classes canceled. St. Anne's School in Lawrenceville, back to school night, grades 5 through 8 canceled. Somerset County Administrative Offices, IDRC classes canceled for tonight. Somerset County Vocational Technical Institute closed. Springfield Public Schools, all afternoon after school activities are canceled. St. Anne's School of Raritan, CCD canceled for late afternoon. Bingo canceled as well. St. David the King Parish, all religious programs canceled. St. Gregory the uh, Great School in Hamilton, all evening classes canceled. Chapel is open for prayer. St. Raphael School, CCD programs canceled for today. Superior Court of New Jersey uh, in Trenton, MCC Superior Court, afternoon sessions canceled. Temple Shalom Hebrew School in Bridgewater, religious school is closed from 2.30 and on. Uh, ultrasound Diagnostic School, day and evening classes canceled. University Radiology Group, imaging closed at 2 p.m. this afternoon. West Windsor Municipal Court, 6.30 p.m. session is canceled. West Windsor Plainsboro Regional School, EDP, is still open. And Wheelock Incorporated closed at noon. There is no second shift. It's 3.37, New Jersey 101.5, Scott and Casey Show. More of your phone calls now, your reaction to what happened. I want to say, though, we have been getting reports that the number that uh, they gave us to give out for the blood donation to find a blood bank is, is uh, not exactly helpful. 1-888-BLOOD-88 isn't the one to call. Uh, so you might want to try calling the American Red Cross and finding out from them where you should go to give blood. They might be able to help you with that. The number for that is 877-RED-CROSS. Just 877-RED-CROSS. It's a toll-free number if you're looking to give blood and you should be looking to give blood because that's the way all of us can help right now. Call 877-RED-CROSS and they should be able to help you out. All right, 1-800-283-101.5. Peter's in Middlesex. Peter, you're on New Jersey 101.5. Hey, guys. Hi. Right. Uh, hey. I just came from the blood center in um, New Brunswick and they were handing out numbers, giving you a form to fill out and then telling you to come back. I filled out my form and I saw that they were handling like someone with like number 65, 70 in that range. Uh -huh. I, I have number 706. Well, hang out and wait. So, well, they said, go home, come back. I'm, I have to go back in a few hours, but definitely, definitely go yeah. down there, get a number, fill out your form, and then come back. Yeah, Absolutely. today is not the day to say, oh, too much of an inconvenience. Obviously, we've got a waiting list because a lot of people are having the same idea, and it's good that everybody does it. And of all 